What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, a fantastic afternoon, a fantastic pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Hassan Piker, and this is the Hassan Ever Broadcast coming to you live from sunny Pyongyang, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea, best Korea, popular Korea. We're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is yet another day. Whew. That's right. It's a motherfucking Tuesday, and normally on Tuesdays, I used to do, it's Tuesday, in it? That's what I used to do, but honestly, I cannot get myself to do this accent any longer, okay? Um, so we're not, we're, we're, we'll bring it back. We'll bring that back soon. Why can I get myself, why can I get myself to say it's Tuesday? Well, because while the British themselves are, uh, you know, the British politicians are being fucking assholes. British people themselves are, on the other hand, protesting. What's going on in Palestine? So, much love to the British. Yeah. Much love to the fucking British, yeah? To the mandem. <coughs> British people showing the world that they are indeed people. What did you do with the queen, you yank wanker? Oh, um, I moved the queen out because, like, I had to push the Kaya bed to the wall. So I have to figure out a different way to do it. Uh, anyway... What's the point of a rally that the government's already doing? We're going to talk about that. If you don't feel like you've killed enough babies, it's time to do a rally, you know? Anne, next day, at the six in the room, listen. Lütfen. Hey, çok sıcak. Hot in here. At the six is. So, yank, wanker. Lizzie's in a fucking box, yeah? She's in a fucking box. Big Lizzie. Um, the great leader, supreme leader, G is arriving in my state tomorrow and i'm very excited about that obviously um but yeah other than that other than that um a lot has happened but not in the world of asan haas and abby piker as a matter of fact this is part of the broadcast where i tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in my life in between the time period where i press the stop streaming button and press the start streaming button and what happened in that time frame is as follows not much Last night, I ended the broadcast. My mom is here. She has arrived. Mama Piker, Dr. Mama Piker, is in the motherfucking building. So, that's exciting. Some exciting news from the Hassan Hassanabi Piker compound. Uh, Kaya updates. Kaya pup updates. Uh, is, is, uh, Kaya is doing great. Good girl university. She's been a good girl. She's been a great girl, as a matter of fact. A great girl. Best girl. Um, since uh, Fiona left the house, she has completely stopped pissing in the house. Turns out she fucking knew doing what not to do in terms of pissing inside of the house. So, yeah. What is this? I lied. I will ask one more time. Where'd you get that beanie? I don't remember. But this is not like a real beanie. Uh, this is a, I mean, this is a brimless hat that I got a long time ago. And then I put the red star on it from like something you guys sent me. Anyway, we're going to be talking about. We are going to be talking about the Israel rally that's going on, the fact that a senator tried to fight a union leader, Mark Wayne Mullen, and also the fact that Kevin McCarthy himself fought another congressperson. So, I haven't really seen uh, New York Times or any news outlet report on the attendance of the pro-genocide rally. Does that mean anything, or do we just wait? No, they'll, they'll report on it. They'll talk about how profound the support was for Israel. They will. They won't talk about... There's an Israel come tweet. Yes, I can't believe that you just said there's an Israel come tweet. But there is an Israel come tweet. You're right. Yeah, 300,000 uh, in the streets for Palestine. No fucking news out. Let's talk about it. Uh, the the uh, Israeli lobbying groups uh, try to get together as many fucking uh, people as possible, paying some people and bringing like literal busing government employees to the fucking uh, to the march. I'm just staying off Twitter and listening is wild when you don't see the stories before the stream. Yeah. Asma was defending you in your charity streams. That's nice. Anyway, did you see the Piers Morgan upload the dirtiest clip chimp of your interview? Wait, he uh, re-uploaded a, uh, a, an, he re-uploaded our, our interview? That's weird. Anyway, 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 blah, 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 blah. we have a lot to talk about today. We have a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about evangelical Christian Zionism and how fucking psychotic it is. Um, but as far as, uh, as far as everything is going in the world, uh, as far as everything that's going in my world, as a matter of fact, there's not much. Um, I spent the morning, uh, you know, duking it out with neolibs 
which I thought was pretty funny. Um, there's nothing better than when you uh, when you when you engage with some one of these guys and like they just go, "See, I told you." He thinks America is bad, and it's like, yeah, okay. Well, first of all, at least, at least, no opinion says America good, and like, will tell you why he thinks America is good. But it is pretty funny. Like, he was posting about, he was posting about Korea. Okay, he was talking about fucking uh, Korea. You know, just uh, doing the classic neolib shit. And I responded to it like th he did this like it's becoming clearer to the country that leftists have absolutely no moral principle whatsoever other than America bad. This is such a fucking incredibly, incredibly stupid, incredibly reductive. He said you replaced number one with hegemony to make it sound bad. Lemma fail. Ignored everything else you said. Wait, he responded to it. I didn't even see that. Anyway, you know what? Fuck it. Um, we're, we're blasting off because I, I didn't do shit this uh, morning. Uh, this is all I did. I took Kaya on a structured walk, and it was awesome. I took uh, Kaya out on a structured walk, which was dope. And other than that, you know, um, March for Israel so she can kill more Palestinian children rally. Sparks controversy. SCOTUS ethic rules. Kevin McCarthy dukes it out with congressmen. Se okay, okay, Senator tries to fight union leader <clears throat> have you covered the i-10 uh freeway no i haven't good news arun has been unbanned i know i i worked on it i helped out i i'm very i'm familiar anyway um but yeah we have a uh, live thousands march dude where is the motherfucking live uh, where was the live coverage for for the other marches where was the live coverage of the palestinian marches dude you know Media plus class double standard. Get in now. You noticed there's a lot of variety in this. Okay. Have you covered manipulation of online spaces by Israel like Twitter and Reddit? Yeah, it don't matter. Better clip of the senator trying to fight O'Brien, by the way. Oh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll watch this as well. Uh, don't worry. I'll be watching this space. Notice how there's actually a lot of uh, stuff a lot of variety in my news coverage today. That's right. That's because we are getting back to variety news. Obviously, this doesn't mean that I will stop covering uh, Israel-Palestine. Of course, I will continue covering it as long as the ethnic cleansing campaign continues. However, um, uh, you know, we are, we are going to get back to doing some more light-hearted, light coverage, which, of course, revolves around American news and how fucking stupid that is. Okay. But fear not, this does not mean I'm going to stop talking about uh, Israel-Palestine, of course. Can you cover the Congo? I'm seeing people set themselves on fire on Twitter. I, have, I, I don't know enough about that. People always ask me to do that, but there's always... Guys, I have... I will be very honest with you, okay? I will be brutally honest with you. There are a lot of countries in the world that are in conflict-dense regions, Okay? This is a moment of volatility as American influence around the planet is waning, okay? We might be at the precipice of multipolarity. Now, the problem here is that Congo and Sudan, specifically, are not within my field of knowledge. Middle Eastern conflict, on the other hand, I do know a thing or two about, and I can offer a unique perspective on, right? But as far as like everything else going on in the world, sometimes there's going to be, what is this? There's some misinformation going around about your Israel-Palestine coverage. What? Hassan gets mentioned in a report. Federal Association, RIAS, initiates the support of establishment of regional reporting. Wait, what? I got mentioned in the fucking German Bundesverband, RIAS, about the anti-Semitic reactions in Germany, the Hamas. Ein Twitch-Streamer bekannt als Hassan Abi, der 2. What? What the fuck? Fourth largest group whom were in Germany. Is he triple A mass crimes and justified violence against civilians? Against Zionists and settlers? This is a lie. That, what the fuck? The RIAS is the Federal Association of Anti-Semitism Research and Information Centers in Germany. I fucking hate Germany so much. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I, I, Germany is becoming uh, worse than England, which is crazy to say. It's plain defamation. Why is the German federal government defaming me? 
Like, what are you, the fucking Daily Mail dog? What are you, some random fucking loser online? Like, what the hell is happening here? All right, well, I'll, uh, bro is beefing with Germany. There's a video that is circling of a burning man is from previous immolation. It's not about the current Congo discussion. Not sure if you've heard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Time to sue Germany, dude. Anyway, Hassan gets mentioned in a report from the Bundesverband. R-I-A-S, about anti-Semitic reactions in Germany on the Hamas massacre in Israel. Translation and link in the report in the comments. A Twitch live streamer known as Hassanabi, who has 2.6 million followers, streamed in front of 40,000 viewers, the fourth largest group of whom were from Germany, as he trivialized Hamas crimes and justified violence against civilians as violence against Zionists and settlers. Even if cases mentioned are not anti-Semitic incidents according to R-I-A-S categories, they point to the broad approval of Hamas's massacres and a glorification of terror and suggest an existing anti-Semitic worldview. RIAS is the Federation of so Federal Association of Anti-Semitism Research and Information Centers in Germany. That is crazy. I was reading the news today, and a lot of, there's a lot of imported, uh, a lot about the imported anti-Semitism from Turkey and Arabic countries to Germany. This is extremely ironic because you know it's Germany. I don't think they need Turks or Arabs to tell them how to be anti-Semitic. I also know that anti-Semitism from the far right is much higher than anti-Semitism from Muslims in Germany, but I didn't have an exact number in my head, so I think maybe I could be mistaken. Maybe I'm just misremembering, of course. Like a good Marxist, I don't just trust my gut and look at the numbers. I looked up the anti-Semitism anti in 2022, the anti-Semitism report 2022 from RIS. RIS is the Federal Association of Anti-Semitism Research and Information Centers in Germany. And yes, as I thought, of the 2,480 reported anti-Semitic incidents, 13% had right-wing extremist, right-wing populist background, and 1%, less than 1%, had an Islamic Islamist background, for anyone interested in this report. After finishing this report, I see that the RIAS has released a report about the anti-Semitic reactions in Germany about the Hamas massacres in Israel. I recommend everyone to read it themselves. But I want to note that it's very interesting that the incidents they describe are a mix of anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Things like modifying a Nazi parole to oppose, is, uh, to oppose Israel from the Jews are our misfortune to Israel is our misfortune. Shouting, fuck the Jews at a vigil for the victims of October 7th. These are obviously like uh, anti-Semitic incidents, by the way. Like, this is real anti-Semitism. The famous picture of a, a memorial foundation. I'm discussing, uh, I'm a discussing piece of sh Hebrew shit. My mother tongue is Hebrew. I'm a Jew and I celebrate the cult of guilt uh, and memory terror. These are anti-Semitic incidents. And then they're put next to, it seems, calling Israel an apartheid state. I quote, the classification as apartheid is common anti-Semitic demonization and delegitimization of Israel. Using from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is considered anti-Semitic. So a fucking German institution dedicated to anti-Semitism, like researching anti-Semitism in Germany, as far as I understand it, has declared my coverage where I very clearly and in uh, no uncertain terms condemned Hamas and talked about the atrocities on very clear terms, mind you, okay, is akin to, uh, because I called Israel an apartheid state, I suspect, okay, they are directly backed and financed by the uh, German government. Uh, the, 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 they, they consider that to be, you know, saying fuck the Jews or defaming a picture of a director of a memorial foundation. That is one of the most insane things I've ever heard in my life. Absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Once again, um, as much as I personally um, talk about America bad, you know, there is one thing that America good at, and that is this, okay? Straight up. Straight the fuck up. This is a America good moment. So congratulations to Germany for being worse than America. America tries to do shit like this too, but at least there's like some semblance of free speech at least that uh, offers... A level of protection. It's an NGO that gets government funding. Just to be clear, there are lines there. <laughs> extremely, extremely rare America good moment, which by the way, this is uh, a comparison that I make to China as well. As much as I personally love uh, high-speed rail and uh, even development or rapid urbanization and a lot of the things that the Chinese government has done, accomplished an impressive feat in such a short period of time, not having uh, any protections over uh, over criticism of the government is not great. It's something that I criticize quite regularly with China as well. So, uh, my participation in this chat should not be con uh, confused with support for the streamer's position. I am a supporter of uh, Germany. I love the European Union. Kai Havertz is very underrated. I condemn Hassan. What? That's crazy. I don't know what's happening with this. Stuff. That's wild. Like, I am more to the right uh, in comparison to like, I mean, I'm closer to Avi Shalom on my perspective, okay? 
But there are plenty of thinkers who don't even take this position, okay? To be clear, you can criticize the government, and China has protest union and non-union all the time. You just can't call for the overthrow of the Socialist Party in your protest. I mean, still, you know, come on, come on, come on, you know. There are protests, but it certainly gets way ahead of itself. The majority report, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. <clears throat> At what point do you think you will need to hire people to help fight back against the disinformation against you? Seems like it might be worth having a bigger team to help combat the flames. Um, why is it surprising you're getting attacked by Zionist orgs? It's not surprising. It's just, um, I don't know. I, I still, I choose my words very carefully for the most part, especially on this issue, especially on this issue for two reasons. One, because um, there is no space for anti-Semitism in this community. There never has been and there never will be. So anytime that uh, anytime someone even tries to like uh, glom onto a position to be like, ooh, like this guy might be anti-Semitic. I like that. Fuck that. Okay. Put my foot down. Uh, there is no way in hell that I would ever contribute to uh, growing anti-Semitism. Uh, this is why I make the distinction between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism quite frequently and even talk uh, regularly about anti-Semitism that is also increasing in the country. Um, having said that, uh, the other reason why I... Uh, you got a Central Committee and Mike from PA raid. Wow. Thank you, Central Committee and Mike from PA. Two separate people for the, for the double raid. Yeah, um, the original oh, clip of John Stewart, I mean, John Oliver, where, where's the video? HBO literally fucking has uh, his old video. We can watch his old video on, on him calling Israel an apartheid state. Yeah, that's real. He has done that before. Anyway, we'll get to all of that. We, we'll get to all of that in a second. Um, funny that I'm, I'm beefing with a you know, government-backed NGO. That is gross. It's gross that they just fucking smeared me like that. Um, and you know, make these insane conflations between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Uh, however, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, Germany's about to get overtaken by AFT. They should probably, AFD, they should probably fucking, they should most likely worry about their own fucking Nazi movement that is like growing in their country, okay? It's crazy. The next decade in Europe is going to be proto-fascists. 100%. Marine Le Pen in France, uh, as Macron's influence is waning. You're going to see that, uh, which is already happening. She's the next leader, okay? I, I speculate here, but you already have Maloney in Italy, okay? And AFD is gaining momentum in Germany. It's happening. Not even proto-fascists, like actual full-blown fascists. Those who... Here. Bro, the UK got a minister for common sense of combat wokeness. So, you are right about the rest of Europe, but AFD are not proto-fascists yet. Okay, the AFD are fascists, not proto-fascists. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Or here's the thing. These guys are uh, uh, not like 1938 uh, fascists. They have abandoned certain concepts, or they have reframed certain concepts for uh, the new time and place. Okay? What do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is like, for example, uh, Hungary will be anti-NATO and align in certain instances with Russia, but simultaneously they are uh, reliant on EU dollars, okay, euros. On the other hand, in Italy, given the fascist movement in Italy is directly a result of NATO, you have the likes of Maloney who will criticize NATO, but ultimately will be the biggest NATO dick riders, okay? In Germany... You will have some anti-NATO sentiment, even though it is identical as well. NATO is responsible for uh, German fascists, uh, German Nazis, um, you know, maintaining their power and prominence in West Germany. They might say anti-NATO things, and they certainly might have secret anti-Semitism, but they will usually just cast that aside for the much more populist anti-Islam sentiment. Maloney ran on anti-NATO shit, but then immediately was like, I love NATO. Because why wouldn't she? NATO helped fascists stay uh, in, in uh, positions of power. NATO literally personally allowed, in Italy especially, for fascism to thrive. So why the fuck would they be anti-NATO? Of course she's not going to be anti-NATO. She knows where her bread is buttered. Here, it, German here, AFD and CDU, CSU are both very bad. Not just AFD are becoming more and more unhinged. So that is a direct consequence of... 
AFD. What do I mean by this? If you look at Macron, okay, who is a centrist neoliberal, center-right neoliberal, maybe center-left, but mostly center-right neoliberal, Macron, over the course of uh, the past couple of years, in order to maintain uh, his power and his political prominence, has tried to triangulate with neoliberal austerity economics, but then also social conservatism, okay? That is precisely, that is precisely what Macron did. No, I'm saying Macron, Macron went from a centrist center-right to more right-wing, okay? Why did he do this? He did this because that is the exact same thing that the Democratic Party did over the course of the past couple of decades in America, okay? The ratchet effect, as we've talked about. Macron did this in France, and what ended up happening in France, okay? What ended up happening in France? Now, uh, Marine Le Pen has gained more prominence as a consequence of that because all you've done is now legitimize the social conservatism of Marine Le Pen. CDU is Angela Merkel's party, yes, and the AFD is now pulling them further to the right. When you are a center-right party, when you're a center-right party, all you end up uh, all you end up doing is like make concessions in an effort to play politics when you end up making concessions to the right because you find them, the fascists, to be less of a problem, whether because you are oblivious to their prominence uh, and oblivious to your own country's history or because you legitimately, just like liberals did literally last time in Germany specifically, aligned with the fascists thinking that they are going to be uh, uh, way less scary than the communists and the trade unionists and the socialists. It's not even, it hasn't been a hundred years since the thirties. Okay. We're not even at a hundred years and bar for bar, we are repeating the exact same mistakes. It is blowing my mind. Okay. The French mitigated uh, a lot of potential damage by LARPing along. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. I disagree. The French Socialist Party is a majority in France. It is the leading coalition in the French Parliament. The left is gaining prominence in France, my dude. Mélenchon almost won, my dude. I am very familiar with French politics, okay? I know. I understand this. Just fucking wait, my dude, okay? Just wait. Just sit back and wait. We'll see. I'm a firm believer that European countries, just like the United States of America, will always find or will always serve as a bottleneck for further left movements, okay? And Mélenchon himself is no longer in power. And the last time around, the last time around, my dude, Mélenchon's party and the French left lost as a consequence of all of the other green and all of the other fucking supposedly left of center uh, uh, parties ended up siding with the fucking liberals. They used every, they used every little fucking vote they had to disrupt the, the momentum of the left. They did that. Historically speaking, the left or other, you know, ostensibly leftist parties always end up playing the role of spoiler for actual mobilizing leftist parties that have uh, a, 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 an opportunity to seize power. Also because Merkel retired and we currently have a social democrat green libertarian coalition and the conservative party is leading hard to the right in their opposition work since our left was already acting pretty neolib. Yes. <laughs> These are all... These are all things to consider when looking at European politics. Look to Rosa Luxemburg if you want to understand what happens with social imperialism, okay? Stalin called it social fascists, but, you know, not going to use that term, but, yeah. My face with Imperial Corps is not socialist. I mean, we, a lot of people in this community joke about, like, the Israeli left, but the American left is no different, realistically. Like, yeah, on the Israeli leftist side, there are a lot of uh, there are there are people who are anti um, there are people who are anti apartheid to varying degrees, but overall their voices are marginal, right? Well, it's no different than being a fucking uh, anti imperialist leftist voice in America. Okay, you say what Israeli left, but I mean we're we we do the same shit here. How many communities are out there that like openly will say things along the lines that like America's uh, interest in maintaining its hegemonic power, America's, uh, uh, you know, actions in, in becoming the world superpower have been very bloody. When you say stuff like that, liberals fucking pounce on you. They get very mad. Supposedly progressives. 
Anyway, what do I mean by this? You got guys uh, like Noah Smith who are, you know, who, who claim to be social democrats. I guess like he's more of a neoliberal. He, he's an interesting fellow. I, I think he's like pro socialized medicine, but also when it comes to foreign policy, it's just like might as well have, uh, you know, Voice of America write all of the articles for him, even though that would require someone to like actually read stuff from think tanks, whereas he just basically rehashes uh, Twitter takes that he saw. Uh, on his sub stack, uh, but he learns uh, through the process. And I, and I welcome that. And I think that's great. Um, he's a major India Dick writer as well, which I think is at least an honest position uh, from his perspective. It's more honest to be an India Dick writer. Okay. Um, than anything else. One second. I, 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 hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to receive. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah. She's very baby girl right now. Uh, as I was saying, at least at least he's like more honest, even though, you know, his India dick writing is kind of odd. But uh, what I was trying to say is, uh, yeah, he 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 thinks India is a is a, a great example and he hates China. OK, which is odd because we are almost on like the exact oh, 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 oh. place. What the hell? The hell? Who the hell died and made you the mayor of this town? OK. Mayor of placing baby girl is going crazy right now. You guys see that? Uh, so what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, where was I? You saw that on top of sending people from the area all over the world that is also being suggested by the international community pay for it as well. What? Okay. Okay. Listen, 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 listen. Um, so this, this, uh, this conversation on Twitter that I'm going to briefly mention about American foreign policy before diving into like actual news started off with uh, this take from No Opinion. Okay. He said uh, he was talking to Walid Shahid, friend of the show. Most Americans likely associate U.S. foreign policy with Normandy in the fall of the Berlin Wall. We're the good guys. But most people around the world associate U.S. foreign policy with overseeing the massive civilian casualties overthrowing governments we don't like. Philippines, Cuba, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Korea, Iran, Guatemala, Vietnam, Chile, Nicaragua, Afghanistan, and Iraq. So <coughs> what's funny about this, of course, is that like America is still a very popular country in many of these countries, including Vietnam, as a matter of fact. Okay. That doesn't change the reality that what America has done in Vietnam is gross and, and unjustifiable. You still have children being born with serious physical disabilities as a consequence of the chemical warfare that we engaged in Vietnam. The idea that this is like uh, somehow permissible because the Vietnamese now dick ride America and, and hate China and think America will save them from China is psychotic, okay? But they don't like the American policy. They like American movies. This is another thing that people do not understand. Like, American dick riders love talking about how much uh, these countries love us. These countries love us. It's like, no, bitch. Let me tell you something, okay? We that grew up outside of the United States of America love the culture, okay? The export, the cultural imperialism. We do not love George W. Bush. We do not love American presidents. We do not love American foreign policy. We like the Coca-Cola and we like the Hollywood movies, okay? And it's great. Hollywood is fucking awesome. It is America's greatest export. Greatest export, bar none, okay? We love the Big Macs, we love the excess, and we love the Coca-Cola. Nobody... Is like, man, I sure love the coups that America is doing or the wars that it engages in. Yeah, they like the consumerist aspect of it. Sports are pretty cool. We love NBA. Brazil, 1964, we won't forget. So a lot of dumbasses online that want to defend America run this fucking idea that like, well, <laughs> all polls say these people love America and Americans. And it's like, no, man, they love the fucking movies and shit. Shut the fuck up. And also, many of those polls do not, suspiciously, do not feature any of the fucking Global South countries that America has had direct involvement with. Uh, for some reason, there's no, like, mention of Chile or, or, uh, or Bolivia or, or any of these other fucking countries. For some reason, I don't know why. Anyway, now, having said that, having said that, 
Noah dropped this little tidbit, said, Leftists continue to just slip Korea into their list of bad U.S. wars, expecting the rest of us not to notice. Honestly, one sign that America won the Korean War is the fact that our leftists are still so angry about it. Yeah. Famously, the Korean War is also regarded as the Forgotten War, which, by the way, from Noah's estimation, is because it was so successful. How did we win the Korean War? Oh, that's right. By literally reducing everything that is now known as North Korea to rubble by death and destruction, by utilizing, according to some research, we'll be getting more information about that, U.S. Air Command in Korea bragged about killing one-fifth of the Koreans, um, also engaging in, potentially, chemical warfare from all of the new information that we got from our new allies in Japan. Okay. I thought she was moving again. Also, note that he thinks this was bad for the U.S. to help Afghanistan defend itself against the <laughs> Soviets in 1979. Leftists just sit around dreaming of an empire of their own. Most Americans likely associate your foreign policy. Again, another massive concept of blowback. What happened, and it wasn't in 1979. What happened before 1979? The radicalization of Mujahideen factions was done specifically. Dude, by the way, there's a bunch of people who are now calling me fat, which I think is really funny. Because, like, I just did a fucking nude calendar photo shoot. And I can't tell if it's, like, haters that are saying that to be, like, to try and, like, find new fat material for themselves. I saw this online. I saw this on Twitter. Like, someone was like, you're a fat commie LARPer. And I was like, bitch, what do you mean fat? Fuck you mean? Anyway. Uh, okay, go, go. No, no, it's okay. Kaya. It's okay, go. Go, go, go. She was just drinking water. I pulled the trigger too soon. Go, go. Okay, don't move. Uh, calling you fat is easy because you're insecure about it and get under your skin. No, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely uh, comfortable enough with my body. But I do think that, I mean, I have body dysmorphia for sure. I have body dysmorphia. But I'm certainly very comfortable with my body, especially at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break, which is completely unrelated to what I was going to say, but I wanted to segue. Anyway, you know, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 for free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Yes, that's right. A nudie calendar is coming out for fear and we shot it yesterday. That's why I had eyeliner on. Here's the three minute ad right now, by the way. People paying you only fans money to see your mostly nude calendar. Fuck anyone calling you fat. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to be fat. You know, I am. I mean, it is okay to be fat. It's also fucking nuts to, to be like, Hassan, you're fat. Anyway, where was I? All the fear and people are on it? Yes. So the point is, America's involvement leading up to the uh, invasion of the USSR in Afghanistan, which was, was, you know, gloated about far after the fact, is pretty obvious. It, you need to watch, like, one fucking documentary or read a single article to come to this conclusion if you would like to understand it a little bit better but that would require you to be a curious person and not an incurious stupid person okay um but regardless so noah with his wonderful foreign policy takes once again i mean he went from like talking about econ stuff to to foreign policy and his dive into foreign policy has just basically been his dive into foreign policy has just basically been like rehashing whatever the fuck Rehashing whatever the absolute fuck uh, is is uh, being said by, you know, all of these think tanks, right? But yeah, the idea that like he's gloating about like arming the Mujahideen, like he's fucking uh, Zbrevnev Brzezinski in 1994 to a fucking French magazine, is really weird. That I, I fucked up his name. I'm sorry. It's very hard to say his name. I should never attempt to say a Polish man's name. Zbigniew Brzezinski. Isn't this whole thing America good? Lol, a little ironic. I know. It is. And when your thing is like America good, you can do a couple things. You can be like, well, look at all the other guys. Okay? Look at all the other guys. Look at all the other guys. They're so bad. They're so bad. America has to do everything it can. It, in, a, in a way, it is like identical to the, to the defense of Israel, right? In a way, it is nearly identical to the defense of Israel. Israel's national security concerns trump all. Israel's national security concerns are more important than the apartheid regime. And it's like uh, absolute devastation it brought upon absolute devastation. It brought upon uh, 6 million Palestinians that are permanent refugee outside of uh, uh, historic Palestine and the 5 million Palestinians living under the occupation. Yes. Brzezinski is Mika's dad from morning Joe. I know, I know. So 
it is always identical. It's like America had to do Iraq. America had to do Afghanistan. America had to do Vietnam. The domino effect. We had to do all of these things because if we don't do these things, because if we don't do these things, then like, ooh, the big bad guys are going to come in and take control. These Twitter neolibs are just a new version of Reddit atheists. They're Western chauvinists who hide it behind America isn't great, but everyone else is worse. Exactly. I think ultimately, I think ultimately, here's what's important. It is all Western chauvinism in the end. And the reason why people have this position is because they think, well, I'll be honest, I like living here. I like the hamburger. Okay. Yeah, it sucks that I don't have health care. I don't want to examine why, but I like hamburger. And also, China scary. Also, Russia scary. The USSR scary. Not Russia. Russia is a totally different uh, kind of scary. I like hamburger. I won't eat hamburger. I feel maybe an uh, Afghan warlord will come and take hamburger away. Okay? Noah says America is relatively good, and you say America is objectively bad. Because America is objectively bad. There is some good in America, and America has a lot of promise. But by every metric of success, being the wealthiest nation on the planet, America has failed. It's absolutely failed with all of its power, with all of its influence, with, all, with its economy, with, its, with all of the wealth that exists here. The fact that there are still people dying on the fucking streets due to homelessness. The fact that there are still people, when we have an abundance of food, for example, the fact that there are still people who are food insecure in this country is insane. It's crazy. Any kind of developing nation that, uh, you know, democratically decides to, to try out socialization uh, uh, principles after getting a fucking loan from the IMF before getting cooed would absolutely, if they operated like America with the amount of relative wealth that they have to how much they can help their own citizens before America comes in and implements austerity measures and a fascist coup, if that doesn't work out, obviously, would literally be considered a demonstrable failure. You have to analyze what governments are doing and adjust them to their own personal material conditions. When you look at the USSR, or when you look at China, for example, there was a lot of bad things that happened in the USSR. Make no mistake. There's a lot of mismanagement. There's a lot of uh, you know, awful, uh, chaotic things that took place. I agree. I think that it's important to learn from the mistakes of the USSR, like um, forcible, uh, uh, forcible Russia, uh, uh, what is it called? Russianization? Russification, sorry. Forcible Russification in the USSR. Horrible policy. Um, trying to stop uh, uh, any kind of, trying to stop any kind of like religious uh, momentum from growing. Terrible policy. These are not good ideas. These are objectively bad ideas. These are very harmful ideas. And it also contributed to the downfall. Okay, it contributed to the downfall of the USSR. So, I acknowledge all that. But if you look at it from a pure econ perspective the fact that they went from an agrarian society that uh engaged in uh collectivization over the course of like 50 years which brought about a tremendous amount of of pain and suffering same with china as well okay to their own populations but then they went from a feudal backwater to you know beating america in the space race by sending yuri gagarin into space before america that's crazy that's, that's crazy feat. You have to recognize that. You have to recognize the good and the bad. If you look at it, and, and uh, you know, Noah is an econ guy, if you look at that, and if you look at the metric of, like, development, technological development, um, agricultural development, even though, you know, not great on the Russian front for that either, okay? If you look at all of that, you have to uh, adjust it to the, the material conditions of where the Russian Empire was standing at and where it got to in such a short time frame. That, objectively, is a success, okay? America, on those same metrics, would be considered a failure with how much money it has, how much control it has, how much power it has, and how little it saves its own, uh, how little it does to, to save its own citizens. That's a demonstrable failure. It's all a matter of what, uh, what the metrics of success are, okay? Now... You're really on one today, let me fail. I mean, I don't think I've said anything offensive unless you think that like being the wealthiest country on the fucking planet and, and having like the absolute worst quality of life in comparison to comparable OECD nations that literally are uh, standing in the way that they are due to obviously their own 
uh, imperialist policies originally or, uh, you know, their colonial wealth that they've accrued or the continuation of imperialist policies, but also simultaneously the Marshall Plan. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> these guys, these OECD nations that are our most important allies in the world, you know, like in Western Europe and whatnot, these guys are alive due to the uh, economic help that they got. And more importantly than that, due to the fact that they didn't get as much um, as much uh, interference from the United States, even though they did, but not to the same degree as like a direct coup d'etat, right? Maybe more indirect forms of control through NATO, but not a direct one like in Chile, right? And that led to a tremendous amount of prosperity. And also, dude, just move then. That's your answer. Why is it that so many motherfuckers... First of all, move where? China? But I don't like uh, Chinese policies. But also, why is it that you can be a 12-month subscriber and someone who supposedly is a liberal... Oh, you're joking. Okay. Because many people said this in my replies. So many neoliberals turn into Stephen fucking Crowder at the first sight of criticism of the American position. Okay? Okay. The point isn't that you hate America. The point is that you only hate America and you have zero guiding moral principles outside of that. You should have guiding ethics and politics beyond America bad, says Bimby Philosophy. Oh, my God. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, um, this is COPE. My guiding moral, uh, moral principles, okay, my ethics, my moral standards are quite literally the reasons as to why I say America bad. It is those who say, no, America good, actually. They are the ones who do not have any guiding philosophies or, or real moral principles beyond masking their, uh, their, their genuine Western chauvinist perspectives with a little bit of, uh, well, you know, it has to happen this way. It has to be this way. America has to be the dominant force because objectively it's better than China. Objectively it's better than anyone else. How about no singular power? That's a lot of words to say you just want to appease dictators. If America's war machine was dismantled, there would instantly be genocides all over the world. The only thing stopping constant war on the planet is American power. Russia would take the Baltic states and China would take Taiwan the second America couldn't defend them. Yeah. China would take Taiwan the second America couldn't defend them, except for some reason they didn't uh, in all of this uh, commotion that's happening when it was a perfect opening for China to engage in that if they were so desperate to do so. Remember, I told you this. Okay? So... This is probably my least uh, popular attitude, which is why a lot, of my, a lot of my naysayers love harping on this because there is a tremendous amount of propaganda that pushes people to never question American hegemony. There's also a secondary fear that many Americans have that like, what if the big scary guys overseas that we do not personally understand, what if they are worse than America? They could be right? I'm not even discounting that personally. But that's the reason why most people in America still end up either quietly or vociferously defending American imperialism. This also is, uh, this also definitely is like my major point of contention, my major difference from like a lot of my other counterparts in this space. Um, my, my consistent criticism of the country that I pay taxes in, okay? my consistent criticism of the, the country that I live in, it is very frustrating that this is, unfortunately, one way to like uh, hemorrhage a, a, a viewership. You know, there's a lot of people that just want healthcare and never really think about anything else other than that. They've never really examined uh, why people like us say America bad and then follow through on the examples of why it is bad and yet, instead of examining those examples, they go, oh, you're just fucking saying America bad. That's it. You just hate America. Anyway, but to which I just, uh, and here, this is what it is. This is what happened. So I replied to Noah. I said, America is bad. There's a mountain of evidence as to why. We live in a world where the U.S. is the hegemonic power. It takes tremendous amounts of violence and coercion to get there and keep that power. You think that's good. I think that's bad, and America should change its ways. Matty Iglesias said, change how? Um... And, and this fucking weirdo said, he said the thing and got very excited. To which I replied with, the U.S. is currently defending an apartheid regime which is engaging in ethnic cleansing and displays, displacement with our weapons. We also let our other uh, partner in the region, Saudi Arabia, commit a genocide in Yemen. Do you think either of these things are good? Was Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan 
you know, were these things good? To which he, I guess, replied with, yes, but your coverage on everything is based around this and it has led to you sounding like a clown. Wrong about Ukraine. Wrong about the U.S. missile strike in Iran. Ho wrong about a hospital strike. Acting like a ballistic expert. It's quite embarrassing, actually, which I, didn't, which I hadn't seen until this very moment, which I will reply to in a second. But the idea that these motherfuckers have no principles and no positions opens them up to very little criticism because I assume this uh, drama-baiting channel doesn't really talk about anything other than this guy sucks, this guy is bad, I'm going to talk about ReactGate or some shit like that, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to have any fucking political principles when your goal is to simply say, Hassan is bad and here is why. I'm going to take some shit out of context and make it seem as though he's wrong. Now, of course, if most of your videos are getting like 10K, 20K views, and then you pop off with like Hassan is bad and it gets 500 views or 500K views, you're going to do that. You're going to do that over and over again. And especially because you have no positions personally. That's it. This is the entire reason as to why the 4chan brigades were so successful in pushing alt-right politics for a very long time because a lot of people online, they love the spirit of debate. They think like debates are where we find the truth about certain things, right? That's how you find out. But if you have no convictions, if you have no real positions, and you simply are there to smear the other side, you're going to get away with a lot. You can just say whatever the fuck you want, and most people don't know what your positions are. So you could just say something, and then people that don't like you will then glob onto that. They'll grab onto that, and go, they'll go, yeah, you're right. This guy is bad. That's what happens. He seems to know a lot about your stream for a hater. Brother, my stream is, is populated by a lot of those people. So Felix Biederman will be joining me on the broadcast at 1.30 today, by the way. So once again, the only version of his contest pops off is because you pay them attention. I don't pay them attention and it still pops off. It doesn't matter. You just know their position is akin to, I just want to be left alone and let people live their lives without interference. That's not true. So the question I have. Uh -uh. No, no biting that. You have a toy. Your audio gate is off on the attack. Really? I don't know. I replied to Noah by saying America is bad. And Noah, I guess, uh, took that as an opportunity to, once again, behave exactly like Steven Crowder, okay? Every, every intellectual giant that is a substack that loves neoliberalism, when questioned about American foreign policy, basically turns into fucking Steven Crowder. Like, it, it, it's, so, it's so silly. He straight up replied, he, he quote tweeted me with this. After I said America is bad, and here is why. He went, there you go. He admitted it. Leftists only have one guiding moral principle, and it's anti-Americanism. It's good to see the country waking up to this fact. And it's like, dude, you didn't make an argument at all. You simply just went, look, this guy hates America. That is the most intellectually uncurious position you can take. How is this any different than what Steven Crowder does? Why? Aren't you supposed to be, like, progressive? What is happening? What the fuck? I made an argument. I know you saw it, but you don't respond. What was the argument? Wouldn't Russia invade the Baltic states without NATO support? Yeah, dude. That's what NATO was around for. I love that you see my message, but you don't respond because you know it's problematic. Brother, Russia got fucking owned in Ukraine. Okay? What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? You're literally doing the thing where you're like, Russia is both the most powerful fucking imperialist superpower and also the same guys that like couldn't move beyond uh, the, the territories that they're holding on to now, which is still more than they had before they invaded Ukraine. Okay, a strategic blunder on all parts. But get the fuck out of here. I made an argument. I know you saw it, but you don't respond. No, I didn't respond to it because I didn't see it. Yeah, NATO was formed post-World War II to protect Soviet-controlled Baltics from post-Soviet Russia. They had tremendous foresight and certainly wasn't, a, certainly wasn't a way to just like quietly and sometimes loudly put fascists back into control in the European countries uh, because they were the most anti-communist because we recognized that like that was the real enemy. America did. What happened, dude? I thought Russia was taking over the whole country and then going into Poland. What happened? Here's the difference. If you, in your career, like Noam Chomsky, for example, who is definitely uh, anti-American imperialism, okay, and one of the most important voices in anti-American imperialism, anti-imperialism as a whole, 
okay? If you get one thing wrong, or if you ever say something that can be misconstrued in your career, they will literally yell at you forever. Even if you get 99% of everything else right, and, and at a time when the state is regularly spreading misinformation, if you side with neoliberal foreign policy talking heads, okay? It won't matter. You can get everything wrong. And they have. And the consequences of that have been incredibly fucking bloody. Specifically, even when it uh, comes, even when we talk about Ukraine, they can get away with saying Russia blew up the own, blew up its own fucking pipeline, which is like an insane thing to say. And then quietly go, yeah, actually, maybe it wasn't Russia. Like a couple of weeks later. And no one will remember it. You can get every single foreign policy take wrong. Every single one. But as long as you are siding with the United States of America, okay, then it doesn't matter. These fucking weirdos cut videos about how China is going to invade Taiwan every day. No one turns around and goes, brother, when is China invading Taiwan? When the ha why hasn't this happened yet? Maybe it'll happen 20 years down the line. Maybe it'll happen 10 years down the line. So they can go, oh, I was right all along. Okay, well, you were wrong for the past 30 fucking years. What are you saying? These guys can make videos about how China is collapsing tomorrow. China is collapsing tomorrow. China is collapsing tomorrow over and over again. Those videos will get millions and millions of views. But ultimately, it's not sound analysis. It's just feeding into American exceptionalism and Western chauvinism. And a lot of people want to be babied on this issue. They do not want to hear things outside of people just feeding them the same fucking propaganda over and over again. And if, if they're wrong on it, it doesn't fucking matter because no one will ever second guess it. No one will ever second guess it. So I urge you, if you are intellectually curious to, I don't know, look at a broad variety of information on uh, on issues. Have you considered that I like to be told things that I think are true? Exactly. And it's just like this never ending feedback loop. But once again, like I said, I expect more from someone like no opinion, who is at least like an independent person. You know what I mean? He's supposed to hold up intellectual curiosity as an important formative value. So once again, it's always odd when I see someone like that also LARP in the same exact direction as everybody else social imperialism but when they cannot address the actual issues at hand they'll try to fucking grab anything and everything they can to be like well pff, i don't know in an endless sea of of bombing the living shit out of gaza what if the al-shifa hospital wasn't bombed by israel why because israel told me so They've lied every single day since then and lied every single day before then and have continued to blow up other hospitals and ambulances and whatnot. But guess what? Let's have a conversation about this now for two weeks on hand as they continue fucking blowing up other medical professionals, even though the propaganda that they put forward was literally dismantled by Western outlets. And to this day, we still do not have conclusive evidence. On Al Shifa, but you know what we do have conclusive evidence on? Israel has been sieging other hospitals in the area. But you can't, you literally cannot engage on this point. So what you must do instead is just like grab on, just buckle in. The Al Ahli Hospital, not Al Shifa, sorry. The Al Ahli Hospital was the one where we were talking about the bombing and who did it. Al Shifa is the one that's being sieged right now. Apologies. Huh. Matt Iglesias responded, uh, change how, to which Ryan responded, stop sanctioning everybody, respect democracy, don't overthrow the government of Pakistan because we've off we're offended by Imran Khan, re-enter the Iran deal, compete with China by doing an even better belt and road, make things not war. To which Yashar said, the Iran deal does nothing to stop the Islamic Republic's uh, malign behavior in the region and around the world. It only deals with the nuclear program, which was never a true threat to begin with. Oh, didn't tell that to Israel. Uh, the nuclear stuff was always a distraction. Ryan said it's a step towards bringing them into better relations with the West and giving them something to lose if they keep up their malign behavior. If there's nothing to lose, the faction pushing malignancy is strengthened, which he's right on. Um, uh, to Also, Matt Iglesias responded to Ryan and said, you can't really do the Iran deal and unilaterally stop sanctioning so many countries. Ryan replied and said, yeah, you could dramatically move the sanctions bar and still do an Iran deal while relieving a bunch of stress elsewhere. Well, uh, while relieving a bunch elsewhere. 
I love this guy going, the U.S. overthrowing Khan's government is pure conspiracy theory. How are you people buying into this? To the guy who literally, and then he added the guy. He added the two guys that uncovered the story. He went, do the Intercept folks really buy into this? Please, Murtaza Hussein, do the Intercept guys really buy into this? Where is this coming from? I wonder. Oh, that's right. Anyway, so the reason why I did this is because, you know, all of this still ties back to uh, Israel, which is a continuation of American foreign policy. Okay, that's it. This all stems from a deep insecurity that they feel that they know America's on the decline. I think so, too. <clears throat> yeah. Hassan doesn't really care about the people. He streams for money and views. He's a greedy millionaire, just like the rest of them. His viewers are far left, so he must say, America bad and advocate for neo-anti-Semitism. That's right. I have the most brilliant foresight on the planet that 10 years ago, I noticed that uh, I would be the one of the only, like, three people that are actually successful while simultaneously advocating for these policies that are like deeply unsuccessful and unpopular in America because I believe that they are right. I believe that they're morally correct. Okay. Yeah. When I had 30 people watching me. Okay. How about, how about this? Let's say that's correct. Let's say I'm a capitalist grifter. Okay. And I'm saying all this stuff because you believe secretly that, uh, you know, this stuff is really popular everywhere because you're fucking brain broken by Twitter and you think that Twitter is real life. And then anytime the American government shows that Twitter is not real life and they don't give a fuck about like even popular things and they will just behave in a way that is, uh, that is aligned with corporate interests regardless. And you go, well, I guess Twitter is not real life, lol, as though we didn't fucking know that. Let's say that I don't care about the people that are stream for money and the views. I'm a greedy millionaire, right? What changed about what I'm saying? Why is it that you never can respond to the arguments and instead simply just go, you're rich, lol. Okay, well, if you are positioned against me, then you must be a capitalist, right? And if you are a capitalist, then why the fuck are you getting mad at me? You should respect me for having the foresight and knowing full well that I could carve a niche market for myself, despite the fact that I could make a shit ton more money if I was a fucking grifter, just like all of those other grifters that you probably watch. I can respond to your arguments, but you will ban me, let me fail out. No, I will not ban you for responding to my arguments. I ban people for derailing the stream sometimes. I currently have you on screen. Just go ahead. Tell me the Iraq war was justified. Tell me that the Israeli apartheid and mentioning that Israel is an apartheid state is actually unjustifiable and it's actually neo-anti-Semitism, as you've claimed. Stop adding everyone I pull up to the stream chatters. You did not address anything here, okay? His viewers are far left, so he says America bad and advocate for neo-anti-Semitism. So, the question is, one, do you think Israel is an apartheid state? Or rather, let me reframe it. One, why do you disagree with the reality that Israel is an apartheid state? Okay? Go ahead. Answer that question. What a silly argument. If you wanted, you could have banned him for his initial statement. I know. His initial statement was idiotic, and I didn't ban him. I gave him charitability because I want to understand what this position is. So let's hear it. America, America, fuck yes, yeah, stands, dude. They got nothing. The saddest part is so many of these motherfuckers literally just sound like Steven Crowder, but they think they're above that shit. They think they're somehow different than Steven Crowder. Okay. Anyway, while I wait for this dumbass, let's listen to what Yanis Varoufakis had to say. Try very hard to extract from people like me. Oh, I don't live there, but according to Palestinians like Yosef Haddad, it's just anti-Semitic propaganda. I live in Italy and our government is far more conservative than the Israeli one. Uh, first of all, what? What are you saying? Dude, just read this, okay? Here. Chatter, just read this. Okay, this is an Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the occupied territories, okay? Go ahead. Here. Just read this and come back to me, okay? Here. Yosef Haddad. What the fuck do you mean? One guy? Think about this. Think about this line of thought, Italian man. Think about your line of thought. Your argument is, uh, well, one Palestinian said that it's anti-Semitic propaganda. Okay, well, here's a fucking Israeli human rights group that says it is an apartheid, okay? Here's the thing about liberals. They love talking about Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, 
when it comes to China, when it comes to America's foreign adversaries. But when those very same groups turn around and mention in no uncertain terms, like very, very clear terms that Israel's an apartheid state, because it is, they go, oh, well, you can't trust the Human Rights Watch. So what happened? What happened? Not this guy, but others do this all the time. Ask them, why do you not care about the Human Rights Watch when it comes to this shit? I thought you loved using the Human Rights Watch. Yosef Haddad is a Zionist propagandist. I don't know who the fuck Yosef Haddad is, but one person's takes doesn't fucking change anything. And then he sent me a fucking YouTube video. I'm going to lose my mind. Epic video, dude. Thank you. Also, you got clapped by Fossabot because you tried to send a fucking link when you're not subscribed. Just letting you know. You didn't get, like, free speech uh, blocked or anything. Epic video, dude. How are you any different than the fucking Sargon of Akkad? He's Israeli, not Palestinian. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even fucking matter. The guy saw a brown dude and thought, oh, this guy must be Palestinian. But here's what's funny, okay? Here's what is funny about this entire situation. This is no different for all the fucking debate perverts out there. What most of you do without realizing is no fucking different than, especially on this issue, than like all of the Sargon of Akkads of the world that you thought you were above, okay? All you could turn around and go is like, well, these guys said some anti-Semitic things, so obviously Israel's not an apartheid state, I guess. Like you're doing the, look around, there's so many videos over and over again. And you're doing the exact same thing on when it comes to crime, for example. We're like, look around, there's so much crime happening. You're behaving like a reactionary while simultaneously thinking that you're actually progressive. It's childish, it's stupid, and you're wrong. Yosef Haddad is a Palestinian Israeli who's brainwashed by growing up in Israel. I don't give a shit who Yosef Haddad is. One guy in his fucking YouTube video does not change the reality on the ground, okay? It doesn't. And this is not my first foray into talking with people who claim they're fucking progressive while simultaneously lapping up and, and regurgitating stupid-ass reactionary propaganda, okay? I think you guys forget, I literally worked with Dave Rubin, okay? I saw this happen. I saw the why I left the left strategies. It's so stupid. Oh, why I left the left? I'm still a liberal. I'm just a real liberal. I'm still a liberal. I'm just a progressive liberal. What happened? Under Donald Trump, so many of the people openly saw that that was stupid, right? Because they hated Donald Trump, and these guys were sucking off Donald Trump. So they were like, okay, well, these guys are bad. They're lying about being a liberal, it turns, it turns out. Now, all of those very same guys do the same shit. They don't say that they aren't uh, progressive any longer. Some of them do. Some of them are at least honest about it. Okay, but they stay, still maintain the posture that they're fucking liberals ultimately while taking all of the... Look, 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 dude, dude, dude. Hassan is like the left-wing version of Ben Shapiro, two faces of the same coin. I'm sorry, brother, but you can't do this after coming in here, trying to fucking prove a point. I give you an actual fucking... Uh, an actual organization on the ground that has been documenting that has been documenting everything that Israel's been doing and why it's an apartheid state. And instead of fucking replying to that or maybe like using this as an opportunity to learn more, and I'm trying to be as charitable as possible to you, you turn around and you go, well, this one YouTube video says it's not. I mean, that's insane. That's insane. And then you turn around and you say, I'm like the left-wing version of Ben Shapiro. Like, please exercise a little bit of fucking criticism, uh, self-criticism, exercise a little bit of fucking... Just critical thinking. Oh, what happened? You just demonstrated that you literally do not have any principles whatsoever, and you're just in here to shit smear. Also, you just made up a funny term, too. I'm a post-Zionist. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I've never heard that before. Yeah, post-Zionist, neo-anti-Semitism, fascism are going bonkers with the word salad. I don't think this guy is a fucking fascist, okay? I don't think he is. I think he's just a little misguided. He probably watched a bunch of fucking hate videos on me, and he got misguided. Send me the link. I'll read it. I'll read it, but I need the link. Yeah, someone sent you the link. Uh, one of my mods sent you the link. Go read it. Maybe it will uh, help you reconsider. Okay? There is no more clear open and shut case than this. Okay? You can't... Uh, this is anti-Semitism your way out of the situation. If you debate, stop doing direct attack. This is from someone that watched too many debates. I mean, I'm not even doing that right now. It's easy to have no public views and go around being a general motherfucker online. You never have convictions for anything while saying whatever you want about anyone else. A million of these guys online. I know. It goes back to that same guy who like covers YouTube drama, but then all of a sudden is like an expert on Israel, I guess. And it's like you have to ask that person, like, do you think Israel's an apartheid state? 
Do you know anything about Israel or Palestine? Or are you just in here to be like, Hassan is bad, by the way, so you can fucking shamelessly try to, to gain a little bit of prominence and a clout, uh, a crumb of clout off of this. You know, not the guy that I'm yelling at right now. Those who... So stupid. ...try very hard to extract from people like me, from DiEM25, a condemnation of the attack by the Hamas guerrillas uh, will never get it. And they will never get it for a very simple reason. Those who care about humans without any discrimination, those who care equally about a Jew and an Arab, uh, must ask themselves a very simple question. What exactly is their idea of the cessation of hostilities? That Palestinians are going to lay down their arms and go back to, into the largest open-air prison in the world, where they are constantly suffocated by the apartheid state. In other words, back in South Africa, in the era of apartheid, uh, what was the problem? Was it that um, uh, some uh, uh, members of the black resistance, uh, including the ANC, but not only the ANC, took up arms against the South African regime and sometimes killed innocent people. Was that the problem with apartheid? No, the problem was apartheid. Apartheid, whether it's practiced in South Africa or in Palestine or Israel, is always going to procure violence because it's a violent, misanthropic system. Uh, any human being living un under apartheid at some point will either die a terrible, silent death or rebel and often take innocent people with them. The criminals here are not Hamas, not even the Israeli settlers who are killing Palestinians. The criminals are Europeans, us. Every single member of uh, our German society, our French society, our Greek society, our United States society, we have participated in this crime against humanity over the decades by keeping our, mouth, our mouths shut as long as there is no trouble down there, as long as people are dying um, outside the reach of cameras, as long as it's Palestinians who die and not the occupiers. So this incredible tragedy must be converted into an opportunity for us Europeans to wake up and to redeem ourselves by demanding that collectively we take the first decisive step towards peace. And that is the destruction of the state of apartheid, just like we did in South Africa. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would love to have Giannis Varoufakis on the show, but I can't. That's as close as you get to the perfect answer to the brave browbeating from media and the political class demanding you commit Hamas. I would just add that this is in the clip below. That's the very same scum or actually genocidal terrorists. Do not let yourself be browbeaten by depraved genocidal Western media and political class. There was also, um, hold on, there was another uh, thing I wanted to show you. Like, the thing is, does Hamas engage in acts of terror? Absolutely, okay? Killing civilians is an act of terror. That's it. That's precisely why Israel is the most militarized terrorist state in this conflict, in this specific conflict, and is engaging in that act of terror over the Palestinian population by, one, maintaining an apartheid regime, which is brutal and awful, Okay, but also, too, by engaging in the act of direct ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement to the tune of millions of Palestinians being forcibly relocated currently from the northern Gaza Strip. Okay, there is no there, there is there's no uncertainty here. There's no confusion here. That is what's going on. And everyone that tries to tell you that it's confusing or complex or complicated or difficult to understand is saying that because they're too cowardly to say Israel should be able to do whatever the fuck they're doing. Okay. That's it. But they want to do this under the auspices of liberal progressive values, right? Which is precisely the reason why they can't just openly say it as it is and they hide behind terms like complexity and, and, and uh, confusion. Here's Vox's very own Zach Beauchamp who says, look, there are black and white morals uh, situations of politics. Sometimes everything is simple and the blame can be neatly assigned to one side. I do agree with this, by the way. Israel-Palestine is not one of those cases. Never has been. And I'm suspicious of anyone who suggests it. That's what the senior correspondent at Vox said. 
I do agree. There are black and white moral, uh, there are black and white moral situations, and then there are gray ones, okay? The problem is, Israel is probably one of the greatest examples of a situation that is not, that isn't fucking morally gray. It's black and white. You would never say that about apartheid South Africa. You wouldn't say that about chattel slavery. You wouldn't say that about, uh, you wouldn't say that about Nazi Germany. So, and you wouldn't say that about apartheid South Africa. So why, why are you trying to say, well, this is great. It's great. I don't understand why people say this. Israel's an apartheid state. This is immoral and should end. How to get there might be hard, but the morality is pretty simple unless you believe Israel's security concerns necessitate brutalizing 5 million Palestinians and keeping 6 million in refugee status. It's that simple. So Israel is just plain evil? Okay, I'm not saying that. You're the one who's attributing this to Israel. You want to know why you're attributing it to that, to Israel? Because when you come to terms with the morality of the situation, you go, oh, you know what? You're right, actually. Yeah, this state is behaving in a very evil manner. But you don't want to recognize that, so you go, uh, so they're just plain evil? Okay. No, there's material reasons as to why Israel operates in the way that it does. Okay? But the impact of that is really bad. The impact of that on the ground is really bad to the Palestinians. And it's really bad to the Israelis as well in less immediate ways. Okay? It's not as easy to discern the secondary impact that like maintaining an apartheid state does to the soul of an entire nation, okay? Previous nihilist chatter responded, by the way. Oh, he did? What did he say? Did he learn about it? This is why I say it is virtually impossible for you to look at the situation on the ground in a situation like Israel-Palestine and not immediately be shocked by the horror, okay? Not immediately be shocked by the horror. It is not, it is not something that is, is uh, impossible to discern, I agree that there's Jewish supremacy and a lot of racist Jews in Israel, but there are racist people in every country. I face racism myself as a person of color, and I don't support liberal Zionism. I support post-Zionism and labor Zionism, and I love Ben-Gurionism in general. Israel is different. Some Israelis are racist. That's it. I read some of it. Go read all of it, and then come back, okay? I gave you an Israeli human rights organization. I love Ben-Gurionism in general, he says. Okay, man, thank you. Thank you for the labor Zionist uh, position that you had. Like, motherfucking Einstein recognized that this shit was, like, untenable, okay? And that was, like, 75 fucking years ago. But here we are in 2023, and this guy's like, oh, I don't know, I'm, a, I'm different, dog. I'm different. Anyway, you can't, uh, you can't be out here. Einstein supported Zionism for many years. Yeah, I know. That's why I used him as an example. <sighs> Hold on. It happened two times where Israeli soldiers are talking, taking propaganda pictures of being nice to Palestinians and immediately executing them on the safe passage. I, I uh, haven't read accounts on that. I mean, I saw Twitter posts on it, but um, yeah. Support Zionism for years. Doesn't make you support Zionism now. Dumbass shatter people change. Yeah, I know. People will be like, MLK was a Zionist. Anyway. Um, but now here. let's look, look at the Hamas charter. The Hamas charter was written by maybe half a dozen people uh, in 1988 at a time, at a moment of an extreme Israeli attack on Gaza. It has no status. They've repeated over and over again that it doesn't apply anymore. And if you're interested in charters, why keep to that? Uh, take the governing party in Israel, Likud. Uh, it, uh, it, it grew out of Herut. That's its uh, ideological center, Begin's Herut, Netanyahu's Herut. Its position, never changed, is that the land of Israel, that the entire land of Israel belongs to the Jews. That includes today's Jordan, okay? In fact, the old slogan was both sides of the Jordan. That's ours and this is too. too. They've never changed that. Uh, so that's their charter. Can anybody pay attention to it? Of course not. Then came the January election and Israel intensified its attack with U.S. support. After that, there are repeated attacks Israeli attacks and ceasefires agreements. Every ceasefire agreement is approximately like what I read. What happens is Israel completely dismisses and disregards it, can maintains the siege in violation of the ceasefire, increases the violence. Hamas lives up to it, and Israel officially accepts that until, agrees to that, until some escalation of Israeli violence leads to a Hamas reaction and then another episode of mowing the lawn. That's been going on since November 2005. Hamas is not a nice organization. They do a lot of rotten things. That's for the Palestinians to worry about. 
but it has nothing to do with us. If we were supporting Hamas, nothing, zero. If we were supporting Hamas, it would be our problem, but we're not. And what they do is for Palestinians to deal with, what we deal with is what we are doing, which is supporting massive criminal operations all over the region, blocking peace. Uh, that's for us to be concerned. Yeah. That's why he's always like, bro, what the fuck? Uh, how, am I, how am I supposed to tell Hamas uh, what to do and what not do? What am I going to do? I have no control. And I personally understand, as many do as well, that they are born out of this apartheid structure, okay? You breathe fire into Hamas, and, it's, and, and legitimizes existence every time you fucking kill another Palestinian. That's it. So stupid. Very same people that don't want to fucking recognize the ethnic cleansing, the very same people that don't want to recognize the ethnic cleansing that is going on right now and the ethnic displacement that's going on right now are also the very same people that fucking try to turn around and, and refuse to reckon with the history it's so, it's so easy to just be like, oh, dude, you're fucking saying America bad or you're saying Israel bad, and that's because you're anti-Semitic and not because of all of the things that you have covered. And instead of all of the things that you have covered, instead of all the things that you've mentioned, instead of all the organizations that you work with, instead of all of, of the, the genuine facts on the ground of the matter, I will just fucking look to whatever I can to be like, pfft, well, you were wrong. <laughs> yeah, guess what? Anyway, like, dude, listen, look, 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 here it is. Hassan, what is more anti-Semitic than wanting Israel to become another fundamentalist Muslim country? Brother, here's how this works, okay? What you are doing, what you are doing right now, unironically, is just rehashing what I already mentioned. Every single argument devolves into two categories, Islamophobia, all Muslims are barbaric, uh, anti-Semitic, uh, ruthless monsters. And also, two, and they're fundamentalists, every single one of them. And also, two, Israel's national security concerns are the reason why there has to be an apartheid state to stop this from happening. You just, you just so what it away uh, a, a nationalist ethno state. There are almost fifty Muslim countries in the world, and only one Jewish. Okay. I, 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 this is not an argument that is new. I've heard this a million times over, okay? I've heard this a million times over. You don't get to go, all right, well, guess what? There's only one Jewish country, so they get to have an apartheid state. That's insane. That is not an argument. That's not an argument. Once your bubble is popped, once your bubble is bursted in this regard, you all of a sudden, it, when you're in a when you're in a circle of people who don't understand it, do you hate nationalism so much? Yes, nationalism was utilized as an emancipatory movement in post-colonial nations. Okay, nationalism once you are established as a nation state is quite literally just Nazism. That's what it is. That's what's going on. Also, Muslims are not an ethnicity, for the record. Like. I don't know if you know this, but many Muslim nations fight against one another. The idea that so the idea that like there is consensus among the entire the entire population uh, of the entire Islamic world is ridiculous. But you can only engage in this like argument that they are uh, a, a monolith if you are just like an Islamophobic racist person. Anyway, also Israel is an ultra nationalist country as well. Oh, and now we're back to the 2014 era Sam Harris ass arguments. Wait, if Islam is not a religion, how is Islamophobia racist? If Islam is a religion, how is Islamophobia racist? Islamophobia is racialized, dumbass. That's the reason why in the aftermath of 9-11, the first hate crime that was done wasn't done on a Muslim person, but a Sikh one because he was wearing a fucking turban. Okay, because he was brown and he was wearing a fucking turban. That's the same exact reason why most people don't know I'm Muslim until they find out what my name is. Because Islamophobia is racialized. Are you stupid? How do you not understand these very basic concepts? Okay, we're done. I can't. Remember, this is why I stopped. This is why I stopped debating fucking losers in the chat, okay? Because every single time I used to pull motherfuckers in and shit on them, okay, some other guy would go, well, that guy was stupid. I actually have really good ideas. Because remember, we started this conversation with this person where, where uh, he basically was like, well, actually, 
well, actually, personally, you know, you don't get it. Like, you don't have good arguments. I can respond to your arguments, but you will ban me. Hassan doesn't care about the people. He streams for money and views. So I asked them, okay, well, then address the arguments, okay? My background is irrelevant. What you think about my background is irrelevant. Address the arguments. And it fell apart immediately. He went with, well, here's a YouTube video. And then a bunch of other shit like, I love Ben Gurionism. Israel's different. Some Israelis are racist. That's it. I read some of it. Not a single argument has been addressed. It has basically been a 30-minute uh, uh, back and forth where I'm trying to do as... I I'm trying to fucking be as charitable as possible. And the argument is like falling apart. And he's just like grabbing onto whatever the fuck he can. He says, you're not Muslim, Hassan. You're an agnostic person. Oh my God. I'm going to lose my mind. You should tell that to all the fucking Hamasabi uh, heads out there who keep saying I'm fucking Hamas. Anyway, the reason why I don't do these kinds of conversations any longer is not because you guys have some like brilliant insight that I am genuinely scared about, okay? You don't. There's a couple different reasons. One, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. <sighs> Two, you can also get gifted a sub if you are lucky. Hassan Abiz Nipple, thank you for the five community gifted subs. As I was stating... As I was stating. It was on in Palestine. I live in Palestine. I was watching since the three years. I respect whatever you said. And people are stupid. Thank you. Law tip. Words and sound logic don't change people. Experiences do. Mine was visiting jail and seeing what criminal punishment means in this country. To make an argument that changes someone is to take them on a journey. The person has to be willing to walk that path with you, though. Shit is hard. Keep it up, champ. I know. I just despise so many people that have become so utterly uncharitable as a consequence of like all of my worst moments being laid out uh, in front of me time and time again. You know what I mean? Angry moments, things that are clipped out of context that just recirculate over and over again, over and over again that serve only one purpose. And that is to say, he's bad. His opinions are wrong. His opinions are wrong without ever trying to understand what these opinions are. And that person basically demonstrated exactly why I don't do these kinds of things usually. Because one, it's unproductive, unhelpful. You're usually just like engaging with someone who is not very smart. Okay. I could do that by like replying to him in chat, or I could do that by bringing him into discord. And the, 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 the reality is that like, it will be the same. It'll be the exact fucking same thing. It'll be like Ben Shapiro dunking on fucking college students. Okay. And that's great. That works really well for TikTok. And I maybe should go back to that a little bit every now and then. Okay. But ultimately, but ultimately, I try to, I don't know, uh, do my very best to keep uh, engaging with people and, and try to stay on message and not get derailed. The problem is, as soon as, I, as soon as I yell at one of these guys, then 11 other guys pop up and they have just the same fucking idiotic arguments, but they pop in and they think, oh, well, that guy was stupid. Okay, that guy was stupid. I actually have a really good take now. Trust me. You don't understand. And we're just, you know, circling the drain. Exactly. It's just shit. I've done all of this already. Anyway, Hassan, why do you think your takes are uh, great and enlightened? Hassan, you're not too smart either. You're just rich. I'm an Italian and I live in poverty. I do the best I can. Oh, brother, you, you just dropped the, the let's talk about the arguments and literally just started doing the same thing that we were just talking about. OK, I don't think my takes are so great and enlightened. And I also say I'm stupid all the time. OK, I, I literally say it all the time. I, I've, I've never strayed away from that. I have consistently said I'm not a very smart guy. OK, you are the one who's saying that you claim to be very intelligent. I never have. I think I have a, a decent uh, a conscious here. OK, that's what it is. Israel's not an apartheid state. Do you want me to explain why? OK, dude. Let's hear it, buddy. Come on. Go ahead. Should I do a guest star with this dumb fuck? I, I, I genuinely am like, no, come on. Go ahead. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Go ahead. From an it Italian post-Zionist man. Where is he? How do I guest star, motherfuckers? Don't give Italians any sauce. I, I'm so sick and tired of just people constantly fucking saying the dumbest shit. Where is he? What was his username? I'm going to try to see if I can invite him on guest star. Nihilistic myth misanthropy. How do I do a guest star? I don't even know how to do it. I've never done it. <sighs> Let's see. Add, uh, community. Is that what it is? Guest star. Guest star. Is that how it works? Stream together? No. Is that what it is? Is, that stream is it stream together? 
Is that how I do it? Is that guest star? Create a channel. Safely brings guests onto your stream. Here we go. Guest star. Backstage activity will be recorded for safety. Group capture browser source. Individual browser source for each guest. No. Just never mind. Use audio only. Okay. Here, I'm going to invite you. You can just talk on it. Okay. How about that? Add sources in your streaming software. Um, I don't have my... Okay. I sent you an invite. I know what he's going to say. I already know the talking points. I just want to hear him say it. Why is he not responding? I don't understand. I've invited you as a guest. Refresh. Keep streaming. I'm writing the message in the meantime with different explanations. Wait. No, motherfucker. I'm inviting you to the stream. You can speak to me in real time if you want to. Come on, dude. What do you mean you're writing the message in different... Oh, Jesus Christ. Bro, I was like, hold on, dude. I got a fucking essay to write. Okay, how about you... How about you just come on and tell me exactly what you want to say? What is happening here? I'm too shy? Oh. Oh. <sighs> Dying a little bit. Okay. Well, I guess we're not doing a guest star. I tried. Man, social anxiety is a bitch. Okay, dude. Uh, uh, chatters are so funny. No, it, it, the, here's the problem, okay? There's no real point regardless. It was just, it's just a derail, okay? These guys don't want to do any of this shit. They just want to fucking chirp. That's it. That's it. This chatter was in a chat this morning. They were insane. Oh, said eating meat is evil. If he talks to you, you can't spitball a big paragraph of insults in his discord. I mean, it's just, it's always a waste of time. It, all of these things are a waste of fucking time. Always. I love, I love being a vegan and being like, dude, eating meat is so bad. But also then just straight up being like, oh. <sighs> Why not challenge someone who knows who's well versed on the subject and used to talking in front of 25k plus people instead of some random chatters who isn't projecting cowardness? Really? I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I literally went on television. Like I went on a a a relatively hostile interview on TV. What do you mean? What you actually mean is why won't you debate my bad faith uh debate champion? Okay, that's it who will cut a thousand fucking hours of, uh, of, of videos, right? And why should you get rolled? Exactly. Do you want to come on and fucking roll me then if, if that's what you think happened? Is that what you want? Do you want a guest star? You want the smoke? Or are you going to sit back and be like, well, I'm a pathetic little bitch who doesn't know how to talk about these things. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm not versed just stating facts. Exactly. You don't know anything. This is what I've literally been saying from the jump. That's the point. You don't know anything and you're just like on it for team sports because someone that you like and a community that you like has literally told you like this guy's bad and he got rolled and neither do you. That's why you challenge shatters. I didn't fucking just challenge shatters. I literally told you not only have I since the beginning of this, since the beginning of this incursion, literally have brought up Israeli Knesset members, scholars, PhDs, academics have sourced all of my material from some of the most formative Israel scholars, okay? I've had journalists on. You literally, you, you just refuse to look at any of that shit and you go, you can't talk to a single person. I tell you an example of two different conversations that I had, one on BBC and one against Pierce Morgan. You go, oh, you got rolled. Well, your opinion is fucking not important in this situation because you personally admitted you don't know the facts. You just admitted your own personal stupidity. No, I didn't get rolled there. You only think that if you're fucking stupid. That's the point. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. It's just, it is a perfect demonstration. It is a perfect demonstration of just like bad faith, being bad faith. But it doesn't matter. You got your hug. It doesn't matter. You have your hug box and you're doing it. You're doing it right now. No, I don't challenge chatters. No, I told you why I don't fucking pull chatters up and debate them. Okay. As many content creators do. The issue is because it's unproductive, not because I'm like terrified of the talking points or whatever the fuck, okay? And the only time in the past, or at least in the past like four years, the only time I've ever done debates publicly is if I think there is a legitimate value to them, okay? And sometimes there is. If I'm going to be in front of a massive audience, for example, and be able to, uh, be able to bring my talking points across, then I will do it. Okay, but again, you're smelling the blood. You're not genuinely interested in having a conversation. You're not interested in being 
once again, charitable. I was going to debate Jordan B. Peterson at Oxford. He canceled. I've said time and time again that I would love to debate Ben Shapiro. Jubilee was supposed to facilitate this. I've said I would be down to do that. That's it. They love the app and try to piss you off like a kid poking a caged bear and with a stick, but God forbid that bear turn around and acknowledge him. That's my point. My point is like it, it, a lot of these people want to uh, fling shit from the guise of anonymity. That's it. And some of them have YouTube channels. You know what I mean? Here's another one in this. Hassan is a meat eater. It makes him evil enough. He could donate a lot more money if he really cared. It's like Hassan and Ben Shapiro, two sides of the same coin. Both sides good at populism. Yeah, I know I know where these talking books are coming from, bro. Uh, this is the motherfucker I wanted to talk about. I'm gonna I'm I think I'm gonna bring this guy up because he's just eating good off this shit. Okay. Anyway, I said I'd love to hear your incredibly sound analysis on Israel. Please come on the stream and enlighten me on your perspective. Love to hear it. I, I can't. I can't do this anymore. I'm sick and tired of these motherfuckers, dude. Okay? Let's hear it. Let's hear it from this fucking guy. I'd love to debate you, but it wouldn't be good if he's agree with 99.9% .9 of your takes. I'm just saying, I want to I wanna hear what he has to say about uh, my takes on Israel. Because, you know, he's over here talking about like, oh, you have the fucking... These people have 20K followers, circles are getting their insulated communities. do not matter. I want to... I've been, I've been itching to use this guest star feature. I don't get why you even entertain some of this shit. Man, I haven't for a very long time. He's just a drama farmer. He has no real opinions. I want to know. I want to know where it's going on. That guy is literally 46 years old. No shot. Are you serious? I don't know anything about this motherfucker. <sighs> you can tell that dude is not a fan watching. He's like liking NASCAR. It's a matter of time before you and Chess start fighting. It's a part of the appeal of your channel, in my opinion. Yeah. Another Haas hater in his 40s. I mean, that's crazy. Hutch has been nonstop talking about your Israel positions with no pushback either. I, I don't care about Hutch. I'll be honest. Literally just a drama channel. All of dumb fuck views of 40 year old groiper virgins now, unironically. These people just want to say your entire community is racist off one chatter being mean at worst while their entire community calls you Hamas slash a terrorist. They're too stupid, unserious to engage with. I mean, I, let's, let's see. Let's, let's uh, see what he has to say. I want to hear it. I mean, there's no way, right? I'm sure. I'm sure he would love, love to have a talk with me in person. He's like making a lot of these videos, it, te it seems. Maybe we shouldn't take geopolitical opinions from a cop player. I mean, I don't know. You can say that about me too. I'm a fucking dumbass myself. It's only, it's only where those opinions are coming from. Who, what is informing their perspective? So you're going to feed these dudes for weeks. I was on the Hassan Ivy broadcast today and owned a Sansa Blue Shield clickbait. I would love to hear it. I want to, I want to see him own me because I'm sure it seems like he has a lot of takes on the matter. You know, he, he has a lot of opinions. I, I want to know. <sighs> would you have a discussion with Loner Box instead? Sure. I would, but I don't think this community might be shocked by this, but I don't think that uh, Loner Box and I would disagree on much. We would most likely disagree on, on how, to, uh, how to implement a non-apartheid structure in Israel, okay? But that conversation is theoretical anyway. But as far as, like, as, far as a conversation with Loner Box on, on, on Israel, he 100,000% agrees with the truth. That Israel is an apartheid state. Yeah. And to me, there is not much to debate on that front. Oop, you're on a stream. Who's stream? Oh, he replied. Did he? What did he say? Oh, the shy guy did? No, I'm talking about the, this, this Willie Mac show fellow. Why is, he, why is he not saying anything? Interesting. Oh. I wonder if he's like desperately looking for someone to feed him talking points at this very moment. Anyway, he's probably shy too, you know? But yeah, uh, here is uh, John Oliver from last season, talk, or two seasons ago, talking about Israel-Palestine. You can see what the only time anyone pays attention to what's happening there is when Hamas is firing rockets, which is understandably very frustrating because they've been living under a suffocating blockade for 14 years. And in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, Palestinians are essentially being governed by a form of apartheid, an assessment echoed by both international and Israeli human rights groups. Life in Gaza is hard even when they are not being bombed. And the U.S. government has implicitly co-signed on the brutally hard line. Bill Barr, thank you for the five. Taking. Give the subs. This guy basically gave Israel a green light to do anything it wanted for the last four years. And while Biden 
has had the opportunity to reset that relationship. His administration's response this week has been deeply underwhelming, giving a generic statement that Israel has a right to defend itself. It's the exact same line that Obama said and that Bush said before him. Israel has a right to defend itself is just something all presidents end up saying out loud at some point in office, like, my fellow Americans, or, what do you mean there are no aliens? This is some bullshit. And look, it's not that Israel doesn't have the right to defend itself. It's just that line cannot be used to excuse absolutely everything. Multiple children have been killed this week, eight in a single strike just yesterday, and the U.S. is heavily implicated here. I've been watching more loner box lately. It seems to me like his perspective is that Arafat was more the reason why Camp David failed. I could be wrong, but he seems to blame both Palestine and Israel equally for the peace talks breaking down. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I, I don't. I've never gotten that. Wait, loner box just DM me, I think. Wait, and then didn't DM me? What the fuck? People are telling me when I'm talking, I'm okay with impromptu. It might be better if you think there's a proper disagreement. Oh. Implementation. All this is shown is that legit most shadows of the community are just as desperate for drama as all the other weirdo communities. It has nothing to do with the actual carnage and tragedy happening in the Gaza Strip, and it's, a, it's about rich people's egos and nothing else. Can we just focus on the actual news? I mean, there's only so much shit slinging that motherfuckers can do the, uh, until I just, uh, you know, reply a little bit. So that's what I want to know from this, uh, this, this, this drama farming guy. Um, no response yet. So let's hear it. Let's hear, let's hear what's going on, you know? Why can't he, why can't his opinions hold up? He got banned? What do you mean he got banned? The essay's chatter got banned for his essay? What? I thought this was Variety News Day, not Stunlock on Israel Day. Slash S. I'm just saying, dude, I want to hear, I want to hear from this fucking guy. He's like tweeting. He's tweeting. I want to know. I want to know what he's got beyond uh, the Twitter fingers. Like, I, I want to know his perspective. I'm sure he is incredibly, incredibly well-informed on this matter, Right. I'm sure he's got a lot of good takes. I just want to hear what he has to say. You are being naive. He's a bad faith actor. He will not come on. Well, then he should stop being a pussy. I'm just saying. I want to, I want to hear. I want to hear what he's got. People can farm all the drama they want. Fucking be above it. I, I think this is uh, another one of these like uh, circumstances where, you know, it's just a lot of these guys love talking about how much uh, they just like shit slinging. Okay, they they act like they know what the fuck they're talking about, but if you look at the actual depth of the knowledge, it never goes beyond just like Hassan is a car, he's rich, he's hypocritical. Here are some fucking clips from like two years ago, three years ago, and he's always wrong. Y'all are being too nice to these basement dwelling trolls. I swear, expose these fuck for being a bunch of pussies with no morals to stand on. I want to know. I want to know what he has to say. Because like he had he had a lot to say on Twitter. He was like, "You're wrong on Ukraine. You're wrong on this. You're wrong on that." So I would love to hear what his uh, gripe is. You know what I mean? But it doesn't seem like he has that same energy when it comes down to like actually talking to someone. And you can do it online. You can have all the people fucking feeding you all of the talking points that you want. You know? <sighs> Where's the smoke? Sanabi is more consistent on Palestine than my Palestinian family is Lamal. Like, dude, th I'm sorry. This is sheer cowardice, okay? Here, let me show you something, okay? This right here, this right here, this right here is sheer cowardice, okay? Like, making these fucking videos and complaining and then going around and posting this shit. Yes, but your coverage on everything is based around this. And it has led to you sounding like a clown. Wrong about Ukraine. You're wrong about U.S. missile strike by Iran, which I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. U.S. missile strike by Iran? Wrong about the hospital strike. Acting like a ballistics expert. I'm not a ballistics expert at all. You are really, you, are we really just sitting here waiting for a dude on Twitter to reply? My God, dude. I mean, this dude has a channel and he's eating good. I've never watched a single fucking video of his because I make a policy not to because I'll fucking maul too much. And then I'll literally go and uh, end up having to like make a counter which only feeds into it. But what I will do, what I will do, however, is, is, you know, Talk to these guys. You know, it's quite embarrassing, actually. If it's so embarrassing, then come talk. <sighs> he derailed you, he won. I don't care. Farming will backfire if you actually talk to them. They know that, so they won't. I know. Here, I tweeted once again at him. Let's see. Why are you acting like such a debate pervert right now? Because I've fucking had it, dude. I've had it. I've had it. I've had it. It's like, we, the, the problem is this, okay? I have a conversation with someone I disagree with. 
I have a conversation uh, with someone I disagree with. People literally just like see that that person is getting on. They reply with, well, a smarter person would actually make short work of you. I have a conversation with another person that I disagree with. They say the exact same thing. Okay. It's just, it's ridiculous. No way he joins. All of his critiques come from other people's critiques. He doesn't have his own positions. Yeah. It's just like, it's a, it's a drama farming dipshit who knows about like YouTube culture and is simply talking about this shit that he doesn't personally understand and trying to farm clips off of it so he can make another video, which in my opinion is cowardly. Keemstar says you've lost. Keemstar, you want to talk about Israel, Palestine? We can do that right now, bitch. You ugly motherfucker. What the fuck are you doing in my chat? I thought we banned this piece of shit. How, what do you mean you lost, you old bitch? What are you going to do, bro? You're going to fucking make more drama alerts about this? Like it's fucking drama? Drama alert. 50-year-old man. Come on, dude. Unblock me on Twitter, Keem. Actually, don't do that. It's actually better that I don't have to see your dumbass takes. Pretty good. I'm very happy not seeing how stupid your takes are. It pisses me off. Oh, oh. Homie Willie won the debate. What debate? Fucking, he's hiding. He's in hiding. You can just say this over and over again, but it won't make it true. I said, pull up. He is not replying. I know he's, I know his ass sees it. I know he sees these fucking tweets. He's not replying. The fuck does that mean? Also, Ethan Klein had much better takes than you on the current conflict. I think Ethan does have a lot of great takes on this current conflict. You and I do agree on that. I'm glad. Do you want to pull up or do you want to fucking keep chirping in the chat? Do you want to fucking talk? Do you want to enlighten everybody? They're going to make you mad. Stop trolling. Stop responding to these trolls. I mean, I'm, I'm just asking. Why, why? Why won't he do it? They'll try to get you banned. I mean, they have time and time again. Remember Keemstar? Did you just say, I ratioed you. You're just mad because I ratioed you. You know who else ratios me? Hassan Piker. Why, why are you and Hassan Piker completely different fucking... My only take is calling for peace. It's not deeper than that. Wait, what? But that's my take too. What the fuck do you mean? So why the fuck are you trying to... Why, why the fuck are you chirping in here then, dumbass? The fuck? So, okay, so you're in agreement. We should get a ceasefire. Thank you. You're in agreement then that uh, the apartheid should discontinue. Got it. Thank you, Keemstar, for agreeing with me. of the political landscape. Woke King Ratio Keemstar. And Keemstar. I don't know. One, nobody fucking likes me. I've accepted it. But two... <laughs> You kind of cheat it in all of this, you and Hassan Piker, both of you, because you're political fucking hacks, which means you come out and you say, I fucking love Trump or I love AOC or whatever the fuck, and you automatically get support because people are on the same fucking team. You have bad takes like Hassan Piker coming out saying, uh, yeah, I love socialism, I love Bernie Sanders, but then he buys a $2 million fucking mansion. Or Damn, you sound jelly beans, dude. What's happening? He buys a $2 million bad shit. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus Christ. These are some shit, awesome. right? He doesn't give any of his fucking money to the people. First of all, it was $2.7 million. Get it right. People, Giant hypocrite. He doesn't get called out because he's on a team. So yeah, definitely don't get called out for a thing that every incredibly lucky person has been able to do, you know? Buying a house. So he gets team support. You, you're against cancel culture, but you're out here fucking calling out Disney Plus. You're calling out the fucking Star Wars series. You're literally trying to get this fucking actor fired, right? Huge hypocrite quartering. But you know what? You ratioed me. You want to know why? Because you're on a fucking team. Here's the worst part about this. He put me a fucking quarter chicken pounder uh, on the same team for some reason. Or like he mentioned both of us in the same uh, vein. And I hate that. I hate that. <clears throat> really messed up. I'm on a team. I'm on this guy's team. Support me, but guys. Why has he been subscribed to me for five months? That, that part is weird as fuck. Follow him since 2019. No one gives a fuck about your ratio. This is man shit between me and you. You're fucking wrong, and I know it, and you know it. You He's a fan, yeah. He's a fan, but he, he gets his facts wrong because, you know, his analysis is bad. He can't even do drama right. Whoa. All right. Keemstar doesn't want it. Willie Mac Show doesn't want it. It's just like 
a lot of these guys, they love talking a big game on the timeline. They love making YouTube videos and being like, oh, you suck. Oh, my God. But, again, the reality is many of them do not have any genuine political positions. And the ones that they do have are laughable. They are just doing it because it's a good way to farm drama. That's it. Team has a humiliation fetish is the only explanation. Willie is going to offer a time of the debate in the next few days, which means he's setting up something in the background. This is my prediction. Yeah, sure. Maybe he'll fucking hit the books in the meantime. You know what I mean? <sighs> Compare the drama farming of these guys to a genuine response to you, a la loner box. Anyway. All right. So let's get back to uh, our coverage. So thousands attended the March for Israel rally in Washington, D.C. NBC News covered it. A lot of news media, as a matter of fact, covered it. Um, no such coverage as far as I understand it. What? Why won't you take the L? Willie Max video was very good. You look horrible in it. That's so funny. Brother, if the video was so good, he should be able to, you know, come in here and describe his positions. I think there is nothing, there is nothing more cowardly and lame than being like, he made a YouTube video and he made you look bad. What do you mean? Okay. If that's the case, then I'm sure he should be able to defend what he's saying, right? And more importantly than that, he should be able to, you know, defend his broader political perspectives on the matter. Because anyone can make anyone look bad with editing, unless you're an absolute baboon, which you are, okay? He's not online now. Bitch, I know he was online. He literally fucking replied to someone right as I typed that shit out. Get out of here. He replied to someone at the same time that I was fucking replying to him. And then he just suspiciously went offline. Also, who's this wee motherfucker? You speaking French? I will deal with him directly. I also sent him a DM. Why is he not responding? I know why he's not responding. Okay? I know what's going on. It's because he has nothing to respond with. He's like looking desperately, most likely, to gain as many talking points as he possibly can to come on and will most likely be like, oh, why don't you fight like some fucking random Nazi? Or why don't you debate some dude that uh, will end up fucking covering this uh, debate regardless and uh, desperately get his community to fucking try to clip chimp you to make you look bad as he's been doing for fucking years. That's all it's going to end up being. I know that already. Okay. Here's how this is going to go. If Willie Mac show wants to fucking smoke, he will come on and he will address me directly. Okay. He will use as many uh, spoon fed talking points as he possibly can. And I will retaliate against those talking points that he is uh, just vomiting all over the fucking broadcast because he has no real opinions of his own. He doesn't. I know he doesn't. The reality of the situation is, as 4,500 children have been murdered in Gaza over the past month, okay, the maximum amount, the, the, the most amount of children that have been murdered in fucking war, okay? Hey, what up, Felix? I'm, I'm duking it out with Keemstar in my chat right now. I'll, all right. Okay. Why do you, uh, why don't you believe that he has any uh, Willie Max positions when you haven't heard it yet? Because I know, man, you, him, most of these guys, you don't really think about this kind of stuff at all. You just care about fucking drama farming, bad faith clip chimping, and you're not even good at that in my opinion. That's it. If you did, you wouldn't constantly, if you were, legitimately interested in like at least doing even-handed coverage on people that you dislike you would talk about you would personally at the very least talk about like all of the different donations that this community has been able to fucking accrue all the donations that i've made but you don't care about it it's like one hand it's one-sided it's just like shit smearing and you're not even very good at that you know what i mean i've heard all i've i have not watched a single fucking uh, a, a single video from this dude and I already know exactly what he said because I've heard it a thousand times over that's it who cares about that good you did charity but that does not absolve the criticisms yeah the problem is I'm trying to talk to someone who is critical and yet for some reason he doesn't want to fucking get the smoke now here's the thing I don't think it absolves me of the criticism either the problem is that that criticism is not in good faith nor is that criticism constructive. That criticism is just shit smearing. And it's being, uh, the shit smearing is being done by people who are not even genuinely interested in the, in the politics of the situation or have any unique or creative opinions at all. 
that shit smearing is being done by bad faith chirpers. Okay. How do you know, how do you know it's bad faith then? Because it, let me tell you, it'll be react content. He bought a house. He wears an expensive shirt. None of which is like uh, in any way, shape or form related to anything uh, meaningful. Okay. It's just the way to farm clout. Yeah, she is. Uh, she's massive. She has grown a lot. It's like when you leave base in Metal Gear Solid Five, and you come back, and Diamond Dog like has an eye patch and can go on missions. Yeah. Um. All right. We are. Uh, <laughs> Biden says Gaza's largest hospital must be protected. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, Felix Biederman is in the building. Hello? Uh, you can come a little bit closer, actually, and then let's uh, you know, get get right up in there. Get right up in that microphone. All right. Can, uh, is the audio low? Are the audio levels good? I don't know why every time you come here, you have a history of calling for violence, not peace. I don't speak for Willy, Willy but I want peace, not war. You have a history for calling violence. He's going to fucking, let me guess, you're going to say 9-11. You're going to fucking point to the clip chimp shit like where I was having a conversation with a landlord from like 2018 or some shit. I know. Well, um... What's up? Felix, every time you're here, Keemstar is in here. Do you think... Do you, what do you think about that? Well, as someone who's like, um, you know, I've studied this conflict, obviously. I've uh, looked at the solutions people have tried. Oslo, of course. And I think after the failure of Oslo, people should have looked into the Imagine Accords. Yeah. That's the most... Gal Gadot, innovative. Imagine All the People? No, the um, Israel and Palestine should study Imagine. Imagine? You haven't seen that one? Which one is it? Isn't it like uh, imagine all the people from like? Uh, th are you talking about this? Um, no, 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 no. Uh, Keemstar, uh, Israel, Israel, Palestine. Imagine. Wait, what the fuck? You do know more about Keemstar's <laughs> position on this than I do. What the fuck? <laughs> no, this is like no. This is like. I mean, honestly, this is what people were saying during Oslo. It should be in images. Honestly. What is it? I funny Brazil. There, th th yeah, there we go. Oh my god! <laughs> so like he he has been like calling for peace. That is he true. Is. Yeah, that he is, is true. Israel and Palestine need to study John Lennon. Imagine. Well, like okay, okay. Like in Israeli politics, you know how like most new parties, you know, you got Likud, the labor Zionism is dead. There's no left in Israel. Yeah. But you have a few parties, like the few remaining like Ashkenazi dominated parties, they're all called something like you know, the direct translation of their name from Hebrew is something like good Hello People. Good morning. Hello people. Yeah, happy handshake. <laughs> and and it's like all seventy three year olds who committed awful crimes but are now like uh I do workshops for the youth in Lod. That's what they think. And <laughs> you know, like Maybe things would be better if there was more of this. Who's to say? I think, dude, he's right. Uh, Israel versus Palestine conflict would be stopped if the people in the countries turned to science instead of religion. Dude, he's awesome. This is, like, it's a great point. Felix is right. Keem W, let's be real. Keem Star's been yep. subscribed to me for six months. Damn. Which is crazy. Damn. I mean, look, I think I could be more successful than Bill Clinton here. I could, I in, could do in a getting, real in Oslo getting your, accord. In getting your shit sucked in the White House? <laughs> no, I, no, I'm done with that part of my life. With all <laughs> sexual contact. No more of that for me, thanks. I feel P that. Respect. I think I could create the uh, Keemstar Hassan Accords. Dude, no way. We, this, that war will wage forever, dude. <laughs> that war will wage on forever. Well, actually, no. He like, won't come on. I'm trying to... Keem... You have a fan here. Just come on the show, man. Talk to us directly. Another hater turned into a waiter at your table of success. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a very impartial person. I, um, you know, when Saudi Arabia and Iran, like when their tensions cooled because uh, Xi Jinping set it up, that's what I'm like. Yeah. You can, I think you can do it. Who is this shy guy? Shy guy is going insane on Twitter. With, uh, who is shy guy? What? Huh? I don't know what this is. What, what am I looking at? I don't know. No, yeah, whatever. Why are you posting this fucking weird <laughs> loser? It's like, dude, we're doing this now? Like, we've moved on from, like, Twitter reply guys to, to fucking uh, Twitter, re <coughs> Twitter reply guys to, like, what? Random fucking accounts complaining that they got banned in the chat or some shit? Um, all right, let's talk about Israel come retrieval. 
All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Israel, we've uh, we've long speculated that Israel has an official unit dedicated to sperm jacking and cum harvesting, and they. I, you know what's insane about this? I feel like I keep saying it because it's driving me crazy. To, like, animate and produce and voice and release something like the, this, like, I a very close family member of mine, he works in PR. Not for Israel, but, like, you know, like, for, for companies and shit, right? To make something like this, like, 20 people have to all hear this idea and go, no, nah, uh-huh, yeah, good idea. At least 20 people were like, we should make a twee webcomic animation about sperm jacking. That's going to win over the people who aren't sure. <clears throat> and they fucking did it. One of the things I hate the most about uh, having to cover this uh, type of stuff over and over again is the fact that because Israel is an apartheid state and because it's like a deeply racist state as well because you can't have like an ethno state without constantly reinforcing this like incredibly racist propaganda when you talk about the things that israel is doing some of it is so unimaginably insane that people look at you like you are you must be making anti-semitic remarks yeah yeah no it, it, like so this must be anti-semitic right like because if you were to say that if you were to talk about this this thing that they released uh i don't know a year ago I would be like, dude, what the fuck? That seems like some crazy fucking, you know, is this like some anti-Semitic conspiracy yeah. theory? But because it's so fucking racist and because it's an ethno, it's an ethno state, like, yeah, no, this is like weird ass policies. Yeah, they're, they're like, when you're obsessed with birth rates, when you're, your national project has to be obsessed with like birth rates of a certain ethnicity because it is an ethno-nationalist project, this is what you end up doing. I don't know. I feel like a lot I haven't of seen it. I, I, I haven't seen this yet, by the way. Like a chatter, Ooh. a chatter just sent it to me. This will be my first reaction. A chatter sent this to me by saying, "Dude, you have to watch the Israel come video, and I, the Israel come extraction video." I really don't know what point they were trying to make with this. Uh, I am excited for you to see it for the first time. I saw it like. I, I woke up, like, sort of early-ish today, and I watched this right before I went to the gym. And I don't know if it helped or hurt. IDF also went over the unit, by the way. The IDF is a special st sperm retrieval... What? The IDF also is a special sperm retrieval unit to collect the seed of fallen IDF soldiers. The health ministry has set up a special unit that works 24-7 with the IDF as the four hospitals housing sperm banks. Ichilov, Sheba, Shamir, and Balinson. Is this something that, like, the American government does? as well like i don't know i mean it's weird no matter who does it i think i i actually don't understand it at all but like what is is that like a thing i haven't heard of americans doing it um it's uh, man imagine if you you're like an 18 year old in israel and that's the unit you get conscripted into your first day in the army is learning how to get a dead guy's calm out that's it's just so weird dude it is so wild but anyway let's watch this she thinks it's just another rocket attack but a gripping fear prickles through shiley's entire body and it's outside their bedroom window her husband yeah this is pretty good i mean the animation's cool like the, i like the style this is like the animation style is like you know when google releases something that's like yeah uh, google celebrates Brat, Brat, fucking pride brad Tremel calls this uh what is it uh brad Tremel calls this fuck what is it uh uh, uh corporate kansas or corporate memphis yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like it, it's basically like corporate memphis uh is like the the font obviously but this is like a very specific genre of art that looks like the corporate memphis uh font it's yeah. this art style i've seen every newer ad that i ever saw on the subway in new york is drawn in this style where it's like you know, those those Grubhub ads that are like, uh, you know, we're pro-choice with dinner and women's reproductive rights. It's oh. the same style of, of uh, illustration. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I interrupt this uh, come retrieval uh, circumstance to just this guy who's like who constantly is like whining about me and is making uh, videos about me. I was like, love to hear your incredibly sound analysis on Israel. Please come on the stream and enlighten me with your perspective. 
And he replied, I made a video on you. Why would I debate Israel, Palestine, Lamau? Just do some of that classic Hassanabi on the ground journalism and watch my videos. Is the video about your stance on Israel or is it just one of those videos where it's like, it's, it's like, here's why he's bad. No, it, it's angled in a way where he like tried to utilize the algo. He had to max out the algo by being like, Hassan is like the worst guy because of like his stances on Israel. Like this is what he's covered the Israel Palestine situation. Like, but then also simultaneously, it's just mostly that I assume I just, it's like, okay, this guy's name, if his name really is Willie Mack, no Jewish guy has ever been named that. He's not. But, yeah, buddy, you should not be that into Israel. M. Hud said, I don't believe you. No, I don't, he's not, I don't, he has no stances, I don't think. That's yeah. why I was like, come on, come, come talk to me about it. Um, I love that he said, I made a video on you, not about the situation itself. Yeah, he's just shy too. <laughs> M. Hud says, he's got that stylized font display name that fat moms with blue check marks use. He had to go to the fortnitefonts.com to get that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not heard of this guy. I did see, I did see like one, one tweet in this thread earlier this, or like, I don't know, like, uh, I, I guess him plugging the video Mm hmm. But yeah, no, it just there's a lot of content like that on YouTube. Yeah, it's just, um, you know, uh, it's almost almost like AI generated, like procedurally generated uh, yeah. Wikipedia entries no. on why someone's bad. Yeah, it's it's literally like there is a entire library of like clip chimp shit that people love to deploy against me when I'm like talking about something completely different. Right. Um, where they'll be like, and they, and some guy did it earlier in the chat where they were like, uh, you're just a rich guy, a millionaire grifting off of left wing, uh, content because you know, it's popular. And I'm like, do you live on this planet? Like who's the, you're talking to people in the United States of America that have actually made money fucking promoting like leftist content and making leftist content. You're they're in the same frame right now. <laughs> like yeah. that's it. To, to, there's a sea of like the least talented motherfuckers on the planet that get checks cut out to them as long as they say things like, uh, you know, that uh, it's actually really damaging to the third world if you don't uh, continue fucking drilling for oil or some shit. And they get paid like 120 grand a fucking month. And you're over here talking like there's a guy, Steven Crowder. Not entertaining, not unique in any way, shape, or form. Just simply tries to repeat, like, American Enterprise Institute talking points and then, like, adds his own flair of racism to it. He fucking, he literally refused a $50 million deal. And you're over here being like, dude, I can't believe fucking leftism. That's how you make the money. Do you people realize, I personally, I only make as much as a pretty good lawyer. Someone who may be the best in, like, his zip code, but definitely not a city. That's all I make. Do you, do you, every time I look at Manhattan real estate, I fantasize about what it would be like if I, uh, you know, I, I, I do the revolver ocelot and defect to Turning Points USA and make the same type of content for them. No, like, I, I, I think grifter is, like, one of those... It's like incel now. It's one of those words that uh, has completely lost meaning. It just means, like, a bad type of person online now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, like, I knew that he was going to back down. It's just so fucking sad that he's just like, no, dog, sorry. I just want to fucking keep, like, making bad faith, shit-smearing videos on you. You know what I mean? That's so pathetic. Pathetic, dude. Those types of videos are fucking up my algorithm. Dude, it sucks because, like, this motherfucker doesn't have a single unique thought in his fucking brain. He's, like, literally just copying shit-slinging from other people, too. That's the other thing. I'm like, come on. Come on. Let's talk about it. You know? Let, let's have a conversation about all the, all the stuff that you have a, an issue with. His hour-long expose on you is sponsored by Ground News, yet consistently clip chimps you and is the most uncharitable. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's like, um, I don't know. You know when you, like, you type someone's, like, name and then Google auto-completes it to net worth, and then you get one of those procedurally generated, like, news articles that are, like, it's always from some weird Indian website? Yeah, no, exactly. It, it's like, it, it, yeah, it's like the YouTube equivalent of that. 
I wonder if Candace Owens is going to get fired. Dude, I know. Uh, all right, let's get back to the cum extraction. Right, but I forgot. I totally forgot about Sorry, it. Sorry, yeah, I'm just no, I'm just we, tweeting about this motherfucker I again. Understand. I just I can't stand dudes like this that just like don't even have their like own genuine opinions on this matter. They just literally are rehashing, like you said, like one of those like Indian AI articles. You know what I mean? One of my friends like looked himself up on one of those, and uh, it described him as a famed son, <laughs> which is. <laughs> Like one of the best phrases I've ever heard. Sometimes something beautiful comes out of artificial intelligence. I think all those articles are great. All That's right. where I get all my news. Let's do it. Um, also, let me run the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour as well. Okay. Uh, here it is. And we're, we're moving on to the cum extraction unit that the IDF has apparently. Have fights the danger as Shiley runs, leaving everything behind to protect their baby, Shia. She hides from the terrorist hunting her for 27 hours, terrified, praying like that the love ass. of her life will survive. She clings to hope that she won't need to raise their newborn alone. Four days later, her heart shatters. She hugs Shia tightly and knows she must fulfill Yahav's dream to create more life. So, Like, they didn't have to angle it that way, you know what I mean? Like, they, I, I feel like if your goal is to, like, uh, invoke sympathy... I feel like you didn't have to make it seem like there's this like weird religious mission to like repopulate uh, Israel with more children, like more Jewish sons and daughters. You know what I mean? Yeah, this one's interesting because it's like one of the few pieces of Israeli propaganda that seems like more aimed towards Israelis. But in English. Weirdly in English, but like, yeah, specifically towards something like that they care about. Yeah, which is like... You you see you're seeing this now. I think like as much as I uh, regularly shit on you know Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the like, and, all, uh, and how these like these these operations, I think in my opinion, play a, a significant role in like reinforcing America's uh, global power and and reinforcing their like interests, the interests of the State Department. Um, them turning around and correctly calling Israel an apartheid state, you know, maybe. A little too late, but still, them turning around and calling Israel an apartheid state was important because, like, when even those guys are saying it, it just, I think, becomes unavoidable. It becomes something that is impossible for the squish libs to to legitimately look at and try not to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is unfortunate that, like... At the same time as people are finally coming around to, like, fully admitting that this is an apartheid state, it seems like Israel is kind of going even further than that. Like, you know, certainly it's an apartheid state and has been for a while, but it seems like now they're more going towards the territory of just trying to get rid of as many Palestinians as possible. Yeah. Like, they're... They're going far past just, you know, restricting their civil rights. Um, it, I feel like the settlement stuff is, I've been thinking about that more than anything else as far as like Israel's posture towards the West, how they look towards the West. And I feel like that's their biggest problem because it, all of that shit, like you can't have those. You can't have like, you know, the Ministry of Defense handing out rifles, and you can't have your like the one of their main political debates in, in their country is can we expand to can we expand to the full territory of what we consider Israel without becoming too Arab? You can't do that, and then like have people treat you like a normal country, or because even these are like that's incredibly like yeah, it's like not we're doing normal. we're doing nineteenth century like yeah like this shit already happened right you can't try to do it in 2023 within broad daylight and and with like social media like you can try and massage the narrative as best as you can and i say this all the time like the the idea that you know you have an idf spokesperson who literally has a permanent job at cnn and msnbc to like immediately contextualize the violent operations that israel is engaging in, in its ethnic cleansing campaign in gaza um like that only goes so far when you have even Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, all these like liberal NGOs calling it out. And also on top of that, Israel only increasing the brutality 
as the the cost of maintaining an apartheid state becomes ever clearer to them, right? Yeah, and they like they they start uh, they start squeezing the vice grip tighter and tighter on the necks of the Palestinians. All of a sudden, people are going to see it. Like, there's nothing you can do. The and and if you're so used to in your sheer arrogance. Uh, never getting any sort of contest from Western media as a whole, you haven't really developed your Hasbara since the early 2000s to, to update it. So you come across like an incredibly racist person when you turn around and like people are seeing thousands of children, like lifeless bodies getting pulled out of the, uh, out of the rubble, dead due to American munitions, destroying the entire fucking city block. Okay. And people see those videos. And then you turn around and go, well, those are terrorist children. Or you turn around and you go like, uh, uh, fucking, you turn around and you go, uh, well, it's actually Pollywood. Like, you can't do that. People people look at that and go, what the fuck are you saying? That's the most racist thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. Yeah, they, all their entire playbook for like what they're doing now in Gaza, it hasn't changed since like 2008, 2009. Since like, you know, cast lead. Uh, yeah. And that works if um, everyone is either watching cable news or hearing about this secondhand from people who are watching cable news or reading newspapers. It, it works when information doesn't come in this massive deluge. Uh, it starts to fall apart when only old people are getting their news that way. Um, and then with, with settlements, they've only had two strategies that they've ever had with that, right? One is to sort of do this, like, diversity brochure strategy. Like, the same thing that uh, colleges do. Oh, dude, I've seen... they try I've to se put, like, minority... Like, yeah, they'll, they'll minority put, like... Student. They'll, they'll find, like a, like, an Ethiopian Jewish person to be yeah. like, uh, how do you... There was one, like, recently, there was, like, a, like a black Jewish today, woman. Yeah. yeah, with Yeah, there was a black Jewish woman. Yeah. Yeah, and then, but then the other thing is just to be like, oh, well, like, um, you know, you guys did fucking Manifest Destiny, which is like, I've always thought- This motherfucker is still chirping, sorry. Oh, my God. I just turned on my, I just turned on Twitter, and the first thing I see is, I made two videos documenting Assange's poor reporting, content that lies. What's his Abby? Is it Dr. Strangelove? I don't know. I think it's just him. Uh oh. Hassan, stop. Don't engage. Within minutes of the other post? Yeah, what happened? What happened? I don't, I fucking, you know what? Here, there you go. Fucking got him. There you go, dude. Are you happy? I thought he was offline, Keemstar. What happened? What happened, Keemstar? I thought your boy was offline. You were saying we should set this up. Terminally online, YouTuber in the shadows can't comprehend live information sourcing. No, I, like half of this shit is literally people being like, Hassan responds to one fucking random chatter's take. And then like, I read it out loud. And then they cut the rest of the clip where I'm literally going and being like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's wrong. That's like 90% of these fucking hater ass videos. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Um, where were we? Uh, where? Oh, right. Like, um, the second thing that they do for settlements is just to be like, you know, oh, well, you guys did this, which is like, oh, I was going to find, that's why I went on Twitter. It's such a fucking lady. dumb argument because like we, we talked about it yesterday on the show, but like. If what imagine like Portugal brought back slavery, right? And it's like, like, like no one would be going, well, fucking America did it. Like, por let, let's just let Portugal keep doing this like forever. I mean, everyone else did it. Yeah. No, it's, it's ridiculous because like it all stems from might is right, which is like inherently, this is like an inherently fascist idea, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so you can't have it both ways. Like you can't on the one hand, try to be like, we are the beacon of democracy in the Middle East while also simultaneously like keep ruthlessly and mercilessly uh, engaging in pogroms of the West Bank and slaughtering children in Gaza. Okay. Two strips of land that are occupied to varying degrees under Israeli control, right? For fucking what? 56 years at this point. You can't keep doing that and maintain an apartheid state while simultaneously trying to do the, oh, well, we're a, a small bean ethno state and we just always keep getting attacked. And that's why we have to behave this way. It's our national security concerns. 
Everything turns into national security concerns. Israel's democratic uh, demographic worries are a consequence of our national security concerns. You can't do that. Yeah, and like I feel like with uh, protective edge and cast lead, um, you saw a lot of like. I'm trying to find that lady now. The the does anyone know the? Did you guys see the the lady the the uh, black IDF uh, soldier lady who was like? I saw her too. Yeah, doing bodies in spaces about fucking ethnic cleansing. I feel like she was in a coma since like 2014 and just woke up. Yeah, and it's like we're we're, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah, this was so fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. They can't even keep up the facade. Like, it took them a fucking month to, you know, make, you know, just one thing. One thing with Israeli soldiers where they didn't look like complete cowards and fucking jackboots. Yeah. And even in the replies to that tweet, they were taunt- they were taunting the Palestinians. They were yeah. moving out of Gaza. Like, yeah. With, like, cast lead and protective edge, they were able to, like, you know, even Israeli liberals like Amos Oz were able to, like, sell this idea that this was, like, a normal security procedure. We have to keep doing this or else, like, rockets are going to keep coming from Gaza. And, I mean, obviously there are a lot of media consumption reasons for why that isn't working this time, but it's also, like, this operation specifically, I think it's very clear to everyone that they're really going for a second knob cut. Like, it's anyone with eyes can see that. They want to get as many of them out of there as humanly possible. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, the Nakba never ended is, is true. It's a, it's a, it's a thing that Palestinians say all the time. And it, it they say it because it's true. It never really ended. It slowed down for a while, right? But this is absolutely the same, the, the, the exact same principles of like ethnic displacement and also ethnic cleansing uh, that will lead to ethnic displacement. Um, here, watch the cum extraction video while I take Kai out to pee and pee myself. So Charlie okay. puts out a call for the unthinkable to retrieve his seed and be able to continue growing their family. Oh my She's God. in her own war against time and the crowd leaps into action to complete her desperate mission. But it's Who too was late. bookmarking that tweet? Shiley did everything she could to save her family. We still have time to save ours. Bring our children back now. Okay, that's a horrible way to end it. Like, th- th- this is a fucking weird video already. But you can't be like, you know, Sh- Shy Lee from Race Remrod w- wasn't lucky enough to get her husband's common time. But we could still rescue these kids for what? What? You just made a video about cum extraction. Like, what are you saying here? What the fuck are you saying here? Uh, I, I cannot state enough how many times that something like this, at least 20 people have to sign off on like the script and animation and voice work. 20 people, 20, like, pretty highly paid people were like, this is great. Let fucking full steam ahead on the cum video. I don't, uh, his bar and machine broken. Come back later, I guess. That, that's all I get from this. I just, like, why would they highlight an unsuccessful cum mission? That's the other thing. Like, wouldn't it look better if they were like, look, we got this other guy's cum. But if you have multiple cum units in the army, like the army is already having a tough time. The Merkavas are just getting fucking junked. Uh, Guys in track pants are just running down, like not scared little 18 year old conscripts. They're running down like officers and fucking drilling them. You'd at least want to be like, well, the cum unit's still doing well. Like, you wouldn't want to highlight their failures at this point, but... Let me get up this behind you. Oh, yeah. Behind you. No problem. I, 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 yeah, I just, um, I don't, I don't know what led to this. I don't, like, it's not even like an encouraging, someone rushed into that office one day. And was like, guys, I have a story about an unsuccessful cum mission. I feel like that would get you fired at most jobs. Even if you worked for Israel. 
I don't. I. I uh, where do you even go from here? I think that it is a consequence of just like not understanding. Like I said, that the rest of the world will look at this and go, "This is so insane." It's almost. It's not dissimilar to uh, the the uh, right wing commentary around like child genital mutilation and yeah, shit, right? Yeah, Where yeah. it's like they're so hopped up on their own personal sauce, like they've lost their fucking minds and don't recognize that it's actually harming the momentum that they could have at a time like this because they personally have, have decided, no, 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 this is actually very popular. They've mistaken uh, the Republican Party's success in undermining the legislative body and packing the courts and like, actually enforcing their ideals, no matter how unpopular uh, those ideals are, with genuine popular success. And for that reason, they still keep going after it. They're like, no, 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 you don't understand. This is actually sick. Like, people will vote for us if we keep doing this shit. Or even if people don't vote for us, it doesn't fucking matter. And the same goes for the, the uh, Hosmer strategy of today. I think that uh, early on, the Israeli government understood uh, that the, the uh, opinion of the Western world was genuinely important for the maintenance of this apartheid, right? For the maintenance of the occupation, because they can't really do that without the Western world going, no, 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 go ahead. Keep doing what you're doing. It's great. Your enemies are our enemies. Uh, it's perfectly valid. Here, we'll give you all the weapons to do it. Here, we'll give you $4 billion a year. Now, they've gotten so comfortable in that status that they're just basically, uh, they're just basically repeating the same kinds of talking points over and over again. And that's why I think a lot of people look at this and go, what the fuck are you doing? Like the, Even the other side of the idea of propaganda, the other side of the idea of propaganda is also like the consistency in which they lie. Yeah. The, the lying, at least like, I think the lying does have a cynical function, right? Like it, it, it's funny to make fun of. Right. And I don't think like, Look, like, we d have spent a lot of time, like, um, making fun of, like, the calendar, right? Where they go into the basement of, uh, of this hospital that they fucking obliterated. And they point to, like, just a, ca a regular calendar that happens to be in Arabic and go, look, there's proof that they had fucking hostages. Or the, uh, the, the glossary post from yesterday, uh, if anyone saw that. Like... I think that there's, like, nothing wrong with making fun of that, and it's not exactly, like, I don't know. If, if we don't focus on that, I don't think that necessarily changes everything, but they do kind of, they would rather have you arguing about something else, no matter how ridiculous it is, uh, than, you know, their actual mission of ethnic cleansing. I think it's... Sort of like, you know, another strategy by information deluge. Yeah, I think it plays a very cynical purpose. I mean, you're right about that. But even then, um, I think there's a couple different uh, forces at play here. One of the one of the things is that a lot of uh, a lot of the younger generation don't watch television at all. Right. So most of their information comes from uh, online. Now. There's, that's one aspect of this. And then also the other side is that like there's also a sh tremendous amount of mistrust in media, in my opinion. Like I feel like there's a lot of people who, for good reasons or for bad reasons, don't really uh, trust mainstream media, especially for uh, people online, right? Um, especially for people who get most of their information online. Now, I look at mainstream media. I still value it. Obviously, I'm not like on the ground doing reporting. And uh, therefore, I think that it still serves an important purpose as long as you understand, as long as you can look at it critically and understand where the biases are, right? Right. Um, I, I still trust the New York Times to a certain degree. There's still great journalists at the New York Times, you know what I mean? There's still great journalists at, at all of these other outlets as well, regardless of whatever their biases may be. Um, but I think those concepts merging with one another has created this structure where like the old forms of propaganda in this regard, especially when paired up with like the arrogance of continuing to up the violence has created this turning point. Uh, one that at least you and I definitely recognize after 
at least publicly uh, for the past 10 years for me, uh, defending uh, Palestinian emancipation, this is the first time I've ever seen this level of momentum. Like, I, I've never seen hundreds of thousands of, of people on the streets protesting the occupation, demanding a ceasefire, uh, trying to stop the bloodshed. This is genuinely a turning point. And I think uh, people, are, people are recognizing that, and that's why the, the enforcement mechanisms are so rigid. Like, that's why they're just going, oh, if you're on a college campus, like, basically taking the Canary mission, which used to be, like, this uh, edge case that that was, like, this psychotic Hasbro operation that would dox, like, random fucking nurses and teachers and college students or even fucking high school students, as a matter of fact, and have streamlined it and turned it into, like, the official modus operandi of, like, many organizations it's completely psychotic, and I think that that will inevitably uh, cause even more backlash. Yeah, with everything else, with their uh, PR apparatus, like, it's... All they can do right now, really, is throw a bunch of shit at the wall. And maybe, like, they can trick you into arguing about whatever ridiculous thing they said versus whatever awful thing they did. And that's only so useful because people still realize the horrible thing that you did. Yeah. Like they, they're, they're still seeing that. And now they also think of you as just, you know, by nature dishonest. But the one thing they still do have, and um, I, I think they're, you know, this is just going to get worse the more unpopular Israel becomes, is... Uh, consequences social consequences in some cases in britain it's very codified in that way legal consequences yeah. in yeah. germany in the eu at large and employment consequences in america yeah um that is something that they are still quite capable of doing um yeah mccarthyite censorship like 100 yeah. percent, the and, new wave yeah and like it's that shit has always been there but it it, it really only applied, like, Canary Mission, pretty much, it only existed to, like, harass and, like, dox and, like, g get Palestinian Americans fired, right? Like, yeah. it's still fucking awful. It should be illegal. They should be sued out of fucking existence. It's a horrible project. Uh, but now that's sort of, like, it's expanded to, like, everyone now. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of which... I got mentioned in the report from Bundesverband, R-I-A-S, about anti-Semitic reactions in Germany on the Hamas massacre in Israel. Apparently, here's the translation, a Twitch live streamer known as Hassan Abi, who has 2.6 million followers, streamed in front of 40,000 viewers, the fourth largest group of whom were from Germany, as he trivialized Hamas crimes and justified violence against civilians as violence against Zionists and settlers. I never did that, by the way. Uh, that never happened. Even if the cases mentioned are not anti-Semitic incidents, according to the R. IAS categories, they point to the broad approval of Hamas's massacres and glorification of terror and suggest an anti-Semitic worldview. This is the Federal Association of Anti-Semitism Research and Information Centers in Germany. So uh, a lot of this, actually, a, a lot of what this organization uh, does or did in this argument that they were uh, putting together, uh, it, it turns out in the report, they said there are, you know, real instances of anti-Semitic uh, uh, incidents, like modifying uh, a Nazi parole to oppose Israel uh, from the Jews are our misfortune to Israel is our misfortune, or shouting fuck the Jews at a vigil for the victims of October 7th, to calling Israel an apartheid state. Yeah, yeah. This, like, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, it seems like every every major nation has, like, a group like this where it functions kind of like the ADL. Where yeah, they'll pick out like actual instances of anti-Semitism and then be like, and that's just as bad as like, you know, saying we shouldn't give unlimited military aid to Israel. There was that whole controversy with like the Labor Party when Jeremy Corbyn was leader uh, over whether they should adopt like some fucking international body that I had never heard of before. Their definition of anti-Semitism, which, of course, like included anti-Zionism, yeah. anti-Semitism. But, it, you know, it's the same function. It's to attach some sort of, like, institutional legitimacy to something that, like, if you know anything at all, you know is not true. Oh, this Willie Mac guy wants to talk, it seems. Your boyfriend responded? What is this? Willie No Show. All right, give me the link. Ooh. 
Ooh. Should we talk to this guy? You want to you want to play you want to be a part of this? All right. If All you right. don't want to, if you don't want to, we can uh we don't have to. Well, no. I have I a mean, guest no, here. No, I am um uh, you know I, you know I, internet I'm an J. Uh, an int J. Yeah. Listen, an, the thing an, is, an int J. <laughs> the thing is, you are. I don't. I don't know what I am. I'm glad he found some talking points. He'll claim it's two on one. No, uh, Felix is an impartial observer. Yeah, no, I'm a moderator. I'm also, like, neither okay. neither Willie Mac nor myself are Jewish. That's a good point. See, that's a very good point. No. I dropped the cat. Yeah. 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 You know who is though? This guy. Do you know how I I um. I've, I've barely been checking my message requests because they're, like, a cesspool. Every, like, Zionist and, like, a lot of Israelis, do, they do not think I'm Jewish. It, it's not even, like, you know, I It's because you're Armenian. Right. No, it literally <laughs> is. Literally. Literally. They, like, they... Classic, they classic... Think I'm, like, Muslim. Classic l- Muslim Armenian last name, Biederman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have my last name up there on Twitter, but it's on Instagram. But they're still like, you fucking terrorist. And it's like, I think I'm like a really Jewish looking person. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, you know. No, dude. My favorite, my favorite is like what I like to call the Meghan McCain moment where like you're as a, as a Christian uh, Zionist, you like. Uh, decide who's Jewish and who's not Jewish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you're like, I've defended Israel a lot, which means you're not Jewish any longer. I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, like that's kind of what Amy Schumer is doing. And I really, I have a lot of things to say about that. Let's not, that well, dude, 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 there's a lot of people in here that are literally waiting for the opportunity for you to say some shit so they can fucking get me banned, okay? So don't. All I'm going to say. Don't say anything about Amy Schumer, please. Okay. Please don't. I, it wasn't going to be that bad. Uh, I, it's still, no, it's, I know, I know what you're going to say. No, no, okay. no. Let's not even talk about Amy Schumer. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say the stuff that some of my friends have said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't okay. know. Um, anyway, so as we were saying, as, uh, we were talking about, so the IDF has a special unit, a sperm retrieval unit. The health ministry has set up a special unit that works 24 seven with the IDF and the four hospitals housing sperm banks. Uh, and, uh, to notify the families of the option of PSR and set it up as quickly as possible following the death of their son or husband, sperm must be retrieved in 24 hours after the death to increase his chances of viability. <coughs> do you think the sperm retrieval unit like post videos like the same way the Kassam brigades are where they put like a, they put a, a, a red, a red triangle over the guy's balls <laughs> they, 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 re- they rewind it like putting the syringe in <laughs> I just I, I don't even want to know I, I don't even want to know how the fuck this is like a real thing we look for and perform sperm that are moving but even sperm that is not motile motile mobile they mean I don't know mobile does not mean that it is not alive we know how to make it move after it's unfrozen, said Dr. Yuval Orr, head of the IVF unit at Kavlin Medical Center. So, um, anyway, that's, uh, yeah, I'm silencing Jewish voices, Felix's, for uh, the, the things that he was going to say about uh, Amy Schumer. All right, so that's one aspect of the, of the propaganda. This aspect of the propaganda is my favorite, doing uh, bodies in space. This is such a throwback. Yeah. People posting on Israel and Palestine, given their uninformed opinion about the subject, and I realized something. I would like the confidence. Like legit, I would love the confidence of people who have the most basic, narrow understanding of this conflict, who go ahead and post information with such a determination. People who have zero understanding of the Middle East and the ripple effect that happens every single time you take any action in this region. Uh- like you watch two TikTok videos and one Instagram post and you're like, hmm, I'm down. Now I can weigh in on one of like, arguably, complicated conflict that exists in our world yeah it's so complicated this dude. is i i mean <laughs> it's already such a throwback in like do, yeah doing this the she's doing the she's doing the israeli version of like lord give me the confidence of a mediocre white man you know yeah but also like it's complicated is i mean 
I didn't even know they were still doing that one. Well, that one is like, in my opinion, that is like being used by all of the like the squishy libs who don't want to be like, yeah, this shit's really fucking racist. Yeah. And there's no way to defend it. So they're like, you don't understand. It's a really complex situation. And a lot of people don't even want to read a little bit about it. Okay. A lot of people don't even want to read even a little bit about it. So they just go along with like, oh yeah, it must be complicated. It's not that complicated. Like the the solutions are complicated due to, uh, you know, the the uh, horrifying violence that Palestinians have been subjected to, right? But as far as like the morality of the situation, it's not complicated at all. It's pretty. It's one of the few instances in 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 any kind of geopolitical conflict where there is like a very clear uh, a morality here. There's a very clear morality at play, and that is apartheid wrong bad. Not allowed, okay? Where is she going with the ripple effect thing? Yeah, I think she's... It's classic. She's going to say, I assume... I only saw, like, a, a bits and pieces of this. But she's probably going to say, like, oh, well, you know, the Holocaust happened, and that uh, because of that, we need to have a majority... Uh, like, Israel needs to be a majority Jewish, ethno state. Uh, there needs to be a place where, like, Jewish people, that, uh, you know, where Jewish people can go. There's 20 different uh, Arab ethno states out there or Muslim ethno states out there. Why can't there be one Jewish one? Uh, why can't we have our own? That kind of thing. Like, if you cannot tell me why Yemen, actually Yemen, declare a war on Israel, maybe you're not the right person to give geopolitical analysis. Wait, who's, who can't... <laughs> what? I don't even know who she's shadow boxing with. I don't even understand. Yeah, yeah. I also, what's the what? I wonder what who she thinks, uh, like, or what she thinks people are saying about Yemen. Like, I mean, I don't get it. Like, yeah, I know why they're doing it. You know, they're... analysis on this conflict, but more than everything, I would like the audacity, the audacity of people coming to my page, a black Jewish woman and try to educate me about my own experience. Like, yes, Karen from Minnesota. They're doing the Karen thing? Yeah! Oh my God. Hey, yo! Oh, hey, God. yo! Oh, that's oh God, good. This sucks so much. <laughs> yes, Karen. Oh my God. Oh, that's so sick. I really needed your education about my own experience in my own country. Talking to me about social justice and racism, like you care about black people in Israel? <laughs> <laughs> this is like, I love standpoint theory because it's like, it's like, okay, forget the fact that they like steril sterilized a bunch of Ethiopian women at the border. Yeah, uh, th th this by, by this claiming it's a vaccine. Is, yeah, claiming it's a yeah. vaccine. I had a good time, so fuck you. Yeah. I, 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 nothing, nothing like pisses me off more than when Israelis do this. This like, it, like, um, oh, you really think you know what it's like, you asshole in America? It's like, okay, fine. No one's forcing you to take our fucking money. You're, yeah, you're free to go find another patron. Um, wait, wasn't it uh, Sudanese uh, refugees like not getting paid in Israel? Like, isn't that also another? Uh, hold on. Uh, there was another thing about this too, like um, IDF detaining uh, Sudanese migrants who crossed into Israel uh, from from Lebanon, and then also like uh, Israel also had a policy that Tucker Carlson loved a while back, where they decided that they should have a bounty system for undocumented citizens. Yeah. And Tucker was like, "That's so sick. We should do that here too." But anyway, um, this is a this is another way that. Uh, Israel utilizes the foreign workforce and won't actually pay them. Foreign workers in Israel often have to pay exorbitant placement fees to secure work in the country, which has left many of them with too much debt to leave or will literally not fucking pay people, uh, will not pay people until they do leave when, they're, when uh, their time is done. That is actually something that the whole like guest worker indentured servitude pro uh, program that is something that is, um, it's pretty common practice in a lot of countries in the region. Um, Gulf countries yeah. have a huge standard practice of that. Some, some of our other allies. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there is like, um, you know, guest workers get abused in pretty much any country you can think of. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's like a codified in a way uh, in like 
pretty much any Gulf Cooperation Council nation that you can think of. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, let's keep going with the standpoint theory. When you actively don't, because you, you care, you will talk about the fact that you are literally being slaughtered out here. But you don't. The only time you talk about the experience of black people in Israel is when it fits your political agenda. When you can use and abuse our pain, our struggle to promote your ideology. You exploit- Wait, is she talking about like the Ethiopian uh, 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 Jewish women being sterilized? Like, is she saying like, don't use that against Israel? Yeah, like, like, I don't get what she's like, saying. I don't know if she's saying like, yeah, it's pretty unclear. Like, is she saying, don't talk about like how racist Israelis are if you're going to use that to criticize Israel? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what? I think, I think that's what she's saying. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Our struggles to promote an ideology that we don't agree with. And the same people posting these things will never tell you that black people in Israel feel that this is their homeland that they have bled and sacrificed and fought for this country. I love when they also do this with like a like a Druze person too. Yeah. Like they'll always have like the one Arab guy in the military uh, to be like, you know, I, I love Israel. I don't know what you're talking about. And like they treat us so good here. Please yeah, don't say that they don't. Yeah, no, they have like a diversity brochure for like pretty much any group you can think of. And then it's like, yeah, just ignore the video you saw this week of like a fucking lynch mob of hundreds barring a bunch of uh, Arab students inside a college. Yeah. And Israeli police sitting around doing fucking nothing. Yeah. Or, the, or you know, any number of different pogroms happening in the West Bank and has continued uh, to happen with, you know, small arms that they got from the United States of America, as a matter of fact. It's pretty fire. Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, shouts out to Itamar ben Giver for that. My community literally walked through deserts in order to be a part of this country. And me living here today wearing these uniforms is the actual realization of my ass. And, and well, I guess it cut. So, like, like I, I can't imagine she was getting anywhere coherent with that. <laughs> like, I guess it was going to end with like, um, I like living here. Okay, that, okay. Listen, that this is precisely the reason why we have to fucking keep pummeling our, our concentration camp. Like, we just have to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Non-fucking th stop. That was one of the least coherent propaganda videos that they've done. They really are. Like, it's just an across-the-board oh. collapse in quality. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of propaganda. Van Jones. We need to kill more babies uh, parade happened today. Yeah. I... Dude, is Van Jones like? He used to be a Maoist third world, as, as I, you know. I know that. Yeah. I know that. But it's like San Francisco's very own Maoist third world is Van Jones. When you watch this video, it's very clear he did not know what kind of rally he was going to. I feel, I feel like that happens to him a lot. Yeah. Like he, I don't, I don't know what's up with the guy. <laughs> I'm a peace guy. I pray for peace. No more rockets from Gaza and no more bombs falling down on the people of Gaza. God protect the children. God protect children. Let's end all the horror and all the heartbreak in the holy <laughs> land. Let's, they're like, no, said, let, let's stop shut the, the fuck Don't up. You die. <laughs> he, he, like, what did he think was going to happen? Like, dog, oh you God. are literally at, first of all, you are at. The, the the Israel has to keep bombing Gaza parade, okay? What the fuck do you think they were going to say to you? Yeah, he, like... like did you not look at the brochure? Did you not look at the other people that are going to be on that stage, dude? Tommy Vitor and myself got into a little bit of an argument earlier this morning. Not an argument, uh, but, but he was like, guys... No matter what happens, do not allow uh, that fucking psychopathic televangelist to to appear at this stage. And and uh, you know we'll get to that in a second. Let's finish the Van Jones shit. Let's end all of it. But I'll be honest in closing. When I think about what's happening over there, I don't feel powerful to do something about what's happening over there. But I do feel... Why? You're literally an American. You're a prominent... You are a prominent 
American media figure. You have more power literally to in, in stopping this than like 99.999% of the population. You have more power to stop this than like the average Israeli citizen does. Do you, he like... Did he just, like, not talk to anyone from the pro-Israel side for, like, five years? Like, <laughs> like anyone, anyone who had any contact with this side would know, like, if you go to this rally and you're like, I, hey, I'm a peace guy, I'm, I'm against all bombing, they, they, <laughs> they're just going to be screaming at you. I, I just, um, I don't know, there's a lovable, like, stupidity about him i can yeah. never get mad at him yeah he's just like is it is it because he's just always is it because here's this. van jones in 1993 if students can do that in 1960 if students can do that in 1970 if students can do that in 1985 and 86 in 1993 when we have the united states government building a death camp a concentration camp for black people who have done nothing wrong but get sick and want justice that's all they've done wrong. If we can't close that death camp, if this generation cannot prevent another Japanese American internment in our lifetime, we should all get haircuts and go get regular jobs and give it up. Well, I mean, that's literally what he did. Yeah. So he wasn't yeah. wrong. He literally yeah. was like, yeah, fuck this Maoist shit, dog. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I know, but I don't even feel like his transition away from Maoism was even cynical. Like, he's such a, there's, like, such a nice dopiness about him. I literally feel like the first, like, normal Democrat who he ever talked to in his life while he was a Maoist was like, well, actually, we believe in sustainable growth and keeping the unemployment rate at 3.5%. He was like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I, yeah. I guess we don't have to do a fucking cultural revolution. Okay. <laughs> like, he's just, you could sell this guy anything. I think it's very charming. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I feel I'm a little bit more cynical, I think. Uh, I, I don't think that he's, like, being honest when uh, he holds these positions. I don't think that he was, like, maybe he was earnestly a Maoist. I don't know. He's He definitely doesn't have that same um, vibe that Kirsten Cinema has, though, because he actually has to be charismatic, yeah. Uh, yeah. whereas Kirsten Cinema could just, like, sit in that role for, you know, at least a long enough time to, you know, get the bag later on. You know what? Um, maybe you're right, because he didn't, in the period when he was a Maoist, he doesn't speak Maoist English. Yeah, he didn't say America Kaka. Yeah, no, none of the Maoist English style. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, this is sadder than, like, you know, finding out about the Tooth Fairy. Yeah. The idea How that Van Jones isn't real. Is to maybe do something about what's happening here. He's getting upset that they're like, shut the fuck up. What did Let's he take a stand here happened? against anti-Jewish bigotry. Let's take a stand against Muslim. Let's, ta let's take a stand. <laughs> <laughs> he is saying the most, like, anodyne no, he shit. He said, let's take a stand against Muslims. I mean, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, like, it's like, he might as well have gotten up there and been like, it's bad when people die, and the entire crowd is like, you should fucking die! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boo! Get off the fucking Fuck stage! You. <laughs> yeah, they're screaming no ceasefire. Yeah, he read the room and, and had to re-triangulate and was like, actually, let's take a stance against Muslims. <laughs> yeah. Against yeah. Muslim. let's, let's take a stand here <laughs> against hatred. Let's take a stand here against hatred of all kinds. <laughs> They're booing him. <laughs> Boo! I don't want. Oh my god, he did not do his homework. <laughs> anyway, um, what was what was the expectation? Like, how did you think this I was, was going to play out? Yeah, did, like literally, you. If you've talked to any like pro-Israel guy in the last like four years. You know that's not flying. Like it's not 1999. He, he, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Like I don't know why he thought that this was going to be. You know why this was going to be different. And um, also, here's a conversation that I had. Hold on, let oh, me yeah, see with if Tommy I can. Vitor, he with was, Tommy Vitor, who was like, who was like very worried that the the we need to kill four thousand more babies rally was going to look bad if they brought this prominent speaker on. He said, 
this will be a huge mistake. I, I, you know, I no disrespect to Tommy. You know, I, I'm I'm friendly with the Pod Johns. Okay, um, he said the announcement today. This is Rabbi Jill Jacobs who uh, runs the the like liberal Zionist uh, thing. I think she's like a like a like I, I don't know enough about her, but I think like she's. Uh, she was doing, what is this? Some deja vu about tomorrow's rally. 20 years ago, I was a rabbinical student. A number of us had spent the year abroad in Israel. I think it's like, a, it's like a, uh, what is it called? Uh, True, the Rabbinic Council for Human Rights in the U.S. Israel and Occupied Territories. Oh, wait, no, this is not that. This is not the, the thing I was thinking of. There is, um, there's like a liberal Zionist uh, uh, justice caucus thing where it's like, it's like oh, J yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah, J Street. It's like J thing, Street yeah. where it's, um, uh, what do you call it? Are you thinking of a, uh, like if not, mm, no. Well, uh, if not now uh, is like also pretty aggressively yeah, anti-apartheid. They're not liberal Zionists, but they're also kind of like squishy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've had my problems with if not now, but it's fine. It, it's ultimately there needs to be like a broad majority. But she says the announcement today: the speakers include John Hagee, whose so-called support for Israel is based in anti-Semitism and election denial. Mark Johnson make this even more clear. Well, she's right. Okay. She's right about this. Tommy Vitor uh, uh, quote tweeted her and said, will be a huge mistake to allow Hagee to speak at this rally. McCain rejected Hagee's endorsement in 2008 because uh, Hagee said that Hitler had been fulfilling God's will by hastening the desire of Jews to return to Israel in accordance with biblical prophecy. This is, I mean, like, God bless Tommy Vitor, but that's like saying it would be a huge mistake to have Himmler speak at the uh, the Hitler rally. Yeah, it's like, like... What do you think this fucking is? Yeah, to which I responded with, why Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdogan went and spoke at his mega church a couple weeks ago. Seems to me like Israel's own officials are fond of him for his contribution to settlements and theological Armageddon justifications for Israel's expansion. Then he turned around and tried to do this like because no other uh, because other speakers and attendees like the famous hostages should not be forced to be associated with this lunatic to which I said and I hadn't seen this by the way. Israel's far right government is doing ethnic cleansing and displacement. This rally shows support for that campaign. They're doing, they're going to have a far right Holocaust revisionist on who the Israeli government loves. Makes sense to me. Also, Netanyahu doesn't give a fuck about the hostages. Lamau. And then I showed the Israeli hostage family starting a five day march on Netanyahu's home. Because, like, the people that are ripping the hostage posters in Israel are the Benjamin Netanyahu fans. The people who are demanding a ceasefire and, and uh, negotiations with Hamas are literally the hostage families. Yeah. Okay? The ones who are closest in proximity to the victims are the ones who are saying, please stop fucking blowing up my family members, most likely. Which is understandable. It's an understandable position to take. People in America, however, are using those hostages cynically to be like, no, no, no. The bombing campaign has to continue. The bombing campaign has to continue. Not dissimilar to the unknown guy that Benjamin Netanyahu brought to a fucking meeting, the first ever meeting that he had with the hostage families, where families of kidnapped Israelis meet Netanyahu only to find unknown family boosting the prime minister. We need to stop this whiny behavior. We need to win the war, said the unverified relatives who appeared at the meeting between the hostages' families and the Israeli prime minister and stirred an uproar amongst the others. Yeah, he, since the beginning, Netanyahu has told the hostages' families basically to fuck off the greatest danger to the hostages' families in Israel is, like, other Israelis. And the greatest danger to the hostages themselves is the Israeli Air Force. Uh, I don't even know how many of them are still alive. Um, according to the Hamas, uh, 68 uh, of them have, have died so far. That's what they were saying. Um, saying that everyone attended this rally like famous of the hostage support ethnic cleansing and displacement is wrong and unfair when people on the right lift up individual shitty actors and comments made at pro Palestine rallies we can all agree Hagee sucks no this what is ridiculous he, what the fuck does he fit like <laughs> like what, what, what is the what year does he think this is but I also don't understand like then why is there even a protest for Israel because like the current position why do you do a protest you do a protest because the government is not listening to you right you do a protest because like, uh, you're not getting what you want from the government and you want to show them in a, in a demonstration, a show force that like, no, there is infinitely more support for your, uh, there's infinitely more support for your opinions out there in the broader public than not, right? Yeah. The, the only reason why you do this kind of fucking, uh, uh, you know, what, what is the, what, what's the purpose the behind this protest? The only two things that you could be protesting for that the government isn't giving you, that, like, you're not getting from the White House if you're on the Israel side, is either that you want to just fully nuke Gaza or that you want to do the utterly suicidal thing that 
somehow Netanyahu is sort of on the realistic, more realistic side of this, fully expand the war in the north. Like, yeah. fully expand the war in the north with Lebanon, which, talk about fucking terrifying. Netanyahu, even he realizes that this is delusional. To which I think Yoav Gallant has literally had a, a more right-wing position on yeah. than Netanyahu. The defense minister, Yoav Gallant, the one who said, we're fighting human animals, um, is the one who's, like, seemingly, as far as I understand it, I, like, uh, you know, uh, to the best of my ability, looking at, like, Israeli sources of information... He's the one who's seemingly trying to open up a new front in the conflict by routinely agitating uh, versus, uh, you know, other forces in the government holding back on it is like possibly even Benjamin Netanyahu. They, I, he's threatened to resign if they don't let him do it. And it's like, I guess if you hold that rally, those are the two things that yeah. you are protesting for because no like no one believes this shit that you're holding a rally asking Hamas to give the hostages back that's fucking ridiculous especially because it's diametrically the opposite of what fucking uh, Netanyahu's government has done so far so is the rally about forcing the Americans into a ceasefire in which case if your goals are that aligned with the Jewish voice for peace for example then why don't you go to a fucking pro Palestinian rally they're the motherfuckers who are demanding a ceasefire so that, yes, there can be a hostage negotiation, so that the hostages can be released. Even logistically speaking, there is no way to be able to release hostages. Like, if, if Hamas tomorrow was like, we're done. We're done. We're putting our arms down. We're no longer trying to fight. You can ethnically cleanse all of us. Fuck it. YOLO. And here are the hostages. You would still need to stop bombing so they could, like, find the fucking hostages in the goddamn rubble and, like, go through the multiple militant factions that have other hostages as well and, like, communicate with one another. So the idea that, like, for the past two weeks, three weeks now, for the past two weeks, okay, where, where everybody's saying no ceasefire, release the hostages now while all of the hostage families, the immediate family members of the hostages in Israel are saying, cease fire so we can actually get the fucking hostages out, they're working against one another. Here in America, the pro-Palestinian side, okay, the pro-Palestinian side is unironically making the same argument that the pro-hostage family side is making in Israel. It's the exact opposite on the ultra-Zionist side. They're saying, no, 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 keep the bombing, keep the bombing. The bombing campaign must continue. Israel has a right to defend itself. Also release the hostages. But they're just cynically using that to, to not say the other thing, which is Israel should continue doing an ethnic cleansing in the Gaza Strip. That's the real reason why there is a constant cycle of like reinforcing this perspective over and over again. Because if it wasn't that, then a lot of these communities could gather under the same banner of saying... We don't want any more fucking war because you're killing the hostages. Does Tommy Vito really think that, like, the rally that, like, Michael Rappaport is headlining is, like, an even-handed, yeah. <laughs> like, well-thought-out thing? Yeah. Oh, my God. Speaking of the fucking uh, rally... Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta... Go to the bathroom yeah, yeah. Anyway, funny, fresh, intercepted call just came out. Okay, uh, let's watch this. Just Biden says Gaza's largest hospital must be protected. Um... As far as uh, the 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 Willie Mac no show goes, uh, he reached out. He wants to he wants to come on the broadcast. I'm going to see in a second uh, if I can facilitate it. Okay, how do we do this? Uh, what's his Discord? The Willie guy said he'll debate. I I just DM'd him. What his uh, Discord is? I'm glad that calling him a uh, Willie no show worked. As to the crisis, let's go now to Ed O'Keefe at the White House. Ed, all eyes on the White House this morning. What are they saying? Good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. Good to see you. President Biden spoke out on the situation at the Al Shifa hospital that Ramey just showed us. And his administration continues to stress that active negotiations are underway to win the release of hostages being held in Gaza. The hospital must be protected. President Biden's calls for Israel to protect the main Al Shifa hospital in Gaza come as Israel claims a Hamas command sits below its main medical complex. And it's my hope and expectation that uh, there will be. Uh, less intrusive action relative to the hospital. Political pressure on the president to rein in Israel is mounting. Protests around the world. And in the Oval Office Monday, the president of Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim country, 
appealed to President Biden to stop the violence in Gaza. Meanwhile, U.S. officials continue negotiating for the release of what's believed to be about 240 hostages held by Hamas since its early October raid into Israel. This is a top priority for President Biden. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met late Monday with the families of some hostages, even as he admits they're still uncertain if or how many American hostages are still alive. We won't know for certain until we we actually get the release of those hostages and they're safely returned to their families. Early this morning, the remains of five U.S. service members killed in a weekend training exercise in Cyprus returned to U.S. soil, including Army Staff Sergeants Tanner Grohn, Andrew Southard, Cade Wolf, and Chief Warrant Officers Stephen Dwyer and Shane Barnes. They were deployed for any possible evacuations of Americans from Israel or Lebanon and are the first U.S. military deaths related to the Israel-Hamas war. Now, another Black Hawk, baby. Classic. Dude, normally, normally, okay, I'm, I'm glad Felix is not here for this part. Normally, okay, at least they drop the Black Hawks uh, in, a, in a situation where they're, like, trying to, like, I don't know, execute, like, an entire family or something, or uh, Osama bin Laden, right? But this, on the other hand, I mean, it's just, if you fucking fly a black hawk attack helicopter it's gonna drop you have to it's gonna fucking crash you have to they always do this okay this is the most common thing that the american military does all the fucking time okay all the fucking time Not today which is why i'm saying this again do not get in a helicopter don't do it don't fucking do it don't get into a helicopter a large pro-Israel rally will be held here in Washington on the National Mall, and it comes as the president's getting ready to leave for California, where other foreign policy challenges await. At the Asia-Pacific Economic Conference, he's scheduled to meet with President Xi of China on Wednesday and Mexico's President Obrador. Anyway, what about an Osprey VTOL? Don't get into a helicopter. Whoa. Oh, yeah, she's a, she's a big girl. Oh, wait, here. Okay, there it is. I wish AMLO was our president <clears throat> so bad. I love him. He's just, like, he's so, like, optimistic. Everyone loves him. Like, every month he puts out a new referendum that's like, you know, would you let AMLO uh, park his car in your garage? And it passes by 78%. <laughs> I love him. I, I like that he believes in the little wood elves or whatever. Yeah, I yeah, think that's, that's cool. That's awesome. That's cool. That's awesome. Mm, I just... He also wait. What's his take on Israel? Because isn't he evangelical? I feel no, like no, no. He's um. Well, he's very religious. Right? Yeah, he's I thought he was like. Let me see. <laughs> Anglo <Yeah>, Evangelion. <laughs> wait, what the fuck? Did religious voters turn to Amlo in 2018? Um, It'll be on his Wikipedia. Let's see. He is religious, but I don't know if he's evangelical. Uh, born in Tepetitan, the municipality of Mahuspana. He's Menonito. He's Catholic. Oh, he's not even. He's just Catholic. Mm. There you go. He's just. He's got such a great attitude. That's what I like about him. Uh, he's Catholic, but he's using the Pegasus surveillance system, so he has no problem with it. Source: Soy Mexicano. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not that it would matter all too much. Obviously, like there are far more important allies in this situation, or far more important countries that have like voiced their opinions in this circumstance, but you know, just interesting. Um, AMLO says he supports peace, but Israel deserves their own state. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, there are worse things. I mean, okay. You, that's, I would have liked for him to be more, you know, take any type of a stance, but still his attitude, the wood elves, the referendums, I mean, I still come out liking the guy. Yeah. Um, speaking of guys uh, that we like, uh, that we love, uh, Ben Shapiro. He's, hours. He's going to shit can her. Hours after a video was posted in Ben Shapiro, in which Ben Shapiro said that Candace Owens' rhetoric on Israel has been absolutely disgraceful, Owens posted these cryptic tweets, which were her first in two days. I'm going to be honest, I do not want Candace Owens' uh, opinion on this matter. Like, yes. Uh, the, the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this has been disgraceful. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Country club. He looks swagged out, though. Fucking pastel blazer is a strong yeah. look. This is like very. I feel like this is a Jordan Peterson chic. 
He he looks like this is a kid's bar mitzvah, and his wish was to have a Ben Shapiro themed bar. Oh my god, <laughs> that, that's what it seems like to you're, me. You're you're permanently bitchless if that's what you do. Okay, is just you're stuck. Every young Republican, dude. Every young Republican is just like has has gotten to be that way by by just like constantly trying to debate everybody. It's like ah, ah debate me on everything. I yeah, I, think- I like. I just judging by the ceilings. Hayır baba. Söyledim hayır. Koy oraya ben alırım sonra. Sorry. No problem. It looks like someone's house actually. What the fuck is he doing? Is he is this like was this like a woman's baby shower and Ben Shapiro just took the mic and was like I'm going to talk about Candace Owens for a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not post sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying and I find them disreputable. Yes, uh, the, the question is about Candace. What, Will, did, what did Candace say? Willie, uh, Candace Owens said is also Willie Mac show is got it. He's setting up a recording so he can uh, debate me uh, on the on the the Israel Palestine situation, but also specifically, I guess, like what he hates about me in person, which I think is like also incredibly stupid. I, um, but anyway, I don't see how the two issues are are intertwined. But I guess that's that's intersectionality. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Candace Owens says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. Oh, God. You cannot. I, 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 I can't stand say Christ it when is Bible king. people do this. It's so annoying. It's like... We want to know, like, what's going on with you. Like, are you quitting your job? Are you going to reveal a dark secret about Ben Shapiro? Yeah. But no, they all, like, every Bible guy does Christ this. cucks. So here, here's a fucking, here's something from Ephesians 36, 12. I don't fucking care. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, you know, maybe she'll get fired. Who knows? I do love the drama personally, though. I like it too. But I, 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 I enjoy yeah. watching this kind of drama for sure. When they like get, uh, they, they start going after one another. Like she was ripping into Steven Crowder a lot. That was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. I want more of that. Less of this stuff where she's like, you know, here's fucking Matthew's letter to whoever. I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. Tell, um, me, tell me about how Steven Crowder was soliciting his staff for Molly. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. That's my... Can you imagine a worse person to, to, to try to get ecstasy from than a Steven Crowder intern? <laughs> like, I'd sooner just go up to any cop and be like, can you get me Molly? I mean, you have a higher success rate, higher yeah. chance of getting actual Molly than whatever fucking uh, baby, pow- baby aspirin they, they uh, dusted up. Yeah, they're giving you a bunch of St. John's wart. <laughs> um, yeah. What, what did you say? You mean set up a camera, right? No, he said, Willie Mac said, give me one sec. Got to set up recording. I think he wants to like record his interview uh, on from his perspective or something. That's probably what he's trying to do. Um, would you like to be emote only during that conversation? No, we don't have to be emote only during that conversation. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear. But uh, here is what we're okay, going to be doing latest, instead. Um, in Gaza. This lady is... Uh, the one that went on, I think, Channel 4, and uh, she's been popping the fuck off. And anytime there's, like, any kind of pushback against her, she loses her mind and has no way to, like, deal with the situation. But uh, she's going to do the classic, the Shifa Hospital is the Ham- Hamas headquarters shit. She uh, has the same yeah. genotype as, like, Ronna McDaniel, uh, Sarah Huckabee. like that Sarah same, Huckabee Sanders, yes. Yeah, that same, exact same. Like, yeah. They're, like, solid liquid and solid as snake. Yeah, she's Ambassador. solid as she's the scariest one <laughs> of Israel to the United Kingdom is with us looking at the death toll 11,240. I feel like there's always like a sense of shame in British media whenever they like bring anything wrong that Israel has done up like and it's not the shame of like their 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 complicity in the violence. It's more so like I'm so sorry that I have to bring this up. But like 4,500 children have been ruthlessly slaughtered in your hands. Well, yeah, they're like, I think it's because it's like they're on tenuous grounds with Israel. Like, we've talked about it before, but like, you know how like the, 
the current crop of like Israeli leaders and like Hasbara operators, they don't understand that in order to be like successful propaganda or to successfully sell their side, that like Sky News or even the BBC for that matter, they have to be seen as reliable. And yeah. they think that like any news that isn't 100% saying exactly what Israel says all the time is like they're against them. Yeah, like... They, like, they, they aren't sophisticated enough to understand what they're doing. Like Gilad Erdan, who quite literally fucking uh, went on, uh, went at the UN, the Israeli ambassador to the UN, and was wearing the, the yellow star of David, where he fucking shamelessly said... Uh, that like everyone in the UN is also Hamas. Yeah, <laughs> and every yeah. reporter is Hamas. They that's a, such a fucking weird strategy because like they they've been doing that like you know this is Hamas and that it's Hamas. They'll post like uh shots from helicopters of these protests that have like three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand people, and be like, look at this pro Hamas rally, and it's it's like they're saying. Look, look how much people hate us. People like if, yeah. you're, if you're saying these guys are Hamas and Hamas is ISIS. Well, it looks like you guys are a lot less popular than ISIS, according to you. Yeah. Which, by the way, I mean, Israel and Al Nusra, at the very least, are uh, well, they they're they're on much better terms than like uh, any any like Iranian adjacent militant faction that uh, is is murking ISIS militants regularly in the region. So that's always like a weird comparison that Israel does where it's like, but dog, you kind of like ISIS. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, what? They, they, they're they more open about like how... Like you, you literally have collaborated with ISIS. They're, they, they've they more openly collaborated and like aided uh, like Nusra and, and other people like Al-Qaeda aligned and yeah. even like... like um, HTS and like everyone else who's changed their name eight uh, eight hundred billion fucking times. Yeah. Um. ISIS. Uh. They're not. It's not quite as an open thing, but they did, um, effectively act as ISIS's air force for a little while in Syria. Yeah. Like they would kind of hit every group except them. Yeah. Um. But you're right. Al Nusra is the Al Nusra and ISIS had an opportunity to collab, and they said, "No, dog, we can't do that." We should just keep it, you know, we should, we should, <laughs> we shouldn't merge. That did happen. So technically it's just El Nusra that they've openly collaborated with and ISIS that they've kind of collaborated with, but not as openly. Yeah. For Israel, yeah. I mean. I mean, whatever has gone on between Israel and ISIS, like one thing we do know for sure is... ISIS, they apparently, they accidentally like shelled an Israeli position. They didn't hit anybody. But they apologized to Israel. They were like, whoops, our bad. We didn't mean to do that. Um, as for everything else, I feel like it's one of those things where we won't know the full story for another, like, 10 years, you know? But there's certainly no shortage of weird shit that Israel got up to in Syria. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to go pee while this runs. You can talk. Uh, and then... Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll talk to Willie Mac to see what his fucking gripe is, gotcha. and he'll inform us about uh, his beautiful takes on Israel Palestine. To the Palestinian Authority. I'm gonna ask him gonna about stop. this woman. Oh well, it's gonna stop when Hamas will release our hostages, when Hamas will surrender, when Hamas will say, "I'm not controlling the Gaza Strip anymore, and I'm not I... making this city a city of terror." This is when it's gonna stop, and this is our duty to the people. Look, I'm sorry. You know, I know you, I know this is not attacking the substance of the argument, but when I look at this woman, I feel like I'm in trouble at school. Like it, it, it feels like she's a school administrator who's yelling at me for something. It feels like I'm 13 and she saw me smoking. It just puts me in this very uncomfortable mood. I feel like they should have got someone different. Of Israel to protect them, to make sure the 7th of October won't be repeated, just like Hamas spokesperson keeps on saying, we will do it again and again and again. This is a ideology that is a jihadi ideology that is dangerous both to Israelis and to the Palestinians. And this is why we must finish the job of dismantle all Hamas capabilities oh God, in the Gaza Strip. She fucking stinks. It's like, 
the hospitals is a very you were good point, Kate. The job um, the last, I'm so like, glad you're raising times. it because think what type of monstrous mind you need to have in order to make all your headquarters based in hospitals when you know you're making the patients your human shield. Isn't it a monstrous way of thinking? How, I does, think that, how does that even work? How does that even work? If you're dropping like a fucking J-Dam, it isn't like... It, it's not like there's bullet editing like in Elden Ring. It's not like, oh, the guy in front of me absorbed all the damage. That's not how a fucking yeah. bomb works. Like, what are you talking about, lady? It's just... the. This is why, like, the whole human shield narrative is so fucking psychotic because you're like, you're making us bomb you. You're making us bomb you. It's like, okay, well, then don't do it. Like, here's an idea. Don't fucking bomb the hospital. You know what I mean? Like, this is the thing. One, Israel lies all all the fucking time. Two, Israel has shown zero proof that there is a Hamas headquarters under the uh, the El Shifa hospital, okay? There could be. There could be. There's a massive complex tunnel system under Gaza, 400 kilometers. This part is true. But the idea that, like, the idea that, like, the only way to do this is by murdering, like, cancer babies to, like, get to this hospital is cowardly fucking bullshit, and okay? They, they've gone even beyond, like dropping bombs on it they're fucking sniping patients through windows they shot a paraplegic guy in the fucking yeah. neck and nurses they yeah. they shot they shot at fucking nurses they sniped at nurses so the idea that like the idea that that uh there is conclusive evidence and therefore we have to bomb this hospital is ridiculous they've never had conclusive evidence they might be able to prove it after the fact, but they absolutely, every single fucking attack on a hospital thus far has been completely, completely uh, on shit-ass intel. No intel whatsoever. It's just a rumor uh, on top of which uh, doctors that have worked at that hospital, not just like uh, Palestinian doctors, but also literally, uh, uh, you know, Norwegian doctors, like the doctors on borders doctors have said, there's no fucking Hamas underneath this hospital. We've never seen Hamas under the, uh, underneath this hospital. We would at least fucking know that uh, there was like some Hamas relationship. Even if there was, however, and I'm repeating this once again, let's say there's a tunnel system underneath and they fucking point to that and go, this is where all the Hamas babies were. You know, if they do that kind of shit, still doesn't justify blowing up a fucking hospital. Doesn't justify shooting at fucking uh, random uh, civilians inside of the hospital. Doesn't justify shooting ambulances. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it all goes back to, like, the intentionality argument, right? Where, okay, if you've killed, you know, it's been a month and you are in the five five figures of civilians killed, right? And your argument is... Well, that was not intentional. Well, okay, then that means you fucking suck at this. Yeah. That means you, like, probably shouldn't have a military. Like, if, if that was not your goal, I I mean, you need to become like Costa Rica and just sell everything. Get rid of it. You do not deserve to have one. Yeah. It, it's, um, oof. It, it's just a standard that doesn't apply in any other circumstance because, like, for it to apply, you have to see every single Palestinian as an enemy combatant and every single ally of a Palestinian as an enemy combatant, too, not just, like, Palestinians. Um, and in the eyes of the Western world, they do see it like that. No matter how many times, like, no matter how many times you have, like, Doctors Without Borders, like, nurses, doctors come on television, like, you still try to, as you saw with Anderson Cooper, you still try to cut propaganda to be like, but they were trying to kill you, right? Like, weren't they trying to kill you because you're a white woman? Like, uh, ridiculous, but they do it regardless because it's just another way to, like, uh, uh, justify the the concept of, like, all of these guys are they're enemy combatants. That's why... Uh, you know, Isaac Herzog will go on television and hold up like uh, this. We found this in a fucking kid's room in a children's library. Look, it's an Arabic copy of Mein Kampf with annotations. It's like, what the fuck are you saying? None of this justifies killing children. Yeah, the, the Mein Kampf thing was, again, this is the least creative fucking country in human history. It's insane. Like, okay, like, let's say that you really did find that in someone's house in Gaza. Out of however many houses there are in Gaza that you bombed the shit out of, that you stormed into, that you shot parents and kids, you did all this shit, you found Mein Kampf. So, like, then all of this is, like, okay? Yeah. What the fuck are we doing here? 
By the way, while we're talking, it seems the IDF is uh, supposed to raid the Al Shifa hospital right now, according to Al Jazeera News, which is an insane thing to say. Um, but yeah, that is what's going on currently. The Israeli officials just notified the Gaza health officials that they plan to raid Al Shifa hospital soon. Um, so that's what the fuck is going on, uh, according to Al Jazeera breaking. There it is, dude. The the fucking uh, the the greatest villains of all time. You know the 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 Palestinian hospital workers. Yeah. And just not not that long ago, um, there was a huge debate over whether Israel uh, intentionally hit a hospital or not. Yeah, and of course, you know, yeah, long, long after, long after that, you know, yeah, it turns that, out that, that went on. Israel, yeah, that went on for like weeks. Remember? Yeah, which I'm sure this uh, Willie Mac dipshit will want to talk about actually. Long after that, like all the Israeli claims on that have been debunked, but yeah. You know, it doesn't even matter at this point. Yeah, it doesn't. And that's the goal. The goal is not to, like, actually fucking have this conversation. The goal is not to, like, actually inform people. All right. Uh, On that note, here is the Willie Mac show. What's up, Willie Mac show? Hey, what's up, Hassan? Um, not much. So I am not very familiar with what you do, but I believe you've done a couple of videos about how dog yeah, shit I you, am, I think, you right? You want to you turn on your camera, by the way? I mean, I'm recording. I don't think I can at the same time. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's unfortunate, but all right. So you, did, did you uh, watch the videos? No, of course not. I have a policy of not really watching videos such as that one specifically because it will frustrate me. And then I will have you to want respond to debate to about it. a video you didn't, you didn't even watch. Why? Yeah, of course you made the video. I'm I mean, not that, like debating a random person about a video I didn't watch. You made the fucking video, so let's hear. I know, but that kind of like uh, that kind of links up to like my big criticism with you is that you don't actually put in the bare minimum effort to research anything before you jump to conclusions. Um, that's so, why you tweet when you're like, "Hey, I want to, I want to debate Willie." Do you do you really do you really Palestine. consider do you really consider me watching a fucking dumbass YouTube video yes. from a drama farming channel to be doing research? I don't need to yes, do research it, this is what you're on a video. About. You're going into a topic you don't know anything about, brother. Just give me you what you want to say. Give me what you want to say. The video is about me, isn't it? Yeah, so sure, fucking sure. talk to me about what the fucking points of the video are, and let's discuss it the fuck yeah, do yeah. you mean my, my main criticism why would i have to research is, a video about myself like oh, oh man i can't right believe my i have to i have to like watch I have no doubt you didn't i have to it. watch a fucking dumbass uh, uh talk shit for 25 minutes and jerk off like all the fucking talking points that i've ever that i've heard about myself over and over again mm -hmm. incredibly stupid give me the fucking takes and we'll talk about it okay go yeah on. yeah my my take is that you have a pattern of behavior where breaking news happens you jump to wild conclusions talking way too confidently. Okay, you give me an example. Who Pause. disagrees with example. you. Example. Give me an example. All right, Are you going to talk about... Okay. There, there was reports that Ukraine was going to be invaded by Russia. You confidently said, no, it wasn't. Despite all the reports, then Russia invades. And then instead of apologizing and correcting the story, you then Wait, justify, I didn't apologize and correct the story? You justify the invasion. Wait, right? I, I didn't apologize and correct the story. Did, let me let me finish my. Wait, hold on. No, 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 this is important. This is the pattern of behavior. Because you said you. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You're the one who doesn't do his research because I did apologize and I did correct the record. You you you, you just didn't fucking see it. You kind of walked it back too. It's wait, no, 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 no. I very clearly yeah. apologize for it. You didn't see that because all you do I, is I look did. at fucking it's clip chips. It's in the video. It's in one of my videos. So why did you, you did? just now bring it's it up so as though I've never apologized? Oh, this is so fr like Hassan. And then the worst part is when people Woo! call you out. Why did you just bring it, that up you, as you I, I never apologized? Then. Out of context. When why did not? you just say I never apologized like for it with when I did? Burns, right? You claim that's all out of context. Why did you say I never apologized? If why did you just because, say because I never you apologized? Justify more. You then make more outrageous claims. You I'm sorry. Why did you say claims. I never apologize if I did? And you just repeated. You just repeated after I said, no, yeah. I did apologize. You moved the goalposts. You, you, you moved you the goalposts moved, no, and you tried to fucking act like I was just backtracking. I didn't move the goalposts, dude. This is exactly my you did. criticism. You did. Stop saying this if is exactly watch, my criticism. Okay, but if your you criticism is video, fucking stupid. Your apology is in there. Okay. You then just didn't watch it, so you're just making shit up right now. That's what you're no, doing. No, I'm going off I'm of. Doing I'm going off of what you're saying. Because you didn't watch the video, because you don't research anything, which is the Why whole criticism. Why would I watch a fucking stupid video because that you made when I'm talking to you? Because the video is about me. You that's said with right your words that I didn't actually apologize. That I did. 
You're saying you I said did with your words that I did. <sighs> Is this what you you're going to do? You're going to talk over me when I'm giving you the answer? No. I'm giving you a very straightforward answer. I did do that. Okay. I did cover so your you apology. Said, so you said I did apologize, but it wasn't yeah, good enough I for you. Is that what you're it, saying? And then you, and I showed you apologizing for making your completely, like, fairly baseless claims jumping to conclusions, and then you followed that up by making more baseless claims jumping to conclusions. Okay, go on. What are the baseless claims that I made that I jumped to conclusions on, even though you originally said... I mm -hmm. said that Russia would never invade Ukraine, which is true. I did say that yep. because I did think that it would be an unimaginably stupid decision for Russia, okay, mm -hmm. which I claimed would uh, would be impossible to occupy Ukraine, a country with 44 million people whose entire national independence movement has revolved around literally trying to escape from Russia for the most part, regardless of the uh, regards of the Russian speaking population in the Eastern Front, okay. Having said yeah, that, I mean, however, this has nothing to do I with also, what, I, what I said, though. This is all just random nonsense. Yeah, because you're a like, fucking scum lord just, no, drama dude, farmer. Of up. course like, it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Topic. Because the specifics don't fucking matter hilarious. to you. The, specific, oh. the specifics do matter. Well, if they do, then when I describe... Right, here, I, got another one. I got another one. Let's do this one, too. There's an entire YouTube video called I Was Wrong About Ukraine. Like, there's literally... Yeah, in that same video, you make more claims about... Like what? If I remember, I mean, this is a year ago. I no, made no, no, this go ahead. Video. Go ahead. I'm guessing like what? you didn't watch that either. Like what? Of course I didn't watch it. So Why would I watch, watch a fucking drama farmer who has no understanding of geopolitical conflict? You're you the are... one who asked for this debate, and now you're all confused and butthurt that you're getting fucked up in it. Like, Wait, I don't know what I'm to sorry. do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You fucking brainlit. Give me what the <laughs> yeah, fucking God, inconsistency do your, do your was. You made you the video. You made the video. Give me the inconsistency or what you right, consider gotta, to be false information. You Are you having a hard time without a script or without people fucking feeding you uh, no, clips I that you can post? I'm pretty good, bro. Nobody's fed me anything. Dude, I you're got killing all the it. clips. You're, you're killing a dog. Them. Come on, go ahead. What's the second point? What is the what is the lie that I told about Ukraine? It's not a lie. It's just you made more claims. You made more basic Like what? Claims. What is the claim? Go, I gotta just go come pull on. it up in the video because you didn't. You do, didn't prepare you didn't for your own anything. fucking. You didn't prepare where you were literally coming on here to talk about not Israel Palestine, mind you, but about Ukraine, and you didn't even fucking prepare with talking points. I'll talk really? To you about Israel Palestine. That'll be the next point. It's you doing the same thing again. Oh well, dude, how God. do I you? You impromptu ask me I'm to sorry, a debate Felix. this minute. If I had a day to prepare, I would have everything, but you didn't. You just completely like you blew Dude, this whole it's your video. Oh, yeah. It's your video right about me. This should be so simple for you to be like, this is where you lied. Just say right. it. We I already established the first thing. The first thing you did was wrong. Time. All right. You got to give me a minute. Okay. This Are you trying to link me you your video? I'm not going to watch your video. Just say it with your mouth, with your words. Go ahead. I have to, I have to watch my video to see what my receipt is because this is a year old. <laughs> Right, I didn't know we were. I didn't know, know where you this don't even know your own video. Going. You don't know the contents of your own fucking video. I made it really? a year ago, bro. You think you're, you're you think I you're like doing a good job right now? When, instead do you of think you're doing a good job right now, defending your position? Like it's yeah, such a I profound do, position. You're doing exactly it's such a profound position do. that you don't even fucking remember your own talking points. Oh my lord! It's a dude. I'm trying to find your talking point. This is the. I'm this trying is to find your talking point. I know. My talking points that you claim are wrong mm -hmm. should be, you know, in the chamber for you to fire off. You came on here because you thought, let's have a Bro, conversation about these fucking videos that I've made. Do instantly right now, right when I was out. Stop I complaining. Back, oh, Give me the talking good. points. Come on. Now, look stop you the around. stop complaining. Tell me wait, what it was. Stop bitching. Tell me what it fucking was. You started the conversation by talking about Ukraine. Why did you bring up yeah. Ukraine if you weren't fucking ready to talk about it? Your Bro, first point that you brought up was that I never apologized dude. for it. I, I debunked have, it within I fucking seconds. Out and all the receipts right here, but you said get on now, Willie No Show. Okay, go now ahead. Here, come on, come on, Willie No Show. Come on. What's the second you're doing talking is point? Yelling in my ear while I'm pulling up the receipt. Willie No Show. Give me the second talking point. If you're not this fucking passionate about the subject then you're basically admitting that you're I mean, a fucking bottom-feeding drama farmer there, who has no interest in talking. Like, you're just you... going to look retarded because I'm going to pull it up in my when I make okay, my then video. then pull it up. It's then there. pull it up. Stop fucking complaining about it after the fact. Go ahead. I, I, I'm here all right, right now. If you are genuinely interested in truth and research or whatever, and you have this wonderful opportunity. You have this wonderful opportunity to you ask me personally. To pull it up. I'm trying to listen, but I'm hearing you twice, once from my video and once from you just bitching in my ear. Oh, my God. 
God. So you got to wait. Yeah, that's how research works. This is the greatest, this is the greatest brain power we got, folks. You want All right. me to just move on from this? All right, so I'm muting. I'm what? muting myself. I'm muting myself. Go ahead, watch right. your video, and then you can come back, okay? Holy moly, dude. Jesus, Lord, mercy. I muted myself. He can't hear me, so we can find his own talking points in his own fucking videos. Jesus Christ, dude. I didn't even get to any of my moderator questions. <laughs> I know. Every time Felix is here, we got to do a fucking, we, we have to have the conversations like this. It just has to happen. I, have a I love that he's like, I don't remember my talking points. I have to watch my own YouTube video. <laughs> well, I, I was going to suggest like a new topic. I was going to say, like, you know, if you don't want to watch the video, <laughs> like, wall. I guess, like, while talking to him, and he doesn't have the Google Doc, I was I was actually going to ask a series of questions about Amy Schumer. Oh, no. No. No, it's, no Amy Schumer. We can't like, do that. My questions are fine. <laughs> they're fine. Like, no one in the world would think they're bad. They're not All right, bad. I got it. All right, he's got it. He's got it. All right, let's hear it. I got it. All right. You. All right. Thank you, yeah, your, Willie your Mac. No show. Was, was you said, people, you said, uh, let me watch this one more time. Oh. It was in your video. It was in your video. Uh, I was wrong about Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And you said people people are acting like Kiev's getting bombed. Like that would never happen. And then it it's literally did happen. Okay. So yes. you're just again making more base. You, you're making your apology video about being wrong and making basis claims that you know nothing about. This is your this is your you take. Wrong. It's a pattern this is, of This is your you take have. from February twenty yeah. second, twenty twenty two. Yeah, another thing that I was over again. You've done it since then. I've done, it, done since it since then. Times since People then, are acting yeah. like Kiev's getting bombed. It did happen. You're right about it that. Did, I also, I uh, so do you think that I didn't cover? Of you Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you think that mm -hmm. I didn't cover Kiev getting bombed? Like I hid that or something? No, you did, but you, it's your accusation saying it doesn't, saying it won't happen. There's no way it'll happen. Yeah. Do you think that? Do you think that bombing Kiev specifically, well, it was what Russia did. Do you think that that was a good thing for Russia to do? I didn't say do you it think was that a it good was a thing? do you do you have any do you have any I genuine hope you opinions? Don't think it was a good thing. Do you have any genuine opinions about yeah, my opinion Russia's is that that was bad. In the Ukraine? My opinion, yeah, my opinion on that is that you shouldn't be talking about shit. Brother, you know hold about. up. You we're having a conversation about Ukraine and Russia. We're having a conversation about Ukraine and Russia, and I'm asking no, you a specific a question. You I'm asking you You're a specific conversation. question. My conversation's about you, because my videos are about you and your pattern of behavior and your poor reporting, and now <laughs> you're trying to shift it all these other ways because you know you can't face the truth. Russia had this, not bro. Russia had not bombed uh, Russia had not bombed Kiev at the time. That's number one. Duh. Number two, of, of course, as soon as that did happen, I covered it. Of course I did. Because Dude, the, that's the, what the, I'm the doing. The criticism isn't the that you didn't cover it. The criticism is that you're making baseless you're making baseless claims you don't know anything about, talking so confidently, as if you got a whole fucking research team behind you. When you don't, you're talking out your ass. This is the Brother, do you have a whole research team behind you? Because yeah, it's you're not me. I actually did research just now, and you could barely be patient enough to sit there and listen through it. You because had to go ahead it's, a, and go it's a video. You made a video a year ago about me talking about like yes. my opinion yes, on, on a, Russia and Ukraine. Reporting. You personally do not yes. have an opinion on Russia or Ukraine at all. I, I have taken I mean, accountability on my. I've taken accountability on the things that I've reported wrong. You should do the research. If I'm I've, not willing to I talk have about taken Trisha accountability Davis, on the things that research. I have reported Why are wrong you reporting on in wars when you can't do the Willie no script shit. listen to me I've taken accountability on the things that I have said that are incorrect of That's course on the editorial perspective on the editorial side of my coverage okay on the editorial side of my coverage if I make a prediction or a speculation it can sometimes be wrong that speculation is always going to be on foundational yeah, analysis when, that is solid. I got another one too. Hey, I got just more examples. Do you have an more, issue more with the, do you do you have an issue with my analysis of the situation? Because I can't possibly yes. do research on things that haven't happened yet. I can simply no, speculate. You just make it up. And you this entire Do you think when I say, "Guys, I don't think that Russia will bomb Kiev" is actually in my, in your opinion, like me making up something, or oh, do you no, think it's you're speculation? No, no, the clip is actually you talking really condescendingly about people who think that could happen. That's the clip. Okay, but you're, yeah, okay, you don't. Yeah, so is this you, all just tone policing? That? Is that what it is? What you're talking about? 
Is this all? This, so all of this is is just you personally tone policing the way I'm covering no, it's the not fucking totally news. Policing. It's about your. Do you have any reporting. genuine interest or any curiosity in like Russia and Ukraine at all, or, or is all you do fucking drama farming off of clips? Because over the course of this entire conflict, I've dedicated tens or hundreds of hours into my coverage, and the mm -hmm. analysis in and of itself comes from a solid foundation. Now, the predictions might be wrong, and it certainly yeah. was, which is something that I took accountability for, even though you said I had not. So you, here's you my really question didn't. to you. You then did just you did look the same into, mistake again. You did, did the you same look criticism into, again. Did you look into, okay, what sources I was looking at and where I was getting this opinion from? Yeah, because there were sources beyond, and beyond just like to, looking at beyond just like looking at YouTube clips and regurgitating talking points specifically that you've heard from other like neoliberal I mean, I commentators and what so point. neoliberal it's me. neoliberal it's commentators is the same fucking five clips that you are going to present Wait, you think, here. You think Destiny's and tone secretly behind this? Is this what and, you're crying about right now? Is this why you keep saying random does it shit? Sound, does it sound like I'm Yeah, I'm yeah, it does. You? you just said, yeah, it does. You're talking about stuff that doesn't matter. Brother, and you're trying you, to shift you the said, you away said. Away from the criticism, which is your poor reporting. You bring me on to debate. You oh. let me pick the debate topic, and now you won't engage. Okay. It's incredibly frustrating. I am, I am really trying, to, I really am trying to engage aside. with you. I am you trying are, to engage with you. About I'm trying stuff to engage that's not with important. you. I'm trying to that's engage with you in good faith as best as I possibly can. And all you've done so is far is myth. go through your YouTube video to be like, well, you said Kiev wasn't being bombed. Dude, and actually, said, it wasn't at the time. But then it got happen, bombed and afterwards. You, and now Listen, you're, let you're me finish. Okay, I'm going to mute you if you don't let me finish. Okay? Go for it. You said Kiev wasn't being bombed. At the time, it wasn't. Okay? And then you said, okay, well, guess what? Guess what, dude? Uh, your tone was off. Okay, well, my tone was it wasn't off. Your you don't tone. like it, it's the, but you it's haven't brought up, or you, I was being condescending. It's you haven't brought reporting. up the actual research or the actual analysis that led to these conclusions. Part of the reason why you haven't done that is because you have no idea what right. these sources are. <clears throat> Since you're just talking in circles on this, can I just go I'm, to the next one? I'm not talking in circles on this you whatsoever, are. but go ahead. Uh, let's talk about the next point. All uh, right, the next one. But the, but for the record, I am not clairvoyant. I cannot predict the future. I cannot predict the future. No, I, so know, I just you want should, to point that out. But you, you're, it's you talking on breaking news. Like, you know what the fuck's going to happen, and you don't. You're talking completely out of line. So, wait, all right, wait, the wait, 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 Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Can I just go to the next point? Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. My speculation on what may happen, okay, in the future is not always going to be correct. Everybody understands this. usually wrong, yeah. It's usually wrong. The only it's example you brought you said over the CIA is why I ran bombed the U.S. Do you base, bro. do you know how many do you know how many hours protesters are do you know how many hours Israelis is because it's a psyop to make Palestinians look bad. Wait, hold <laughs> like, on, hold on, hold on, hold do. on. What what base are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about with the Iranian thing. What? Uh, Iran struck a U.S. base, and then you said it's the CIA. No shot. It's the CIA. P complete because uh because you're like know, oh man. there's a nuclear deal why would iran do that no way no way no shot no shot 100 percent confidence iran then takes credit for it and then you cope mauled and seethe to your audience wait I i'm so i know you I, don't know because you see so much bullshit all the time you can't even yeah, remember what perhaps 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 the reason for why you uh are are maybe the reason why I'm confused and the reason why you're a little bit confused on this mm -hmm. is because in every single circumstance that every single thing that you've brought up, there's almost always a correction that comes after the fact you on the other hand, do not see the correction or you on the other hand, see the no, 30 second, the 30 second to, to two minute, 30 like second to two minute videos, which is enough for you to try and develop a consistent Dude, this narrative. This is from your whole live stream, by the way. I'm watching everything uh, in context. This is Cope from you saying that this is out of context. The same shit Andrew Tate does and the red pillars do to me, claiming everything's out of context when it's not. That was your opinion at the time. You said those words. They brother, came out of your own mouth. Go can do I, the research. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something really quickly? Whoa. Okay. One. Mm -hmm. This is this is important for you to for you to comprehend. I'm sure. Do you do you think that uh, over the course of thousands of hours, thousands of hours of coverage, okay, thousands of hours yeah. of coverage, 
especially when something is like being immediately brought to my attention. Okay. Mm -hmm. Immediately brought to my attention, which I don't even know what you're talking about, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I know. Really, you just, I don't, you I don't so exactly. I don't remember what you're talking about. Mind. But during the over the course of thousands of hours of coverage, when I, for example, read something in the chat and respond to it, okay, do you think that this is like reporting, is or do you think that I'm giving like immediate commentary? Breaking news you cover. This isn't a random chat comment. This is breaking news that's happening. Okay. I, I think what most people that. you should do what most people do and what, wait what is, for the story to be out there before you start spurging out okay. making wild accusations here can i go to the next one can, yeah uh you need to limit your uh you know tos uh worthy takes here this isn't fucking youtube what is, or whatever what is my TO, what tos did it, i break it, you can't use you unfortunately i know and and i used to do this in the past as well you can't use ableist language but go oh, on Oh, like the r word i got you my bad. yeah okay um <clears throat> i'm glad that you're so, a fan uh, though well, yeah, I don't, I don't, you, you know, for, this is, this is, this is both, this is your job. I don't want to okay. ruin that. Um, so for instance, like the missile hit the Gosnell hospital, both sides blamed each other. That's mm -hmm. the breaking news, right? And yeah. instead of waiting for more information, you hmm. jump to conclusions saying it was 100% Israel. 100%. Okay. You were so good. Confident. Good you point. Were all the chatters. Good point. Good point. Can I ask you a question? Can I go through the whole thing before you I, go? No, 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 no. Hold before on. We this get is off important. Topic this is important. Real. I have a no, no. We're not jumping. We're talking about this. Okay? okay, we're talking about this specific thing. Finally, now we're talking about Israel and Palestine. When I said that, I didn't just go, "Oh, I have no other opinion on this matter. I simply think Israel definitely did this because I want Israel to have definitely done this." The reason mm -hmm. why I said this, and you do this regularly. Okay, when I say something on this stream, okay. Oftentimes, especially if it's Did a you developing the video? story, like, how do you know I say this stuff? Especially if it's a developing story, when I say something on uh, on an issue that is happening, I look to all of the circumstantial evidence on the matter, and I look to everything else that is going on thus far. Now, let we're we're two adult individuals here. Do you think? Do you think mm -hmm. it is unfair to say? Israel blew up the the uh, hospital. Like Israel bombed the hospital. I think when there when there's a claim like that, you wait for information, right? I mean, there's okay. a million things. The to information is that there's the information million, like, is I that talk? there was. Can I respond? There's a million say? things okay. to criticize the IDF for. That's right out there, right? You know this. Mm -hmm. I've seen you do it all day on stream. You mm -hmm. get them on, on on shit that they 100 percent deserve. But when there's something like that. And instead of waiting for reports, while the re the report is literally Israel and Hamas blame each other, right? You don't know what the story is. You don't okay. know if they did it or not. And you say 100%, they 100% did it. That's hugely, that's a huge disaster, bro. That's like- At the point, at that point, the that. first of all, we, do you think, who do you think blew up the, the hospital? Like uh, the hospital courtyard, rather. Who do you think uh, bombed the hospital courtyard? I think most investigations- point towards it being uh, either the Islamic Jihad or Hamas, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a misfired rocket. Mm -hmm. And then what you did in response to that mm -hmm. was instead of being like, yeah, I, I think since most of the reports are going this way. Why do you, I why do you like, think it's, I, wait, wait, hold on. Why do you think it's a Hamas or Islamic Jihad and a rocket misfire? Well, that was just what most of the investigations turned out. So I know Channel 4 had a different one. Because you're, yeah. you're bringing this up and this is really important to understand. One. All of the is circumstantial it, you say that evidence every time, but it never is. Okay, all of the circumstantial evidence at the time, of course, after the six thousand bombs that Israel had dropped on Gaza, a densely populated open air prison, uh, yes. the six thousand and first bomb, understandably, was going to be the, an Israeli bomb. To this day, we still do not know whether this was an Islamic Jihad rocket that was misfired or whether or not this was actually right, an, an artillery shell right. that might have hit a fuel tank yeah. or even. And or even, or even, some other kind of munition that so, Israel so may have deployed. So why did you say it was now the reason why Israel and then call everyone genocidal because, freaks that disagree with you? Because you don't actually you watch the content beyond you demonize them. Because first of all, because they That's are like you do every time, because the Israeli the government you is genocidal. What the fuck are this you talking your, about, you dumb fuck? Four thousand five hundred children have been ruthlessly oh, slaughtered. You think that's not genocidal? Again. Yeah, shift the topic again oh, the to one hospital might. Say. Wait, wait, Willie, Willie, shut the fuck up and listen, dumbass. Yeah, do you yeah, really no, think? Do, do you really think that if one fucking hospital wasn't bombed by Israel and this was a yes. this was a fucking uh, actual misfire that all of a sudden means that like 
Well, that's that, that all of a sudden means that like Israel's not doing ethnic cleansing right now. You're doing it in real time, dude. It's just hilarious. fucking answer my question. Do you I think? Said. Do you think that mm -hmm. the ethnic cleansing campaign, if you take out the 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 bombing, okay? Yeah. You if you take out the ho the one time that this hospital's bombed, okay? If you take that out, do you think out of the equation? Do you think Israel is is all of a sudden not doing ethnic cleansing in Gaza? No, that's not what I said. Look, this is what you're trying. to I'm make asking me you. Say. I'm I asking you. Okay, then then no. then. I just said no. And <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Dude, dude, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. Okay. So what's your reports? And, okay. And it got, it. got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. No. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Reports. Got it. And you Willie. go ahead and, and they side with it. You Willie. Then continue to call them Willie. genocidal, even though that's the fact of the info. Willie. That's what most of the info says. When I when I cover these, you kinds ignore of the stories, news, bro. That's the point. You just like lie I don't. and come up with your. I don't ignore the news. You ignore the rest of the fucking coverage because on the day of the hospital bombing, I personally uh -huh. said, okay, that the highest likelihood of this hospital being bombed is from no, you also Israel. said it was 100%. Just shut the fuck up and That's listen, you okay? Did, bro. Shut up yeah, yeah, no, and keep listen. Keep shifting the goalpost. Keep listen, I'm shit. not shifting the fucking goalpost. It's my own you coverage. Are. I'm giving you additional feedback. If you actually genuinely cared about the truth instead of fucking clip chimping and drama farming, you would it's understand that on that it's same like right day, on that same day, video. On that same day, over and over again, I said the highest probability of this is that this is mm -hmm. an Israeli bombing campaign. Part of the reason why I said that, you also and I, said that and I the also mentioned multiple times after the investigation. I also which mentioned the investigations don't agree with you. I also you still mentioned down multiple on that times. I also mentioned multiple times. We just again ignore what I said, dude. Just listen to what I'm saying. Well, you're I, saying know it's I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't correspond. Saying, well, like you, no, it's not irrelevant awful. because because you're, you're making a video. You're making a video to massage right. a certain narrative it. to create a certain narrative. It's a okay? true narrative. It's like to create a certain narrative. Right. And that narrative, when it doesn't correspond to the narrative you're trying to make, when it doesn't correspond to the narrative you're trying to make, you go, "Oh, it's irrelevant." Of course, it's not irrelevant. Do you think that my coverage of this bombing? is irrelevant why are you fucking no, making a video actually, about a 30 second sliver of the content jumped, if you don't actually you jump to conclusions and now you're saying yeah i, I did but like look at this one point eight hours in willie after I said it was willie, 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 willie it's not eight hours in it's not eight hours in it's not eight hours in it is not eight hours in what it will it take for you to go okay mm -hmm. you know what i was actually wrong he actually had a much more even-handed approach to the subject matter if or have you already was, made your preconceived yeah. biases uh, no, and, and you're not. simply like looking facts. to reinforce it's them? The facts of what happened and you have yet to disprove it. If my criticism is real, I said on the day of the bombing, Willie, Willie, what have you done to Willie, disprove that? You I said on the day of the bombing, on the day yes. of the bombing, I yes, said. Yes, like the most hilarious the, part. Like it's the, the day only, this is breaking news and yes. you jump to the conclusion that's 100%. You're right. After 6,000 bombs, the 6,001st bomb, I should have been like, guys, hold out. on. Let's not, let's not you talk about this. just call everybody genocidal. Shut the fuck up and listen. Shut up and listen, dumbass. Go on. Listen. Oh, go on. Okay, thank you. Holy fuck. You're just simply proving how bad faith you are and you don't give a shit. I'm not. Yes, you're I'm covering not the fucking news. You don't yes, engage. I'm covering the news. In yes. America, in America, when in we have like way. mass shootings and whatnot happening, I have a policy of usually not diving headfirst into that news coverage because it is not the you same as the consistent that. war coverage. The only reason why I usually talk about whatever kind of breaking story is happening, this Can is not the same for Israel and it's shooter, not the same like for Ukraine. Shooter? Wasn't your stream titled at the listen, day of the Listen to me, I mean, listen to me. Here? The only thing I cover in situations like that is whatever the mainstream media's uh, whatever mainstream media has reported on, oftentimes we just simply look at the live stream of the police force when they are talking about how many victims are there. That's it. Now, having said that, having said that, is that the case for uh, Israel? No, it's not. Is that the case for Ukraine? No, it's not. And it wasn't, okay? And in that circumstance, there are times where, of course, I'm going to get certain things wrong. But this is an eight-hour news coverage. If you yeah, look at a 30-second, if you look at a 30-second broadcast, the criticism. It's not 30 seconds. You keep saying that. It's okay, not 30 seconds. If you look seconds. at a five-minute portion of a fucking, you, you're, you're fucking brother, like, brother, you're brother, 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 brother. You're not listening to what I'm by, saying. By Israel. On the Gaza very same bombed by Israel, 800 people dead. That was your stream. What okay. did I do to title it that? I didn't do okay. that. Okay. I didn't clip that out of Can you please listen to me? 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 Can you please listen to me?
What will I have to show you for you to own up to this criticism? Okay, because you're not listening to what I'm trying to say. First of all, I never said what you're saying is irrelevant. You're just going on about random shit. Okay, I was literally repeating what the BBC coverage was. Not only that, but also, but also because like I don't have I don't have a direct on the ground. I wasn't. Was the did the BBC? Hold on, I'm I may be I might have this wrong. All right, did the BBC see say it was 100 percent Israel when they blamed each other? The BBC's original assessment, yes, was that it was most likely an Israeli bombing. Most, yeah, but they blamed each other in investigations. No, 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 no. That was literally the when, reason why they had to rescind when, the coverage. The that was the reason the why day. they had to rescind the coverage and apologize for it. But also, oh what you're failing, you didn't do your research. Shut the fuck up. What you're also failing to, <laughs> what you're also failing to fucking comprehend here in your dense ass mm -hmm. mind is that once again, and I repeat myself, I said, here is what I will believe. Yourself. Here is what I will believe. If there is a third party investigation, given the the fact that Israel has lied routinely about the bombing campaign and specifically had in that very same morning, the Israeli Air Force said we had no I mean, bombing campaigns happening in the region. Investigations. We have no bombing. Just listen. OK, we have no, no bombing campaigns say, in the region, right. which was a lie. They were bombing in that region, actually, as a matter of fact. That's number one. Number two, Israel also. Israel also personally brought forward inconsistent testimony, inconsistent statements as to why this was definitely an Islamic Jihad rocket, okay? And the reason why we're having this conversation and how it's so fucking stupid, okay, it's so insanely idiotic, is because Israel is currently, while we're having this conversation, sieging the main hospital in Gaza. Israel, yeah. at that point, had blow had. 420 medical incidents, according to the World Health, World Health Organization. If you get your fucking news through clips, you are not going to understand why I said what I said, including that unless there is an actual third party on the ground investigation, I will, of course, believe, given the circumstantial evidence mounted, that this is yet another Israeli bomb or uh, some type of Israeli munitions, that I'm going to assume that, yes, Israel blew up this hospital you know, just like it had blown up the cancer ward at that very same hospital two days prior. Did it's you see good. that part of the coverage? And no, you, you didn't. You know what you're doing right now and what you just did, all right? I criticized you for jumping to conclusions, right? Which, by the way, a lot of streamers didn't. A lot of new streamers didn't. Right, I would I would have been down to make videos on them. Some did, but a lot didn't. Right? No, you wouldn't, dumbass. You, you, you only you do this because it gets you fucking views. You don't you, give a shit about Israel. Did, all you did was justify the bad, like justify why Israel you be claimed able to that the BBC badly. was doing modern you blood libel. Talk. This is what you just said. All you did right there was justify why you should be able to report things badly. And then you dismissed it all saying, well, Israel's attacking Gaza right now, so none of it matters if I got it wrong. Because, what you of just course, did. it's fucking because embarrassing. the point that you're trying it's to argue here without actually no, saying it. The point it. is that you should just wait and fucking do a good job reporting. Why are you dog, jumping to conclusions, dog, making the concrete statements you know nothing about? That's the same okay. criticism. You haven't I'm gonna disproved lose my that mind. at all. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Listen to me. I'm okay? losing my mind, bro, because it's just First like of all, constant, uh, one, you're holding you're holding me to a you. fucking higher standard than the fucking BBC, which the which the Israeli no, government not. said was they blood libel apologized. for they arriving at the same fuck. They you know why I didn't apologize? You know why I didn't bad. apologize? You haven't done that. You, you want to know why I didn't apologize? You want to know why I didn't apologize? Do you care? Do you care? Do you do you want it? Do you want me to tell you why I didn't apologize? Because I know why you didn't apologize because you never do. You always double down no, or I, ship the gold. Wait, goes. I don't apologize. This is, this is I don't apologize. Do. That's you crazy because you said I never goes. apologized about being wrong about Ukraine, but I did. Yeah, and you yeah. fucking and you, lied and said that, oh, you well, made, actually, lie. you were just it's, backing it's away. Very consistent. I'm very consistent with it. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you're you, consistently wrong, you mm -hmm. dense fuck. Listen. I haven't. You don't even watch the videos. How would you know if Why I'm wrong? Why would I watch you your dumbass watch drama video. farming videos? You don't give a shit about anything. Hey, hey, you don't give a shit about this conflict. Right here, you don't give a shit about this beyond it pushing your fucking you, personal... You not watching my videos is the same level of reporting that you give Israel and Gaza. It's the same level of reporting okay, that you give okay. Ukraine. I'm going to be honest with you. Reporting. I'm going to be honest you know, you with you. If you think... minimum effort in. And just you are revealing, just you're revealing it. how stupid you are by claiming that watching a fucking YouTube video is the same as like reading news reports no, and talking to on the, the ground journalists you, and forensic analysts. No, I'm not. I'm saying you won't even do the bare minimum and you won't even do it for a drama video. I'm losing my fucking mind. Why would I, I care about it. your drama video, dumb fuck? Yeah, you do. That's why you invited me on. And I invited like you on. Coping. I invited you on because I thought that you genuinely had 
a perspective that it was at odds with mine on Israel Palestine. You yeah, said, never mind. Oh, it's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about my Israel videos Palestine? that I've made on you. So can now we're stuck having this fucking stupid conversation. I, yeah, you when I do, cover you shit like this, the bit would be about if you just watch the video. Willie, of course, Willie, classic okay. Journalism. All right, I'll ask you. Journalism. I'll ask you questions. I'll ask you questions. In your mm -hmm. video, do you, I don't know, at any point bring up any of the resources that I'm using, like including the BBC, which you yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, I showed the tweet you used. Yeah, I did. I showed the tweet, tweet you used of a missile striking the ground going, doesn't that look like a JDAM? That actually that, looks a lot yeah. like a JDAM. That's, yeah. that's your epic reporting. Those oh are your God. epic sources, bro. Yes. Um, <laughs> My epic sources. That was the only yeah. verified video of the strike at the time. What I are you know, talking about? like you're. A Do you know where I got that? Though. Like you know how to. Do you know where I got that video all? from? Do you know where I got that video from? Where? The Washington Post. That's where I got that video from. Yeah, but you don't know how to interpret what that missile is. That's really just, interesting you say that because at the time I was talking. Yeah, at no the time, clue. that's really interesting because is, at the time I was at the time. I was I know, at the time you talking you, to, to I was talking to open you. source Again, intelligence people and also forensic analysts. That's what I was doing. And I still do when I'm reporting on this kind of thing, especially when it's outside of my immediate like expertise or whatever. Yeah. I go to people that are making real time assessments. One of the things that I'm sure you didn't mention was the geo confirmed Twitter thread, the geo confirmed Twitter thread that originally uh, was was incredibly viral. Pointed Does to this, this all being exonerate you for jumping to conclusions. No, dumbass. Like yeah, Over so the course the of eight hours, so I am parsing topic. through misinformation. You're shifting the topic. Over to the no, I'm not. Things. I'm not shifting. You know what? We're you're, still you're talking about this bombing. We're still talking about this bombing. By the way, hold on. Can we move on? Because this is just circles. You're just. Wait, whoa, 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 No, we're not fucking moving on just because you feel okay, like this conversation is is completely out of your fucking depth because you only look at it's clips. Very basic. The conversation because you only is, look at clips. You jump to Listen. conclusions, and now, then you jump to conclusions, and now you justify why you. One should thing be able that I do. do that. One thing that I do is. in breaking news stories is to parse through. Okay, all of the information that is accumulating online that is going viral. I do this mm -hmm. for specifically for, for uh, you know, whenever there's a mass shooter and some fucking psychotic right wing uh, weirdo will turn around and be like, oh, the mass shooter actually is trans or whatever the fuck, right? Sure. Now, in this circumstance, I can't believe we're still talking about this, by the way, because every know, single, you don't, you every single information, every single piece of information that Israel as the official account has brought forward has been an abject lie Hassan, I got a question, that have bro. been disproven by the very same authorities that you claim uh, are are uh, totally on board, okay? Are, are uh, totally uh, totally saying like, no, 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 it, it definitely has to be an Islamic Jihad rocket. Every single person, every single person I've talked to, every them. single it's person their, I've talked to from forensic way. analysts that work at, uh, that work at the New York Times, that work at Washington Post, all the way to open source intelligence uh, analysts that I talk to from a broad variety of different ideological backgrounds, the conversations that we had revolved around some of the other open source intelligence community members basically fucking bringing forward incredibly stupid conclusions like how this massive casualty-inducing uh, rocket that was actually a cause of, a, of an intercepted missile that fell on the hospital. Every single, every single point that was brought forward in the immediate aftermath of the hospital was actually completely incorrect. But you didn't make a video about that. You made a video no, about me. Not, because if you made a video, because if you made a video, video about you, yes, you finally because, get it. Stop. About listen, you, listen, let me finish. You didn't Go make on. a video about Geo confirmed and how viral his fucking thread was. You didn't make a video about how wrong most of the news outlets were for directly reporting right. what the fuck because the directly reporting about you. what the fuck Israel directly reporting what the fuck Israel says as though it's God's honest truth. Okay. I don't report they got that, everything actually. wrong on that subject. But guess what, dude? They Did got they everything wrong. But, you didn't, but there was no Willie Mac video on that. Because Did why would you make it? it? Hold on. Did they correct it? Wait. Did they correct it? They no, they haven't. They haven't? They've just doubled down on it? No, I'm talking about all of the fucking false testimony that they brought forward about how Israel 
Most of these outlets that literally just repeated whatever the fuck Israel said to... just went along with it because it goes along with the overarching narrative. Right, but I okay? but how come how come I got to make a video on them just because I made a video on you? Like, because you said, sense. wait, hold on. In the beginning of this conversation, you literally said, if someone else had gotten information wrong, I would have done a video on them too. But only no, you no, got no, the information I wrong. That. If I made a you video say on that. somebody, if you I made say a that. video on you said somebody that. else. You said right, those exact correct, words. Let me correct you because that's a ridiculous statement, right? But you did say that. All, if you care I mean, about misinformation, maybe you should, I don't know, make the next video about IDF and all the times that they fucking lied about every but, single bombing look, campaign. So you're saying because I made a video on you, I now got to make a video on Israel? Like, no, you don't have to do anything. About, but you can't also ridiculous. maintain a position that you care about the truth and honesty in journalism. Like you're a fucking Gamergate holdout being like, oh, I care about the ethics in video game but journalism. I, That's why we have to dox these fucking female journalists or some shit. I didn't dox anybody, bro. What are you talking I about? I didn't say that. I'm using, do you know what a fucking analogy is, dumb fuck? Yeah, hey, I got a question. If I go ahead and uh, let's say like you you referenced in that big, long, rambly rant that lasted like five minutes, right? You referenced that you later in the stream got a story right and that I, I should have talked about that because you covered some things right. <sighs> Does that mean I can't criticize you for when you're wrong? No, of course you can. About? The entire point is framing something incorrectly. If there's eight hours of coverage on a particular matter, and throughout that coverage, I'm actually personally this talking about how the red line I would draw is on the ground. If there is an on-the-ground investigation where they look at ground soil analysis, one factor of the forensic analysis on mm -hmm. whether or not this was a misfire is actually seeing the 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 impact right you have to the, look at the, the crater criticism and the crater the in and of itself immediately once once the dust settled and we saw the crater i said while i originally yeah, looked at like the really while i originally looked it. at the you video can i please explain what's happening yeah. here or yeah, or do on. you just are you just in here to fucking uh, cry okay well it sucks because you're going out about irrelevant stuff okay it's not relevant my you if your ultimate statement is that my claims are baseless then you yeah. haven't done your research My because none of this is based. You jumped baseless. to conclusions. You jumped Brother, to conclusions. Of course, yeah. I jumped to the same conclusions that, that the BBC up. did too, and I also right, said but they corrected it. You don't. no, but you're failing to understand. Is I even on the same day immediately after this said I might be wrong on this, and if I'm wrong, here is how I will be disproven. Okay, if mm -hmm. somehow we end up having an impact crater analysis and soil analysis to see what kind of munitions was used in this process. And it is consistent with an Islamic Jihad rocket because we know what kind of rockets they have. And this most likely, and I said this the day of as well, was a possible batter rocket, the BADR rocket, okay, that Islamic Jihad does have. If that is the case... If that is the, the case, only way then the ground soil, the ground, yes, chemical testing on the ground okay. would prove that to be, prove that to be true. Hamas mm -hmm. also, and I brought this up as well, which I thought was suspicious, could not find anything beyond the impact crater, could not find a possible shrapnel from the missile because the missile doesn't perish. Okay. So what I said is in situations like this, and I showed like an earlier uh, event like yeah, this where Israel had four. lied. Okay. In situations like this, usually they will bring forward a piece of the fucking missile. Okay. If you're engaging in this, if you're engaging my content in good faith, you would have seen all of this. I don't just like repeat whatever fucking thing I'm uh, uh, thinking about out of my ass. You okay? do all the time. That's what that's the video. That's not you true because I'm, well, I'm you telling you. the video. Dude, hold on. In the same stream. I'm telling you, so I'm telling you certain, where, where my analysis you, comes from. Chris, talking to. you reframe this entire thing. Brother, you have literally complained here about one hospital bombing. One hospital bombing that no, is it's still not, it's not proven. One hospital bombing that is still this. not proven to be an Islamic Jihad rocket. Know, by you, saying third party forensic. Say 100%, and then everybody who says otherwise, you were calling genocidal. I still think. That's what you did on stream. That's what yeah, you did. I did, I mean, I did do the, that the because they are. Right if you're defending Israel, you are genocidal. Right. But if you just, if you simply. Wait, do you think, do you think defending, report. okay, let's if talk about that. Do you think defending Israel, do you think report, defending Israel's you, actions, look how, do you look think, how you're doing this now, you're now saying okay, I'm because you, you brought up a new point, you brought up a new point, we're moving on, we're not going to watch your shit ass video, you brought up a new point. I know, because you don't you want, think, you don't want you the think, actual truth. Okay, do you think, do you think what Israel is engaging in is ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement in Gaza right now?
You do. Yeah. Great. Okay. Do you think defending this ethnic cl- cleansing and ethnic displacement campaign would be defending genocidal acts uh, then in your own assessment? Yeah. Okay. So we agree. All right. Got it. Thank you. I know the criticism is your reporting. It's not that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got it, got it. You care more about. uh, I care care about. about I care about doing a good job because you. You got it. You do. I'm glad we agree on it at least. I'm glad we agree on it. I'm glad we agree on it. Okay, okay. Move on. Uh, Next, uh, next, next point. Are you just gonna like? Should I now bring up the next point? I don't know what yeah, the yeah. fucking points are. Go or, or are you going to go on more about like a relevant... And here, by the way, problem. for those... for for, If you don't know, um, we do have an automatic Fossabot timer usually uh, for, for uh, breaking news, especially when it comes to like mass shootings, which includes the main mass shooting, which you claimed uh, I was covering immediately or whatever. Yeah, you, it covered, was you covered the same day, didn't you? Uh, I don't remember if I did, but if I did, it was I specifically I just the did. police. Uh, it was probably just uh, the whatever the police testimony was at the time. Um, okay. But here is the Fossabot from that day, for the record. Uh, get automatically timing out someone who is trying to bring this up. So anyway. your chat's not allowed to talk about it, but you talk about it. No, chat is talking about it so I can actually talk about it myself. And this was the day after. No, I, I actually didn't cover okay. the, the main shooting at all that day. And I barely talked about that the next day, as a matter of fact. Okay, fair enough, then. I haven't, I haven't watched those streams. Okay. Um, I don't think you watch a lot of the streams because if I, you did, well, you would I understand where a lot of my analysis is coming from and you wouldn't be fucking making erroneous really claims analysis, like this. Bro. You kind of do do bro politics and just shoot from the hip. I'm sorry. Okay. I, okay. Got it. What, what kind of politics do you watch or what kind of politics do you actually engage with then? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I have, I have a style news. that wait, I, I don't get it. I have, I have a style that you don't like. Okay. The end that doesn't. Yeah. But it's you. The style is you being wrong about stuff. The style is about you doing wrong. Like, it's the same criticism. I, we're just going to talk in circle again. Dude, do you feel like you radicalize your audience when you say when you get stuff wrong on these reporting, this sort of reporting? Explain. I would love to hear what you so mean So, like, this. for instance, like, uh, uh, you and Ethan on, like, Israel, right? He, he's uh-huh. 100% seems in, like he sympathizes with the Palestinians, right? Yeah, 100%. I agree Comes with on that. stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that good stuff. Okay. Um, But then when he goes ahead and he's, like, saying stuff like, Dude, your whole chat's calling me racist. Your whole chat's calling me a genocidal freak, right? Are you going to do anything about that? Mm-hmm. You don't. And the reason why they do that is because you said It's really interesting you say that. Um, do you, do you think... Talk, you won't. Let me finish. Every single day up I, until that very moment. No, every single I'm day. Going. Every single day up okay, until that very ahead. moment, I told my community. Yeah, if you I'd actually did too. watch Beyond the Clips, you would know that every single day, every single day, since the Leftovers broadcast, including the immediate mm-hmm. aftermath of the Leftovers broadcast, the first time we talked at the Leftovers, uh, at the H3HU studio, I told my community that Ethan is sympathetic to Palestinians and that he is not your enemy. To yell at him in this situation would be fucking fruitless, ridiculous. Plenty of people try to find drama. We even the reason why we your even, audience does it is because hold you on, do it to you asked me, else. you asked me what yeah, kind of community finish. cultivation I, I engage you in. Off. You didn't even know what I was going to ask because you cut me off. Okay, go That's ahead. That's what you fucking did. Okay, go ahead. I, I'm being very rude to my guest, by the way, but go on. I'm sorry, Felix. Am I your guest? Who's your guest? All right, I was just saying, do you feel like you radicalize your audience because your audience calls no, Ethan racist, about me. Even, even though he's pro-Palestinian, mm-hmm. right? And the reason why they do that is because whenever anybody just reports like a basic, you know, a basic fact, like Israel likely didn't do the, the Gaza hospital bomb, uh-huh. right? Your response is to freak out and call that chatter genocidal mm-hmm. and say that they hate all Arabs. Mm-hmm. So that's um, why they do you feel like you're radicalizing them to do it? I mean, they do it for a reason. Do you, they do you, it. Are you taking, um, are you in your uh, own assessment here, taking things out of context over the course of an eight hour broadcast where no, you think maybe. it's all maybe, in context. It's all so, in context. No, you don't know you the gotta, context. You got to prove to because me that you can look at a, Because you can look at a fucking banning that is occurring on a stream and not recognize that that banning is happening because it might be a sock account. That banning might be happening because someone is bad faith. Is that irrelevant. banning might be happening because. I'm sorry. We're talking about how I cultivate my community and how I moderate my community. How the fuck is no, me no. telling you how I moderate yeah, my community irrelevant? Everything it seems say, that I'll goes repeat. against whatever narrative you want to frame is irrelevant in your opinion. Uh, so yeah, I'll, no wonder you want me to just did, watch the fucking YouTube question. video and sit in the goddamn shadows. My Everything is irrelevant. My, You're asking me question questions about how I operate. This is supposed to be your research. This is supposed to be your research, isn't it? 
Are you not supposed to be doing fucking research right now on your your subject matter? So what's irrelevant? You're asking, you, I, hold on. I just said, are you radicalizing your audience? And then you went on a rant about sock accounts. That's not relevant. No, because I'm talking about how I cultivate and how I moderate my community. The entire conversation is within the framework of how I moderate my community. And what I told you is you don't have any understanding of why I'm banning who, for what reason, you're just watching in small increments without recognizing no, it's not small. that in a you political- it to be that way, it's not. I have entire streams downloaded. It's your whole stream. Okay, that, it's, like, that I, I still doesn't matter because that. you don't know why we make moderation decisions. That's why you were wrong on the fucking shooting and in why Maine. Did, why have you That's not, why you why were wrong you on the Maine shooting that, too because you can't racist. comprehend what is going on behind the fucking scenes. So <laughs> why don't you ask me if you're if I'm your subject matter here, which you didn't it even seems you watch all the fucking bro. streams, instead of making up your own mind about how these streams go. You just change the subject. What? I'm not changing the subject. You radicalize your audience and Ethan's the example. Why are you going on about banning why you ban people and making do it you, sound so complicated do when you it's think not. i'm do you think i'm radicalizing my community against ethan when i told no, you no, time and time I, I again that i have i have kept my community i have in check to repeat over what i say again. for a third time because it's very straightforward brother you, you ask me questions i answer you don't like the answer because it goes no, against your narrative your that you're trying to fucking fulfill and then you go answer. well uh, it's irrelevant it's not irrelevant i'm answering you about a and you give me number three it's like completely a different fucking thing I say, Hassan, can we, let's do run. And you go, I swim. It's not fucking relevant. It is absolutely relevant. It's no, absolutely so I, relevant. You ahead, do you, you not think, people. do you not you think cr- that my moderation is what we're talking about? You literally no, brought up we're Ethan. Talking, we're talking, what we're talking about is you attack people that talk about the facts, right? Like you go ahead and you're like, you're a genocidal freak, facts. blah, 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 or, or, or opinions. It could be facts or opinions, right? Uh-huh. When it comes do you know to, how many uh, people? Do you know how many people we it, ban you, again, on a daily basis? Hearing the question. Okay, go ahead. Because you're not fucking a- a- asking a question. You're just like ranting. Go on. Sorry, I'm sorry. Give me your. All right, uh, I'll keep the question take. short. Yeah. When you criticize chatters by calling them genocidal freaks for having opinions that really are pretty nuanced, right? On a subject that is fairly nuanced, right? What are you? Why are you surprised? Or you shouldn't be surprised that your chatters do that to Ethan. Like you're the one that radicalized them into doing that. They're doing it to Ethan because you do it. If to my word, else. if my word is so gold that a chatter is repeating what I'm saying <laughs> in a moment's notice, then why are they not repeating what I'm saying or hearing what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, when I tell them over and over again every single day since Ethan and I had a leftovers uh, had our leftovers broadcast that Ethan is actually an anti-Zionist, why don't that he's you sympathetic them, to then? the Palestinian plight. You ban that- everybody that links my video. Why don't you ban Wait. them for doing that to Ethan? We wait. What we literally had Ethan as a as a blocked word for straight up weeks at a time. Yeah, but what why not fix about? the problem? The problem is they're calling him racist. Not that wait, Ethan's wait, a bad wait, guy. wait, wait, wait. I just told you how I personally said mm-hmm. time and time again every single day whenever a chatter tried to bring it up, whether they were drama farming or whether yeah. they were whether they were genuinely concerned with something that they misunderstood from Ethan's perspective. And Mm -hmm. even in that same conversation that I had with Ethan, that I believe that he's a very empathetic person and that I believe that he cares about Palestinian people as my co-host. I said this time and time again. Okay. Here's the, here's the question for you beyond that. What, what other uh, mechanisms of control do you want me to to uh, bring forward, or are you just engaging in bad faith? Language. Because I do, and you I don't. did. Yes, I did. I told my own moderators because you don't know this. Again, I after Ethan saw your the, moderators are the one doing it. By the way, like your mods are. Yeah, I went back and looked at what they had said things. as well. By the way, for the record, I know that I know that you said this. Okay, uh, I love that. Oh, the so most you did watch common, my video. No, I know that. What do you oh. mean? No, I didn't watch your video at all. Why are you getting so fucking excited? I'm saying you just, you just mentioned something. You said you oh, saw okay, that. Okay, my I bad. Did this. I I I misspoke. I apologize. This is something that this is something that every single person has brought up in this situation, including Ethan. Even brought up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus Christ, you got excited. Okay. Anyway. No, I was I was pumped because I thought you you were a secret Willie Mac yeah. fan. No, uh, I, I did not watch your video, and I most likely will not watch your videos. But anyway, listen, listen, listen. Um, 
First of all, I'm not a journalist. I've never said I'm a journalist. You when do, I talk you about you do, you do reports from the ground, bro. That's what you said. Wait, when I said I do reports from the ground, where yeah. where is that from? Uh, do you do you have a do you have a clip? Oh, yeah, 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 it's before. It's why me? you said you wouldn't go on Piers Morgan. Can you send me? Can you send me the clip? Because I think it's probably sure. a miscommunication. Like I've never said I do on the ground reporting. If I said that, I probably misspoke. I mean, it's more be me being facetious, but if you want to watch it, we can watch it. Let's do it. Oh, you're being, oh, so you're admitting that you are, Everyone are knows lying and a, saying that I'm an on-the-ground reporter. You just sit in your fucking house. Everybody knows you don't actually report from the ground. Yeah, I, yeah, which is why I would never say that. So I don't know why. You so did wait. say that though. That's what's, what, that's what's funny. I probably was talking about how I work with on-the-ground reporters. I don't personally engage in on-the-ground reporting, so it probably was a, a, a moment where I misspoke. I've never okay. said that I do on-the-ground reporting. Yeah, I know, I know. No, everyone knows you don't actually do on-the-ground reporting. Wait, so why did you bring that up then? I was just giving you shit. Wait, so I don't understand. So where is your supposedly, quote-unquote, journalistic integrity in this situation? So it's like... So I mean, it's a video do... that's also entertaining. So sometimes I'm just making fun of you, and other times it oh, is actually okay, a serious allegation. All right, got it. I mean, yeah, you make no, jokes I wasn't... on stream. I mean, yeah, I, I do. Which then you apparently, or if I misspeak, apparently you fucking use it in your commentary as though it's like super serious. So uh, anyway, I didn't name one example that I did that. I don't know. I, I don't do want that? your videos. So yeah, so I... don't don't make shit up. Here's a classic example. Don't make shit up. You just said you I just fucking say I'm 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 reporting on the ground when we both know I didn't. Exactly right. And also. On top of that, you literally started the conversation by saying you never apologize for fucking being wrong about Russia invading you Ukraine. You usually double the down fuck? or shift the goalpost is what you do. That's what? That's not true. Yeah. I literally that's, dude, said. That's just what we talked about for the last like hour, bro. None of this Come was on. shifting the goalposts. You just don't like it. That's it. You want me you to be wrong. That's it. You don't want you, you want me to be wrong. That's question. why you keep saying you shift the goalposts. Can, the question I asked you was, do you feel like your audience acts that way towards Ethan because you act like that towards everybody else and you just go on about moderation? Okay, if my audience is acting that way towards Ethan, okay, but do you feel I, like it's but my audience, so they're so they're getting their they're getting their points for me, they're getting their anger for me. So yes. why don't they hear me out when I talk about how Ethan is not because someone you that you should be that yelling at at all? Having a different position has to be genocidal. Oh, got it. That's so, fine. like, they don't listen. So, they don't listen to one thing. They listen to whatever favors your perspective in this matter, but they don't listen to the other thing yeah, when it doesn't think favor being you. Too soft got it. So, you get exactly to pick and it. choose on what I get to do. Or maybe, no, let's be it's real, really you're completely to oblivious to how much I've talked to my own community about not fucking yelling at Ethan and about how he's a good person, how he's an empathetic person, how he's a kind mm -hmm. person, and he truly cares about Palestinian people. Maybe that, that has you were, some. You were kind because of, it doesn't I, go I along know. with your narrative. My point is this. From what I've seen, you were this. kind of bad faith in your debate with him. It wasn't exactly like oh, a very nice oh debate you had. Brother, I'm, brother, I can't brother, wait brother, to brother. go watch it. I'm going to go find out myself. But. Okay, okay, okay. Well, have fun watching it. This was mm -hmm. the most unproductive the most I know because you're mad I disagree with you and you're mad that no, just I'm mixing not. I'm not mad that you disagree with me. Doesn't Plenty of people disagree with facts. me. You j I yell at my chat every fucking day, dumbass. There are people who disagree with me that have been in here I for know, five fucking fu years. Shut the fuck up. Opinions. No, that's not true. There's a difference between true. disagreements. There's a difference between disagreements and someone who is just trying to cut drama as hard as they fucking can. You don't well, know anything somebody, about Israel or Palestine. You, you don't give report. a shit about Israel or Palestine. You're and just you trying to fucking make money by cutting thing, drama, right? which what you've shown, you, which you have what shown kind of is what that? you're interested in. You spread a fuck ton of misinformation this is, this and you cool. also literally what refuse to hear the additional context Name behind it. it. You refuse Name to hear the additional context behind it. Content. And you just sit there and you say, Hassan, you must not be talking to uh, open source intelligence community people. You must not be talking to actual journalists on the ground or literally actual forensic analysts that are uh, working at Washington Post, New York Times, and the like. You must just simply be making this up. When I tell you, as, as I am the source matter the here, right? I'm the subject matter otherwise. here. Why do you, why if do you I'm the subject matter of your, of your commentary, I'm giving you what I do, what my process is. And instead of going, okay, I maybe I misunderstood how this works, you've process. turned around and tried to fucking yell about all this shit. I've tried to show you that the circumstantial evidence presented at the time and still to this day greatly favors that this was most likely another Israeli munition. Okay, I said this, but you don't give a shit because you no, don't care about the truth. You just care about fucking stirring shit up. 
I it doesn't matter if I say it 100%, it does okay? Matter, on the actually. same fucking day, the on, in the immediate moment after that, I have it wasn't said the immediate moment after that. Oh my fucking lord, dude. Oh, you're on the lying. same uh, exact coverage, lie? on the same exact coverage of the bombing of this hospital, regardless mm -hmm. of the actual regardless, regardless of how overwhelming the evidence was that this was yet uh, another Israeli bombing campaign, which, by the way, still... There really still, wasn't that much evidence, dude. All the evidence... Yes, it on, was. Reporting on, all the people reporting on it Okay, said okay. Should, no, 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 no. We can't have this conversation then. If you, if you legitimately think that there isn't enough circumstantial evidence that all pointed to Israel literally bombing the same vicinity, Israel bombing the hospital two days prior, you if you think wait, that that is not enough criticism. evidence that Israel was bombing the hospital again, not including the fucking doctors, not including the doctor... Wait, what? Not 100%. I don't think Including the fucking... Okay, 90%. I still think it's 90% that it's Israel. Yeah, you, so how about that? I still think it's 90%. Oh, so that's the difference. The so that's the difference. I didn't say 90%. My bad, brother. Sorry. No, Next time say I'll say, it's guys, it's 90% Israel. You what? still claim it. You still double down and say the you, exact same thing. Because of the evidence that I have presented. Every single point of evidence. Every single point of evidence that Israel presented was discredited instantaneously. The only fucking evidence we have is the circumstantial evidence. I said all of these on the same fucking day of the coverage, okay? I said all of the evidence is circumstantial, but of course circumstantial evidence overwhelmingly says that this was yet another Israeli bombing campaign. Any, we looked through really the same- There wasn't evidence. We looked bro. at- There wasn't yes, that much. There wasn't any evidence? There was no evidence. I mean, there, there was circumstantial, but you think that's enough to go off of when it's breaking news and they're going to get well, it figured out? Well, it's kind of crazy that you point. say that because I did mention that it was circumstantial at the time and that it was overwhelmingly. You open, you so so you do like, agree with me. Got it. Dude, okay, you, so circumstantial you, evidence overwhelmingly open, favors that this is Israel. Got it, which was my commentary on the time. Open, so now we've proven that you fucking found a two-minute a, a two segment, a two-minute fucking segment, a two-minute segment, on the day of to fucking clip and go, this is what Hassan said. He's clearly in I the fucking wrong. He's so stupid. And catch you in the slack, right? I could just like do it. It's gonna be like really. It's gonna happen. I mean, what can I do here? What do you mean? You, you what, what, I'm just I gonna go watch you. the broadcast and show you lying. Okay, go ahead. That's great. Ha watch okay. the broadcast. You're most likely going to do the exact same thing that you've done. Thus you don't far, even know what I did. which is over the, the course video. of a fucking eight hour you broadcast, you're going to find you another fucking the moment to be like, see, he read the chat. How do you he know did what this, did. he didn't did that. Watch it. it's... There is over the course of an eight you hour right now broadcast. You right the same thing you always do. I'm just saying, no, like this, you're just doing it in real it's the same time. Thing you always you're doing do. it in real time, bro. Oh, over the course okay. of an eight-hour broadcast, over the course of an eight-hour broadcast, if you look to literally three moments, you can find me. You can find as much as you, dude. That does eight-hour broadcast because no one has the most psychopathic fucking fandom like idiots like you who fucking sit through every minutia to find a clippable moment to find a clippable moment to be like he sucks, research. he's bad. That's you the reason, dickhead. Bad, all right, bro. all right, all right. Anyway, I gotta go. I'm being rude to my guest. I can't believe yeah. I fucking yeah, God, I, I made Felix God sit through this. I can't believe I made Felix uh, sit through this. Could okay. I, um, could I ask a oh, my guest has a question for you. All right, let's go see ahead. It. Um, don't you think it's weird how like Anne Hathaway like isn't Jewish? I just found that out like last year. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking know, bro. Do, doesn't she like kind of like look like Jewish? I always thought that. I was like, let's go. That's one of ours. But apparently she isn't. She's Are like the Jewish? opposite. Yeah. Nice. Shalom. Are you? No, I'm not. I I was about to say Willie Mac. I'm just a, I'm just that, a Midwest that name isn't in bro. the Bible. Yeah, yeah. All right, take it easy, man. Felix, right. Do you have any questions for Willie Mac? That was the question. That's it. Yeah. No, I just I, I just no found out about the Anne Hathaway thing. Well, like this it's, year. it's breaking news. I'm sure his Philly, son's looking to do it. Willie Willie Mac, thank you so much for your ethics in video game journalism or your ethics in in conflict thank, reporting. Thanks for coping by I'm just sure, I'm context sure. Context okay, okay, yeah, yeah, you got all. me, dude. You fucking owe me. Okay, thanks for yeah. coping. He says, "All right, Jesus Christ." Bro's YouTube channel is nothing but drama farm. Absolute fucking loser. Why'd you have him on here? Because I legitimately thought that I could have a conversation about like the, the actual sourcing, but it didn't uh, go in that direction at all because uh, it wasn't, that wasn't what he was trying to do. Never put us there that again. I know this is why it is kind of stupid to just like argue on what my coverage looks like. Um, but, uh, but instead on actual issues, which we never got to. Um, but you know, I, we found out that he really, really, really wants me to watch his videos apparently. Um, 
He didn't, anyway. He didn't even know the Anne Hathaway fact that I knew. Yeah, I know. It's pretty fucked up. It's really crazy, though. Like, I really, like, my entire life, I thought that. Even though her last name's Hathaway. But yeah. apparently, she's, like, completely descended from, like, people who were on the Mayflower. It's the one time that I've been wrong about something like that. Ridiculous. Um, okay, so his points were, one, you're tone policing. Two, there's no other point. What did you feel about that? Do you think that there was uh, anything productive to learn from that situation? Um, no, not really. I like, um, as far as I could tell, he makes like, you know, that style of YouTube video where it's like, th this guy really fucking stepped in it this time. Yeah. And it's like, it's like an outgrowth of how people would make those videos about someone like, uh, I don't know. Like, do you, um, I don't want to get you in trouble by mentioning anyone, but you know, like the classic figures of the internet that people make fun of. Yeah. It all started with like Chris Chan, right? Yeah, no, no, no. Like it's the, the a classic It's It's a lol cow operation for sure. Like right. I think that like uh, dude, those guys literally all uh, come from that background where they're like, Pokimane is wrong. Right. Like they exactly, do, right. They do shit like that all the time. And I'm like the other target. I'm the only male target, I guess. Beyond. Right. Right. Like that kind of content does really well. So like there is, there's like an entire economy of people who make videos like that that are just, like, tailored to whatever a specific demographic, like, hates. Do and not, it's... Do not look up what this guy said about Pokey. Wait, is he... What has he said about Pokey? Pokey may, may be the most yeah, passive-aggressive streamer. On that one, it, it... The fuck? I mean, I guess that's not too bad. Of course, there's always a fucking tweet, dude. I mean, classic. Anyway. But, yeah, I don't... I, I don't know. It's, like... <sighs> It is, we, I mean, we said it earlier. It's like the equivalent of those um, those websites that are generated on the uh, subcontinent. Yeah. The, the AI, the AI back to Indian websites. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I always liked that, like, our show isn't popular enough what for those this? videos to be made. Dude, I always thought it'd be funny to go on one day. That's, and there's just like a picture of me looking worse than ever. That, and it's like, <laughs> listen to what he said here. And it's like, um, every, everything, all my race analysis about Amy Schumer. <sighs> <laughs> don't, don't say stuff like that. They will take it in all sincerity. Watch out. I can say it. And it's really not what people will think. I, if they put me next to Jake Tapper to debate about this, I would win. Um, I like that. I like that. It was, it was mostly like, how dare you assume, how dare you say 100% that it was Israel? Uh, even though you say now that it's 90% that it's Israel, right? Right. That like yeah. Israel blew up another hospital. How dare you say that? I fucking own you. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. It's also like, <laughs> like all the, like the evidence that you were supposed to wait for from Israel is a faked phone call they made between two IDF officers who sort of speak Arabic, and then like the munition, like munitions analysis that it's been debunked by like yeah. the New York Times. The most, the most popular, Channel also the most 4. popular munitions analysis that came from Geo confirmed at the time that like everyone was holding up is like the truth, which I immediately said was ridiculous and false. Geo confirmed himself had to admit was false. I was, you know, I, I don't really like the OSINT stuff all that much, but I was duking it out with the OSINT guys on that day because I was very stubborn about it. But uh, overall, there was a tremendous amount of uh, of misinformation coming on this issue. So, of course, like, I, I, I do not think that I... I'll just, in the future, I'll just say I'm 99% sure, okay? Instead of 100%. There you go. That's my takeaway. Fetterman uh, really looks like um, I mean, people in chat are probably too young to uh, know about these news stories. But there was a real problem in the late 90s of guys um, who had a brain injury who accidentally uh, killed a woman by hugging her. <laughs> and that's what John Fetterman looks like to me. Man, Especially, you said, man, show some fucking self-respect, please. If not for your voters, at least for your kids. This is some of the most shameful groveling for a lobby I've ever seen. No, this goes beyond that, dude. I don't think this is just like groveling. I, I, I like, I get why. I get why. He said in an old tweet that he hopes your house burns down. Wait, what? I can't click on this. I don't know why it says the page doesn't exist. 
you have a screenshot of it? He pro he deleted it. Oh, well, I don't think you can delete that, right? That's probably archived, I suspect. Supreme Leader Pokemane just made a tweet and Twitch uh Twitch's staff of virgins fold immediately. I hope Hassan's house gets burned down so I can respond to him in the same way. That's nice, man. That's sick. Again, another fucking moment where I'm talking about media analysis that he responded to as though it was like my own personal uh, perspective on like how much I love when small businesses uh, light on fire or something. And that's also similar to how uh, it's also similar to how like, you know, a personal home uh, being lit on fire. Who is this person? Some fucking freak, dude. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Yeah. We like, I love the conversation about Israel not their bl uh, blowing up this one fucking hospital because they say so. In I, the sea of, like, Israel blowing up ambulances and being like, Hamas was in the ambulance. Yeah, they also warned that specific hospital several times. Yeah, and that it's they were like, going to... They blew yeah. it up. They, they blew up the cancer. They, they dropped an artillery in that hospital yeah. two days prior. Get the fuck out of here. I will stand solidly on my fucking two feet and tell you that the highest likelihood out of all of the likelihoods is that, yes, it was Israel, okay? It was. I see you doing other charity today by feeding this loser for a month. I mean, it's fine. Anyway, please watch all my videos, bro. <laughs> Why don't you do responsible reporting by watching my fucking dumbass YouTube video? I get recommended, like, that type of video a lot. Like, the, the a video where it's like... um the, the boogie saga continues and I don't know. It's fucking up my algorithm. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes some of those videos you're like, okay, this is, um, you know, this, this person, whoever they're talking about, uh, they fucked up their life in an interesting way. But most of the time it's like the Pokemon stuff. Where it's like, yeah, I can't imagine giving a shit about this. No, these like, guys, what are you talking about? They, there's like a couple people that have like hate boners for Pokimane, myself, like a bunch of other people. Um, I put that in like a different category than like Boogie, I think, because some of those guys, like, what is it, Crimson Wings or some shit? Oh, or, Wings or, of Redemption, Wings of Redemption, Dark Side Phil, Boogie, like those guys. Don't actually have like a like a solid foundation remaining. Yeah. So they've only become like they've become lol cow cannon fodder. But even that, like, even for like some of them, like, I feel like for Dark Side Phil, like people who are legitimately mad at him, like people who like actually hate him, it, it, that's like it's, like sociopathic to me. I cannot understand. I can't picture anyone just being like, oh, fuck you, Dark Side Phil. You're a piece of shit. It's like Frank Grimes getting mad at Homer. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, well, if you're wrong, will you own up to it? Of course. And I said this on the day of. I literally said, while I do believe that this is most likely Israel, which I couldn't get across to him because he wouldn't let me fucking explain this. But I said, while I do believe that this is most likely Israel, okay, the fact that, uh, the the fact that there is no unless there is ground analysis, if there is actually soil analysis, like chemical testing, that proves that this was an Islamic Jihad uh, rocket, which by the way Hamas said they welcome, and Israel would not allow for the record. Okay, and it came out that they did unironically do uh, chemical testing, soil testing, which at this point they will never be able to do it in uh, at all, regardless. Then yeah, uh, yeah, I would, I would of course say it. I was there. You were very clear, says the Frog 101. I did. I said it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy said the N-word. I don't care. Okay, yeah. Fucking stop looking at his old tweets. Okay, yeah. He's edgy. Guys, he's an edgy white boy. Okay, he's, ooh, he's edgy. Yeah, most of his argument is fucking tone policing. All right. Well, we're, we were watching this Sarah Huckabee Sanders lady to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we were we were doing really good. Uh... I, I would, yeah, I was saying that, like... She's, I mean, they don't have anyone good. Like, I, I don't know how much of uh, that John, Jonathan Cornicus guy you've watched. What, the big-headed one? Yeah, the, he's the lieutenant colonel. He's, like, the head of their rapid response team. And he's such a fucking bumbling oaf. He posted the actual full interview of, like, when Wolf Blitzer was, like, you killed civilians. 
Like when Wolf Blitzer actually like got the better of him. He posted that entire thing. Uh, he's pretty bad. I have not seen her before. But she really, like, just gives me, like, a really bad feeling. Like, she looks like a mean school administrator. I don't like her. <laughs> ...of Hamas, that they're taking those small babies out of the incubators. I, I mean, I was watching it yesterday. You have the babies there. Oh, she's doing Israel the Kuwait testimony every shit. help that yeah. can be offered. We brought incubators that can be... Yeah, they don't need incubators, dumbass. They need fucking electricity, which you've shut off. The fuck do you mean? It's so... They're, she's literally trying to say that, like, it's Hamas that fucking pulled the babies out of the incubators, not our lack of fuel that caused it. And then they were like, J we'll give you fucking fuel, which the hospital themselves said they had no way of accessing because they were sniping people that are immediately inside of the fucking hospital. Yeah, and from the sounds of it, it's like she's making it sound like they're, they've been sieging the hospital and they're about to storm in. They probably are the second. Just so, like, what, Golani Brigade guys carrying fucking incubators can go in and put the babies in new ones? What the fuck are you talking about? What are you saying? Yeah, no, it makes no sense. Ugh. Um, full IDF statement on the hospital raid. The IDF, based on intelligence information and operational necessity, IDF forces are carrying out a precise and targeted operation against Hamas in a specified area in the Shiva hospital. The IDF is conducting a ground operation in Gaza to defeat Hamas and rescue our hostages. Israel is at war with Hamas, not with the civilians of Gaza. They've done a really poor job of, of fucking not warring with the civilians of Gaza. Yeah, again, like just like what we were talking about. Like, okay, if you're not at war with the civilians, then... What the fuck are you trying to do here? Yeah. The IDF force include medical teams and Arabic speakers who have undergone specified training to prepare for this complex and sensitive environment. Once again, we know their their Arabic speakers are not exactly uh, up to snuff, considering Definitely. considering yeah. their fucking propaganda. Definitely not so ready far. for prime time. <laughs> yeah. Um, with the intent that no harm is caused to the civilians being used by Hamas as human shields. In recent weeks, the IDF has, uh, uh, in recent weeks, the IDF has publicly warned time and time again that Hamas' continued military use of the Shiva hospital jeopardizes protected status under international law and enabled ample time to stop this unlawful abuse of the hospital. Yesterday, the IDF conveyed to the relevant authorities in Gaza once again that all military activities within the hospital must cease within 12 hours. Unfortunately, it did not. What, like, what, what is the, what, what is... What right, they this? never specify what military activities are going on there. That's why they have to do shit like make these shitty flash animations of like what they think it looks like underneath the hospital. Yeah. Um, like, like, like they got, they, they, they put out that video, I think yesterday or the day, day before, where they're trying to show proof of activity in a hospital and they show a calendar and a fucking toilet. Yeah. Why, why else would you have a toilet in a hospital unless you were keeping hostages here? Why would you need to know what day of the week it is unless you were counting down the days till you kill your hostage? Yeah, I I don't fucking know. Panic at El Shifa Hospital where 1,000 pal uh, of the 1,000 Palestinian people, including journals, have sought refuge, yet more Israeli war crimes. So is there... The wildest part is like they're also blowing it the fuck up too. Yeah. Like that's the craziest part. Like, oh, we're doing a tactical... We're doing a precise strike on the hospital. And then, like, their precise strike is just, like, still ground and pound, fucking going absolute nutty mode, like, uh, pulling a fucking Baghdad. Yeah, they, well, they said themselves at the start of the ground operation that, I mean, they didn't really say it in their English communications, but in, you know, in the press in Israel, they were openly saying that they had a Stalingrad strategy that they were going to try to pulverize everything yeah. with artillery and airstrikes. And then finally they could just storm the rubble and they shelled the shit out of every fucking hospital. They've bombed all of them and they're doing the same fucking thing here. And even, even, even with the constant shelling and the Stalingrad strategy, every time, every piece of footage I've seen of an IDF troop that is not inside their tank, it seems like they all just instantly die. They instantly get killed. The other thing that I have to ask is like, 
if you are the armed militant force, okay, inside of an occupied territory and the occupied force is invading your territory and they've shown time and time again that they're interested in blowing up hospitals, killing fucking medical professionals, threatening them, hundreds of instances of, of, of you know, according to the World Health Organization, again, attacks on healthcare professionals, which is a war crime, okay, including threatening phone calls. Like, what do you do in that situation? You can't leave the fucking hospital to, to Israel. They've shown that they don't give a shit, that they kill people all the fucking time, even if they're medical professionals. So what the fuck are people supposed to do in this circumstance? Like how you're just the, 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 it's an impossible situation where the overarching goal always is like, well, guess what? Uh, you just have to sit there and take it. You just have to sit there and die quietly. Right, right. right. And they, they've, they're trying to try out the argument of like, okay, you should have gone South when we told you go, go South where they're all already like are hitting fucking mosques and churches and, the same shit that they're hitting in North Gaza, they're doing it in the South. They're attacking convoys and claiming it's fucking Hamas, again, of uh, uh, people heading South. They they put out, like, this fucking... The one, one photo op that they could put together in the last month of, like, a bunch of soldiers handing out water to people who uh, were leaving the North. And they couldn't even hold it together, like, in the replies to the post. They were just openly bragging that, you know, they'll never be able to come back home. Yeah. Um, the guys who have said that, uh, you know, we're fighting human animals, the guys who have, like, literally shut off the fucking... Um, the guys who have literally shut off the fucking food and the water and the electricity and all this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, those guys, they're going to be, they're going to keep the doctor safe after like killing healthcare professionals and their fucking families, you know, after a long day of like doing surgery, uh, cutting off baby limbs and shit without anesthesia due to the endless bombing. Yeah. They, like what reason would you have if you were in Gaza, you would have no reason to trust anything that Israel is promising to you anything that they're saying to you there is no safe passage that they're going to guarantee to you yeah uh dr ahmed makhalati the head of the burn injury section of the hospital tells al jazeera in our phone conversation with the israeli military the officer acknowledged that they are aware that there's not a single militant inside the hospital uh, they took a photo of the palestinians being given water and the witnesses say they turned off the cameras took their luggage and shot their feet to scare them away they also fucking used an old man who was shot in the back yeah. Who then died later to his wounds. Yeah, no, that they, they they cannot even they cannot even try to put on a nice face for, for the world for even thirty seconds before reverting to the fucking SS. Yeah. If there's one group of individuals who should be cautious, as this chatter also correctly points out, when covering what's going on in Israel, uh what's what's going on in, in, in Gaza, it is the media listening to what the Israeli government is saying and taking it with a sense of caution, not the other way around, not like the, oh, the consistently reliable Hamas-backed uh, Gazan health ministry is now somehow lying in this circumstance and not the Israeli government that has lied to our face time and time and time and time again with like increasingly worse examples too. Yeah, it's just you... You just, it would be impossible to list all the things that, like, Israel has lied about, both, you know, of incredible significance and even small weird things that it doesn't even make sense to lie about. Uh, you could fill books and books with that shit. Um, it, there's just no, no reason to just take their word, to reprint their press releases, but... CNN's doing it. I mean, they're killing every fucking journalist they can in Gaza, but they're allowing CNN to roll with them. Why? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, so many journalists have been killed. So many journalists have been killed in the hands of Israel. More journalists than in any other conflict in recent history. Uh, same with children. And for some reason, like, none of that, uh, you know, none of that, none of that gets any play in mainstream media, which they, I thought like at least journals would care about other journalists. You know what I mean? No, that like, 
they never like they never saw like uh like Shireen Abu Akleh like that that I guess there were some American journalists that actually did uh, talk about it and point out like you know the fact that Israel lied about that and initially tried to blame Palestinians for her killing but at the end of the day like at least in an institutional sense um like CNN or <sighs> NBC for that matter or really Dude, any like Reuters large- Reuters, when their uh, Lebanese journalist was bombed by Israel in Lebanon, yeah, made it see they used passive voice when describing the yeah. actions that fucking killed their Arab journalist in Lebanon. It is nutty. It is insane. Okay. Yeah, just on the institutional side, it's yeah. They just they don't give a shit, even if it's their own employees. Yeah. Individual journalists, that is different. But like these institutions, um, no, just uh, your life is forfeit if you are even in Israel's way. Uh, anyway, um, here, let's watch some brain breaking shit uh, specifically from. Yeah, I mean, the Jews demanding ceasefire in Gaza occupy uh, Oakland federal building. Hundreds are arrested. They're going after uh, all the Jewish Voice for Peace people everywhere. Uh, some of those are like mass arrest demonstrations on purpose. Um, but uh, here's what I wanted to watch. Oh, here it is. Overtime, Senator Ted Cruz, Jordan Peterson, Pamela Paul, Real Time with Bill Maher, HBO. Oh, they changed the Real Time set. Yeah, Texas Senator and author of Unwoke, Ted Cruz. Okay. And former psychology professor Jordan Peterson and opinion columnist. Oh, oh my God, God, he looks like an asshole. I don't, I can't, I argue a lot. You fuck that debate up. I can't tell what you mean. Like, do you, do you mean like it was good? Do you mean it was bad? Like, what do you mean? It's not really a debate. It was more so me trying to fucking offer context to his coverage. Okay, so. I wouldn't even call it a debate, really. Here we go. This first one is for you. Do Republicans have a good answer to address the border crisis other than busing migrants to liberal cities? Ooh, a little dig there, Ted. A little... <laughs> It's It's actually very simple, which is secure the border, and when you apprehend someone, send them home. Okay, I want to hear about the Israel stuff. I don't care about fucking Mexico. Is there is there actually that in here or no? To match his maturity level to a woman's level, I think (laughs) forty. Negatively towards women, definitely not. So, but bro, this is straight the Joker shit. Yeah, he's been wearing... Also, isn't this? Wait, this is not for him. This is he's Canadian. uh, Canadians, Commonwealth. Do, so it's wait, com- Canadians like, Canadians do celebrate it in the same way that the, the British do? They're not as crazy about it as that's uh, dick as, riding. Uh, well, I mean, what is being in the Commonwealth but dick riding? Yeah, one hundred percent. That's well, dick riding as fuck, dude. That's crazy. They're not as insane with it as the English are, but uh, no, it's a thing over there. They're they like their poppies. Damn negative emotion. It's absolutely clear. That what the fuck the is he wearing? The biggest differences are He's in full the countries joke that have mode the most now. gender equal like economies the and socioeconomic what the fuck structure. Is that? So the differences between men and women in terms of sensitivity to negative emotion maximized in Scandinavia. So yeah. Scandinavians are also much happier than we are, though. Yeah, well, but comparatively, their women are less happy. So, I mean, he looks like he's some. And I've seen those surveys too. I, I find it a very difficult thing to quantify happiness, or it's it's kind of like that pain chart in the hospital, one to ten. Like somebody's three is somebody else's eight. You know what I mean? I, I, how happy are they really in Scandinavia? I, I don't know. Well, I, it's it. It's I know this is the greatest country ha- in the world, right, Ted? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, how will get that one wrong? (laughs) How will Joe Manchin's decision? Ah, this happened today. Joe Manchin, West Virginia senator, decision not to seek re-election impact the balance of power in the Senate. I saw a lot of gleeful Democrats. We got rid of Joe Manchin. Good luck trying to elect another Democrat in West Virginia. John Fetterman will win Dancing with the Stars before. (laughs) Yeah, I mean he succeeded Robert Byrd. But I guess he's making noise about a third party run. I think that he. Okay, no, no this shot. Sucks. I can't. This is like this, so awful. It like gives me the feeling of aging. 
I feel like I'm I'm losing years watching overtime with Bill Maher. God damn, dude, that was that was fucking crazy bad. Why is it like that? It's no club random. I'll say that. Yeah. Oh. CNN. Did you see the fucking uh the 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 basement of the hospital? I mean, we briefly talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. But like now, now they got other dudes uh, going down there. The, the hospital. The, 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 can, can I just point something out? Yeah. Their spokesperson is a brigadier general. Like, what the fuck is going on with the ranks in the Israeli army? Yeah, there's like, like so many people. Is it like the participation trophy army or what's going on? I feel like there's a lot of like high. Every time I see another like, um, you know, the IDF, uh, this IDF guy died like or whatever tweet. And it's they're always like sergeants. Yeah. No, you make sergeant in like three months. There's like 10 privates in the entire army. It's fucking crazy. Half of the population of Israel are lieutenant colonels. It's insane. Like they have a fucking XP boost. I, yeah, I don't really, I don't really understand it, but there's a, yeah, there's a little bit of a title inflation. There. Israel is facing massive international pressure over the destruction of homes, the shockingly high civilian death toll and in the last few days over its apparently heavy-handed tactics at hospitals. Apparently heavy-handed tactics. Well, that's one way to put it. Build the tunnels that we suspect that are underneath the hospital. Gari has brought us here to show the connection he says exists between Hamas... Wait, he did this without the press at first. Uh, did it, Brigadier General Gary? Yeah, he did this. At, oh yeah, they yeah. It was like a proprietary IDF press office video. Yeah, he's doing a he's doing another one. He went back in TC Children's Hospital. We're this will be interesting. Maybe they added shit to this one. Between a hospital. My favorite is my favorite was when he looks at this thing and he points at the ground and he's like, "We are investigating what this is." Did you see that? No, no, no. Oh. And it looked like a vape or something. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but he's like he literally just goes, "Wait, hold on. Let me see if I can find the OG one." But he's like he points to like next to the fucking next to the motorcycle. Next to the motorcycle, he like points to the ground and goes, "We don't know what this is. We are investigating." Then a school and a terrorist house. A Hamas commander, he says, lived there. He points out the solar panels on the roof. This is a tunnel that was slided like this, the floor. You can see here. This is the ladder going you down. see the yeah. ladder going down. I yeah? see the ladder going down. Okay, yeah. this is a 20 meter tunnel. And look at here. Look at the, look at. Wait, why is this zoomed in so much? Like people were saying that's like a possible like there people are saying that like that's not an actual tunnel that's like an elevator shaft potentially like yeah it looks industrial <laughs> it looks like yeah. yeah i mean dude, hamas does have like pretty solid tunnels but they're usually circle like yeah. they're 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 spherical well, like, right? and yeah. we're not for spherical fucking yeah I, I i don't know how many people in chat have seen the kassam brigade like combat videos that they're putting out with their gopros but like the videos where they pop out of the tunnels and fire the rpg 29s at the uh, Merkava's, the tunnels look like completely different. And yeah. There's like a lot of videos of them popping out of the tunnels. This is like. Yeah, there's like. Also, why would there be an electrical shaft right above a tunnel that like directly goes into the fucking tunnel? Yeah, it's like Ubisoft designed this level. So you know exactly where the tunnel is. Like, I don't it's understand. Like, uh, you might as well just like put yellow draping. I, I, over I so legit you know don't understand. Down. That's why I'm like confused as to why they're like zooming in so much because like. I thought that um, I thought that they would show like exactly where this is now that like it's the CNN coverage and not not the fucking IDF version. Look at the, of the, look at the tunnel. Be, be careful yeah. here. Why is but it so blown up? The it. cables are going down to the tunnel. Okay. So they're hardwired for, for, into for the tunnel. Oh, that's true. They do actually approve the footage. I forgot. The IDF does have to approve all matter of uh, footage. The electrical box contains a third three-phase inverter for elevator motors. I used to assemble this. I mean, I don't fucking know. In the OG video, it's not zoomed in, but the CNN one, it is zoomed in. So maybe they didn't want to show anything. But it does look fucking ridiculous to say like this is a this is like a like a IDF tunnel. I mean, a Hamas tunnel. Yeah, let me show you the solar panels on the terrace house provide electricity directly to the tunnel. 
We've entered, we've entered a robot inside the tunnel and the robot saw a massive door, a door that is on the direction of the hospital. We're in what is. The funniest part about it is that like they refuse to go into the tunnels too. Right. Because like, well, some of them are booby trapped. I think like there's like fake, they fake out uh, tunnels sometimes. I think they like leave some uh, fake tunnels down there to like have people go in there and then they blow it up. But like, that's part of the problem is that like, they don't want to go down into the fucking tunnel system. So they could just go, well, there was a door in the direction of the hospital. Right. I, <laughs> it, um, did you see those, like, uh, those four guys that all died in the tunnel, uh, like two or three days ago? Wait, four, there was a video of four guys dying in a tunnel? I, I don't know if there's that. video, but it's like four IDF guys. And that is actually the thing that got me thinking about IDF rank inflation. Because it was like two majors died. And Why it's would like, a major go in a tunnel? Yeah, exactly. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? I, I don't really understand. Also, um, they, the thing that I don't get is like, why don't they show the ground? Yeah, it's just so... Like, stupid. where? where's the fucking tunnel, dog? I have no way to understand where the fucking tunnel is. You literally cut out the context uh, clues. Like, it, like, where is this tunnel? Like, is it on a fucking... Is it on top of a goddamn building? Is it literally on the ground? Why is it not hidden? Right. Like, if this was... If this was a movie we were watching, they... People would say they did a bad job with cinematography because we have no sense of direction or where anything is in relation to anything else in the scene. Yeah. Like, and, it's just so close up. It means and, and then And then the way he, like, patches this uh, a tunnel that uh, is directed at the hospital is because... He claims he saw a door that, like, is in the direction of the hospital. What the fuck? But then they went into the hospital. And they never show, like, the entrance of a tunnel, unless I'm mistaken. I didn't see in their video any fucking entry point into a tunnel whatsoever. And then they do this thing where they're like, here's all the sick shit we found. And... And the, the irony is, like, it's always, like, a like a baggie. You know how, like, the yeah. NYPD does these, like, fucking major drug busts, right? And it's, like, one fucking water pistol in a baggie. And and it's the same thing. Yeah, it's, like, $38 in single-dollar bills. Like, oh, we, we caught this massive drug operation. Wow, dude, you guys really fucking did the thing, huh? Okay, yeah, so they have... <laughs> they have the first guns that you get in Warzone. Yeah, they, they fucking... They did it. They have a, they have a <laughs> cricket mobile phone. <laughs> they have, um, I don't know. I guess part of the soda bottle. For, I want to mention your bus here. Yeah, I want to mention something here. Like Hamas are not fucking perfect uh, uh, victims in this situation. Okay, but they're I don't expect them to be. They're a goddamn militia. Like what the fuck are we doing here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they use unconventional methods, some of which might even be considered fucking war crimes. What the fuck are we talking about? None of this still justifies what Israel is doing and continues to do, okay? I just want to just want to point, point that out. Like, like for example, we see uh, people talk about how, like, you know, they're not wearing... They're not wearing... <coughs> uh, uh, they're, they're wearing civilian gear. Right. Like, they're wearing right. civilian garb. It's like... Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but that's literally legal, okay? According to international law, yes, a spontaneous militia force is allowed to not have fucking uh, actual army uh, detail, like camouflage or any any kind of like signifier, as long as like there is a there's a commander, right? And they're that's not all, a standing army, right? And that's also not the reason that Israel has killed a bunch of civilians because they're all wearing track pants, yeah, like. That, no, that just does not hold up. Yeah, usually they wear, like, uh, headbands and shit, but that's pretty much it. Uh, like, the the stuff that you see them wear, like, the, the uniform that you see them wear, they only wear uh, in, in uh, promotional videos. Other than that, they don't usually wear it. Though guns. some of the guys I'm... on Ten Seven were sort of tacked up in a way that was pretty recognizable. Yeah, but I think that was more so like, a, I mean, that was a military operation. So yeah, there was like, yeah. they even had like a brigade wearing IDF shit. Did you see that video? Oh, no, I didn't see that one. Yeah, there was an entire, there was a, there was a group that literally uh, wore, they found like, they, I don't know how they fucking found this, but they found like IDF, uh, they found IDF gear and they were wearing IDF gear and like walking around 
Which is also, again, okay, well, that's a war crime. Yeah, no shit. I know. I'm explaining it to you. Yeah. They uh, they had IDF gear that they were wearing, that they were uh, using as they were uh, taking people hostage. That is incredible. They got a hold of that. I don't know how like, the fuck they did that. That's insane. Yeah, they those I mean, motherfuckers were wearing the floppy hats and everything. It really, like, puts everything into perspective. Like, the blockade... Like, hey, sorry, this is tough, but we need to do this. Hey, sorry, if you're a grandfather in Gaza and you have stage four cancer, you can't get your morphine. I know it sucks, but we have to blockade this place. So, uh, you know, these Hamas guys, they can't get their rockets or, you know, somehow smuggle in IDF uniforms. And they, they're just able to do it anyway. Yeah, like, that's it, the it thing. Just, it's the, the least effective. Of cr- cruelty <laughs> and incompetence. Like, I, I thought the same thing during the whole, like, argument about the hospital strike, right, where they pointed out that PIJ does have Bader three rockets, it's like, okay, then what the fuck are you doing with this blockade if they're able to get that into Gaza? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? That's what I... It, no, it, it is the least effective blockade of all time and only serves to just, like, destroy the morale of an entire population, causing them slowly but surely to, like, become more radicalized in the most understandable ways, dude. Like, come yeah. on. I can't... Yeah. I... They I, don't stop shit. They don't stop anything. They literally... Even the fucking cement stuff. Think about that. They yeah. don't let cement into Gaza. They have 400 kilometers of fucking tunnels underneath, man. Just yeah. let the motherfuckers have cement, dog. You clearly haven't stopped them from digging... Uh, 10 meters in the fucking ground and building tunnel systems. Just let the people have some so they can like rebuild their uh, desalination plants. They couldn't even stop them from training and developing their own special forces. They had 500. Yes, exactly what I was going to say. They had 500 Nukba uh, uh, militants, like special forces militants, leave the country, leave the fucking occupied Gaza Strip, by way of the Rafah crossing, in secrecy, fly out to Iran and fucking train in Iran. Which, to be fair, even Iran didn't know that these guys were going to then go and do October 7th. But, like, what are we doing? It's very clearly a problem that you cannot solve militarily. Like, what? what, what is this? You can't. Yeah. Uh, Not Nakba? No, Nukba, I said. Isn't that what it's called? The The... I don't. I don't even try to, to pretend I'm very good at anything in Arabic. I tried learning it in Duolingo like once, like eight years ago. No dice. It's a tough one. Yeah. Some explosives. These guns alone have potentially huge implications for Gaza's hospitals and Israel's apparent push. Yeah, bro. He also. I. I'm surprised. Is he going to show the fucking uh, suicide vest? Because they claim that they found a suicide vest as well. Like, fucking, when have they used suicide vests? Like, in, in the past 20 years, they've used it in the past, but, like, I don't think they used to it. To take control of them. The International Committee for the Red Cross. The second Antifa, but, yeah. like, it, it, Hamas's tactics since, like, you know. Since I, taking like, over really the, the Gaza last, Strip. like, 15 years, yeah. that really hasn't been their thing. Yeah. Say that hospitals are given special protection under international humanitarian law in a time of war. But if militants store weapons there or use them as a base of fire, then that protection falls away. In other rooms, he shows us a motorbike with a bullet hole in it that he suspects was used by Hamas attackers October 7th. What, what and nearby, the possible evidence hostages could have been held here. What the we are now are in the basement in the about? same area, yards from the motorcycle. We see her a chair, we see her a rope. We see her a woman's clothes or a woman's something covering woman. Do you think a woman was tied up in this chair? This is an assumption going to be checked by DNA. More evidence, Hagari says, points towards Hamas and possible hostage presence below. Damn, they didn't even show the full video where he goes, this, we are still checking what this is. Or even the binky. There was like a binky there and... And all this other shit. You show off the suicide vest when you're trying to impress news dinguses because that's what the news dinguses expect to see. No, they didn't even show half of the stuff that was in the longer video. They didn't show in this one because I think in Gaza City. I think they decided it's probably not the best and and makes their argument uh, look worse. This guy's coming gear for Jonathan Cornick. It's a gear job. for a major fight. Wait, why did they? 
This is way more kitted up, dog. Why did they show the CNN the next day? Way less weapons. What's happening? Yeah, what? Mm, what the These are explosives. These are vests. Vests with explosives. Yeah? It's a body vest for terrorists to explode on forces. Among hospitals. Among patients. We have hand grenades. Collapse. This is what they originally posted, but then when they had the fucking CNN reporter come in, why did they take that, that out? That is really fucking And then weird. we have the RPGs. People shooting RPGs from hospitals. This is Hamas firing RPGs from hospitals. The world has to understand who is... Why? We must kill babies. <laughs> the world must understand. Like, that's what the funniest thing is. It's just like, all of this is literally to be like, that's why we every hospital is fair game. Oh, this is the part. In the massacre of the 7th of October, they even have bullets in this motorcycle. So they came back from the massacre on the 7th of October into Rantisi Hospital with hostages on a motorcycle. We're still researching this. <laughs> it's like, zoom it's in. It's like a fucking shoelace. Dude, it's like, <laughs> zoom in. <laughs> we are still investigating this. Fucking slam dunk. Uh, what, what, oh, am I watching LA Noir 2 gameplay? Dude, I love this. I love this. This, this guy is the best. Dude. Into Rantisi Hospital with hostages on a motorcycle. We're still researching this. <laughs> Yards from here. <laughs> what, what is he even suggesting that it is? <laughs> They're still investigating, bro. Yeah. Chill. It's like it's like the waistband from sweatpants. No, they're investigating it. You don't understand. Blow <laughs> the hospital and by like bringing it, us here to this hospital. Do DNA analysis on the chair. Yeah. No, he said he's gonna he's gonna look at the DNA and out. He's they're gonna do DNA testing on the uh, on the clothing to see if it was like uh, touched by uh, one of the hostages that they have like the DNA of. It. People and showing us the connection that you believe exists between the terrorists and the possibly hostages. What does this say about the other hospitals here in Gaza? Cynically, Shifa Hospital is known by facts, by intelligence, to be a terrorist hub. And also, it's suspicious also in holding hostages. This is the best shelter for the terror war machine of Hamas. But the hospital authority... Well, I don't even agree with that. No, the best shelter is the tunnels. Like, yeah, why? What the fu I, yeah. I, like, I, it would be, it would be probably the worst idea to put him in the fucking hospital. Why? Because you keep blowing up hospitals, but you demonstrably refuse to blow up the tunnels because you're scared of going in there. Yeah, like after a month, what Hamas guy is going? Oh, they'll never hit a hospital. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, they've they've done. They've done way more damage to the hospitals than they have to the fucking tunnel system in general. Oh, my God. Like, I, I don't understand. Also, even the fucking lady said that they were at the uh, in the tunnels. Like, the, the, the lady that, uh, the old lady that Hamas released that Israel got real mad at when she was like, yeah. when she like uh, gave testimony about how like, you know, it wasn't. She basically was like, "Yeah, Hamas are kind of chill, actually." Was it? Was that the one where like her, her and the Kassam guys were smiling together? She was yeah, she said Shalom. Yeah. No. Uh, oh no no no. That's the that's the lady with the Alzheimer's. Oh right. right yeah, that's right. a different lady. That's like uh, a different lady who has, I think, Alzheimer's or something. Where the Kassam guy gave the the lady the the weapon. That was cute. When she was that, like throwing was up a thumbs up. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Is said they have no knowledge of Hamas or other groups inside the hospitals. Is that possible? I think it's not possible for an hospital to have this kind of an infrastructure. We knew the terrorists were here. A, a basement? We knew. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck are you talking about? Bro, it's like, it's like, have you seen the courtyard of every hospital? It's all makeshift. Yeah, it's like all motherfucking makeshift, like, living spaces, right? Yeah. So is this basement. Everything yeah. in Gaza is like, yeah, secondhand or retrofitted shit because, like, nothing officially can get in or out. Oh, my God. We knew by intelligence and also we got some fire from this area. From this area? This building. From this area. And, and we were... Right Even he goes, from this area or from this building? He goes, from this area. <laughs> I to fire because what we found an armory. But so much damage all around here. Yeah, there is damage all around here because Hamas made it impossible for us to fight him 
He built all this infrastructure in he, <laughs> this guy Hamas that we're looking for. Him, him and John Fetterman both. Yeah, yeah. Maybe John Fetterman wasn't wrong after all. There's a Mr. Hamas out there. He got a briefing. There's this really scary guy called yeah. Hamas. Mr. John Hamas. <laughs> Hamas. Yeah. In tunnels and in hospital around areas populated. As we exit the hospital, it is already dark. We're just getting ready. Wait, they never showed the fucking the tunnel entrance into the hospital. Remember right. how they remember how they pointed to that fucking like elevator shaft looking shit and yeah, we're like, that was it. Th that this was is it. a tunnel. And guess what? We sent a robot down there and the robot was scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was scared for the robot. And, and this this fucking the reporter was just trying to like throw him softball after softball. Like, did you hear him where he's, he's going? Oh, wow. If there's this stuff in the hospital, what does it say about the other hospitals in the region? And uh, the brigadier general who had an XP boost is just like, they do all this stuff. <laughs> it's just, I mean, this is the best they got right now. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's a leave right now. The firefight still going on, still intense. Bullets fired, explosions going on up the street there. This I love Hummus, not Hamas. Please stop. What? War and the controversies surrounding it far from resolved. Nick Robertson, CNN. Is that a squirrel? Like, what is that? Is it a cat? Gaza. Oh, man. Did you see that Naftali fucked up so bad they conscripted him? Wait, really? Anyway. All right, let's talk about two fun stories, okay? Now, let's talk about Mr. O'Brien himself, his behavior. As everybody knows in this hearing, the last time <laughs> him and I kind of had a back and forth. I uh, appreciate your demeanor today. It's quite different. But after you... What Israel is to find under Al-Shiva will likely be an amalgamation of all the tricks they've used so far, but with the added bonus of knowing there's a large basement level that will look good for cameras, mainly because Israel built it in 1983. This is from Tablet in 2014. In passing by Western reporters, but because they built it, back in 1983, when Israel still ruled Gaza... They built a secure underground operating room and a tunnel network beneath the Shifa hospital, which is one among several reasons why Israeli security sources are so sure that there is a main Hamas command bunker in or around it. Yeah, there you go. So they'll probably point to that. Even if it's like a, even if it's like an underground facility for, for like operations. Uh, yeah. Wait, no fucking way. Dear friends, I'm alive. Thank you so much for your prayers and care. It means the world to me and my wife. As you know, Israel's at war. I got drafted and had no contact with the outside world as we were fighting Hamas and Gaza. Please continue to pray for my nation. We're going through a tough season. Dear enemies, I'm not going anywhere. Am Israel Chai. Wait, dude, Hanania fucked up so bad. They literally drafted his ass. Yo, that's, I thought you were joking, dude. When you said Naftali Bennett, I thought you were talking about Naftali Bennett, not Hanania Naftali. Bro. Felix, what? are you about to leave? Uh, I, I have to show you one thing. You have to see this. Remember Hanaya Naftali who was like, yeah, we blew up the El Ahli hospital actually because yeah. it was sick and there's Hamas there, right? Immediately. And then I had to delete it. What? They drafted him. Yes. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> they, he fucked up so bad <laughs> that they fucking were like, all right, we're putting your ass in the fucking front lines, bitch. Oh my God. And he's like, he's like what? He's like 42. So there, he's going to be drafted as like a general. <laughs> Enjoy being like, a frontline general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude. Oh, you wanted to, you wanted to tweet about how there was Hamas at the hospital. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Dude? Or how about you go see for yourself? <laughs> oh my God. Like Blake Flayton got one over on him. Oh, like did no. you notice how like the moment they started, Blake Flayton was like, "Yeah, actually, I'd like to go to New York right now." <laughs> but this yeah. fucking dumbass. Oh, oh, he no. thought he was gonna be safe. He thought there is no way I'm plugged in. He thought this is gonna be like Mafia Two when Vito Scaletta gets out of his service. <laughs> No way, buddy. You're too bad at your job. Oh, that's so bad. That's so fucked up. How old is he? Isn't he old as fuck? Why are they drafting he looked, him? He's, Actually, he might be not that old. Uh, th th yeah, this he, is a hard one to yeah. call. He looks, this, like, he looks like he's like really old and not old at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you told me he was 23 or if you told me he was 45, I would be yeah. either. Like hairline is escaping him, but 
All right. Hairline is escaping him, but I don't know. I don't know what's the, what the deal I'm, is. I'm looking up his age. This could be one of those guys where you fucking you try to find it, and they're very good at hiding it. Wait, didn't he also? He used to be a spokesman for uh, Netanyahu, right? And he did like digital. He did digital stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's gone. He's no longer doing the digital stuff. It seems. Well, he, he may apparently he was like a Benny Johnson figure for Netanyahu. Like he wasn't the guy, but he was up there. <laughs> Oh wow! This guy is really. I really can't find this guy's age. Realistically, I can make a third Assam video. That's how deep the contradictions go. His spine is made of paper. He's a man with no principle. He just want to be seen as right while people pog out in chat. It's a good one. This is true. But he couldn't answer my Anne Hathaway question. How yeah. fucking old is this guy? This is so annoying. I'm. Oh my god. Yeah. It won't say. Oh, okay, 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 okay. He's 95. He was 22 in 2017. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. Like, oh, my how God. The fuck, what the fuck? How the fuck is this guy? Yeah, he was born in 1995. Oh, my God. That's a 28-year-old man. That is. Damn, dog. Life is shit. life has come at him fast, brother. Holy shit. Like, Listen, what? Is this he, is, like, allergic to everything? This is what I mean when I'm talking about, when I'm talking about, like, you know, the maintenance of an apartheid structure is, is really, really ruthless on the body. It takes a toll. It takes a toll on everything. Yeah. I mean, it takes a toll on the like, body. Like, the amount of hospitals you have to justify bombing, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to take something out of you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you let an uh, ethno-nationalist project go on this long. Everyone looks like that. Um, you've seen Israel's number one sketch comedy show. Wait. Francesca Albany says straight up Israel doesn't have a right to defend itself. Wait, what? What is self-defense under international law? And so oh, that when you... Oh, fuck. For a second, when I saw Albanese, I thought you were talking about... I got fucking excited. I thought you were talking about the Australian leader. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Elbow. What's his, yeah. Anthony... Anthony Albanese? I didn't... I just saw Albanese and I thought, oh, dude, you're talking about... Anthony Albanese actually got in trouble because he was at a pro-Palestine march like 30 years ago. And like, he had to fucking apologize. That's correct. Well, you know, that's our Albanian brother right there. Solidarity. That is, I did think that, like when he got elected. Like, is that just, does his name just mean Albanian, but like in Italian? I think so. Isn't he? Isn't he like technically, I don't know. He's like Albanese Italian, I think. I don't, I don't know. I just, in my mind, I always just made that up. I don't. I, as you guys I just know, don't know how last names work over. As, there. as you guys know, I, there's nothing better than getting pogged in the chat. So I just make up stuff all the time. <laughs> I, I like. Uh, oh my god! So this guy, he like, I he like went viral like doing Israel bullshit. Yeah, and then Yahoo was like. You're really, you got a good head on your shoulders, son. Oh, apparently, apparently, like, people accuse this guy of secretly being a Christian. Wait, the fucking guy that got conscripted? Yeah. Like, dude, that's so funny. Remember when I showed you? Uh, never mind, I don't want to say it. Whoa, wait, oh, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> Remember he, he, he elaborated. I am Jewish, but I follow the teachings of the New Testament as well. Oh, my God, he's a Jew for Jesus. Yeah, what the fuck is Yo, wrong? he is a messianic Jew. I'm like, buddy, what are you doing here Hassan I am here don't be startled oh Austin you're here nice I mean I, I dude I gotta eat food before I do this uh offline tv thing so uh I want to end it on this uh, fun note okay oh, yeah. yeah 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 wait you talked to Willie Maglaw yeah we did it was uh, the least productive conversation they could have ever had uh that that one could have ever had where I tried to describe like how I arrive at my conclusions and sometimes they might not be right other times they are and and it was just mostly just like a yelling competition where he just kept saying over and over again, this is irrelevant. It was not great. <laughs> I I hate this guy's name, Mark Wayne. Oh, Mark Wayne Mullen? Yeah. Yeah. I can't, yeah. It just, you know, obviously, I don't believe in, like, the propriety or uh, the, the history of the Senate as a hallowed institution. But something 
in me doesn't like the idea of a senator named Mark Wayne. Like it feels like fucked up. Yeah. And well, he, 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 he is fucking, very fucked up. He acts like a Mark Wayne yeah. right, in this clip. He somehow makes Oklahoma worse. I don't know how. I like um, I, uh, Neil Gorsuch, how he, he, he's trying to make it so Oklahoma is all land back. He's, yeah, if, yeah, I love that. True. About, I love that about him. He's just like fully like 1994 Republican on everything except that. Yeah, he's it, like, it's pretty fire. He read Settlers, that guy. You left here, you got pretty excited about the keyboard. In fact, you tweeted at me one, two, three, four, five times. And let me read what the last one said. Um, it said, greedy CEO who pretends like he's self-made. Sir, I wish you was in the truck with me when I was building my plumbing company myself. It was his dad's plumbing company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it like, was his dad's. What was he talking about? This is so stupid. Like, what he says next. My wife was running the office because I sure remember working pretty hard and long hours. Pretends like he's self-made. So it's like, what because a his wife worked Fraud. there, he built Always it himself. <laughs> what Always are you will. saying? It was a hard job, man. Yeah, God. Quick. The Tough Guy Act and these Senate hearings. You know where to find me. Any place, any time, cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold, stop it. Is that your right. solution every poll? No, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, okay. you're a United States Senator. Sit down. Active. Oh, okay. okay. God damn. Bernie, where's that smoke for, for Gaza, my man? What's happening? Uh, yeah, someone yeah. said that's the first ceasefire he's called for. Yeah, ooh, shit. God damn. Well, he did call for one in 2021. He yeah. just he just hasn't called for one I, this time. Yeah, right? yeah, this time. Like, Emmanuel know. Macron is literally more of a peace-loving dove than Bernie Sanders yeah. now. I don't know what the fuck is going on with him this time. Like, he's never, like, been great on Israel, um, he wasn't as bad as Fetterman at any point, but like, yeah, he was, he's, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that this time he's been kind of shitty on it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, he is a he's Zionist, old. but it's like, again, like in 2021, I don't know. I guess it's just like, he's one of those guys who like can only, can only voice his support when he sees Palestinians as like perfect victims. That might be it. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, he also literally said we have to fucking stop giving Israel money. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Yeah. That is the yeah. furthest, like... That is the most anti-Zionist position you can fucking take in he, American Congress. Yeah, but he said that right after, like, a week before saying Israel's entitled to do whatever they want to defend themselves. Which, I don't know. It's just... He it, it seems like... He doesn't know what his message is here. I, I love when people go APAC money. Brother, he's 850,000 years old. Yeah. No, he's not running again. <laughs> like, what do you mean? He, yeah, he's not running for fucking president again. He's... If he was, he wouldn't be, like, depending on APAC donations. Yeah. Stop it. Is that your solution every poll? No, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, you're a United States senator. Sit down. Oh, okay. okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Hold Finn. it. Hold it. If Hold we can. No, I have the mic. Said. I'm sorry. This is Hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> this is a hearing. And God knows the American people have enough of contempt for Congress. Let's not I don't make like it worse. And you, you have, and that's you have I don't like you because you Hold just described it. yourself. Yeah. Hold it. You have the mic. Yeah. You have time. All Make right. Your statement. Then let's do this because I did challenge you and I accepted your challenge and you went quiet. No, I didn't go quiet. I was, no, I was, no, no, you no, challenged no. me to a cage match no, no, acting no. like a 12 year old school. Hold it. Bully. Excuse me. Hold, Hold it. No, excuse me. I, I will say, I will say exactly. Senator what Mullen, I have the mic. You have questions on any economic issues, anything. Dude, that'd be so sick if they just fucking fought. Yeah. I don't have a gauge for like. And Sean O'Brien just beat the shit out of him. That'd be fire. Mark Wayne Mullen, I don't... So, he had, like, amateur MMA fights. I've never seen them. I don't know how good he is. I'm... I... I don't know. There's no talent. He he could be a ringer, you know? He could... He could end the labor movement. 
He could be that good. <laughs> um, hold on. Let me. I'm I'm looking up his amateur record. I'm gonna say go for it. We're not here to talk about physical abuse. You brought. We're not talking in. about. Of course, and, I did. and let me tell, let me show you his hearing because I want to. Oh, no, I want to expose no, these this are pro to Oh, he's a he, he he fought pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean O'Brien not looking too good for Sean O'Brien. Then I'm yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah. Granted, these fights were like the fucking 16 years ago. Still, don't matter if you've. Yeah, yeah. He he. Okay, he fought one guy twice. Clinton Bonds, he beat him by armbar and then by TKO. And his first fight, he beat Bobby Kelly, though probably not the comedian. Bro, he's got cauliflower here. It's, it's Jover. Yeah, I got to say. He probably, still, he probably still fucking grapples, you know what I'm saying? A as much as, as much as I like Sean Finn, I got to say. No, it's not Sean Finn. It's just Sean O'Brien. My mistake. Sean O'Brien. I don't think Sean Finn has any... Sean Fain doesn't look like he's a he's a big like he fights where it matters, not fucking fisticuffs. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I just um, I mean three and zero. Oh. He did not fight the best competition, but he's still, you know, he's better than most guys. <sighs> he is. And if you don't point to me, that's disrespectful. All right. I don't care about respecting you at all. I, respect I don't respect you, you at all. So all right, hold let me, let me, hold let me. it. No. Yo, one no, of the hold it, of the most hold elite it, people please, acted. Please. All right. This is a, excuse me. Mm -hmm. This is a hearing to discuss. Bro, he's pissing and shitting and farting about fucking tweets. Economic issues. Yeah, like he right. printed you them out questions. and brought them to the hearing. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I guess it really, like, really, if you go into the voting booth and you're like, I want a senator named Mark Wayne, that is kind of what you're voting for. Yeah. Bernie looks like he wants to kill himself. He's like, this is what I'm doing in the last few years of my Mr. life. Mr. O'Brien or anybody else on what he has said, go for it. I mean, but we're not here to talk about fights or I'm, anything else. I'm quoting exactly what he said. You can and say what is, you want. This is, this is your... This is your He's fucking complaining because he called him short, dude. Yeah. He, um, he does have that Matt Hughes build, like a 5'8 guy who's really wide. Your witness this you brought, and let me, I'm, I'm exposing him. You can ex as talk anything you want. So right. in, no 2013, nope. in 2013, O'Brien was suspended by the Teamsters for intimidating your own members. In 2014, uh, you were um, part of, what would you say, organizing the harassment and intimidation of the top shelf crew? Chef, not uh, chef. Oh, top, oh top, top chef, okay. And then, uh, and I think in the reports they said sexual r racist and homophobic slurs and death threats. 14 tires were sliced and five teamsters were arrested and you said, well, I had nothing to do with it. But however, in that same statement you said, but if I get called to, to test file, plead the fifth. This is, this is what, this is a witness you brought in here. In 2017, you were removed as lead negotiator by then President Hoffa He's for UPS drunk, for your actions. Guy. And then in 22, he, when this guy was elected, hard. like he has, he didn't get knocked out in any of his fights. But if you're 46, and I, I did read an article about this, how this guy still trains. Maybe he's and, getting clapped up while training. Yeah, I mean, like you can even, even if you don't get knocked out in training, stuff adds up over time. If you're like going hard sparring like once a week, and you're like 46. Even if you don't get your bell rung every time, he's just... he. I mean, Sean sounds, is a big boy. Like, he looks big. like a big boy. He's big, and, like, from the um, my non-scientific head analysis that I know yeah. from watching MMA, he looks like he could take a punch. Yes. Like, he dude. has that, like, Tito Ortiz head, and Tito, for all his faults as a fighter, did have, like, a pretty decent chin. You know, he was fighting at light heavyweight. He was fighting big guys, and... Um, Tito never really like went out cold until later. Yeah, he's got what a big he head. Said after he got elected, was he wanted to bring the mob mentality back to the Teamsters? This is your guy, and you're he, obviously going to give him he, a chance to respond can, to your oh, question. Absolutely, absolutely, because this is my question. Because you called me out, I didn't call you out. He did. You said any time, any place. That That's that. that right? Let's get the record okay. straight. Just hold it. No, hold on. Just Senator Mullen, do you have a question for the witness? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's hear it. So. Anytime, any place. No, that's April, not. April is a charity event 
No, that's or, not. That's no, not. No, no, it's a he. No, we, sir, he said it, and this is. He my is time. here to tell. No. Parameters and what the questions can or cannot be asked. Now, no, you're not going to. We're not going to be talking about yeah, physical did. confrontation. Oh, this is about charity for a union charity because this, this is, is firefighters. Do you have a question April, on his testimony? April, 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 Mr. Mr. O'Brien, do you want to respond to yeah, the question? Yeah, I mean, look, the reality of it is, you Except know, my Mr. 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 Mullen, tough guy. Answer, yeah. hold it. Answer the questions. <laughs> All right, you all won. If I, he, he made a lot of statements, right? And his statements are fiction at best. Fiction, I read them. Can you hear me? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he's literally such a fucking, I mean, I don't know if he's a divorced dad, but someone in the chat earlier said, he looks like the type of guy who gets into fights at Buffalo Wild Wings. And it's so accurate because, like, think about it this way. This guy is a fucking senator. Sure, it's from Oklahoma, right? That's yeah. fine. But he's still a senator. And he printed out tweets from, like, uh, months ago. Yeah, it's so, like... And brought it to Congress. Yeah, senators used to be, like, American aristocrats. Like, it, wow. He wants the entire hearing to be about this. <laughs> what? Oh, answer the question, please. I can't understand. The guy behind him loves it. it. He rambles so much. What was your question, actually? Well, you said I made a lot of statements. No, but what's your question? I don't understand your question. Could you repeat it? You said any time, any place. What's your question? Accept the challenge. What challenge? You said any time, any place. I'm accepting yours, so why don't you come What back? challenge? What challenge are you talking April about? April 30th. How about Greg's we do it for charity? Up. At the Smoking Guns in Tulsa, Oklahoma. No, we're not going to be what talking about physical <laughs> confrontations here. You want to oh fight me? God. What do you say by any time? Because you want to fight me? About physical <laughs> confrontations here. You want to fight me? What do you say by any time, any place? Let's have coffee. Discuss our differences. Oh, oh that's what you said. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. All right, well, let's sit and have coffee. Let's do it. All right. I'd love to but do it. It's funny how you're back on okay, well, I don't but, back on anything. You did. The other right. one. You're a 100. Senator. Uh, should be the most influential people in this country making changes. Senator you're focused on. Okay. You're Thank focused you. on Why debate that's not even relevant. You're an embarrassment. You're an embarrassment. An embarrassment to the state of Oklahoma. This hearing is about the condition of the working class in America. You That's brought what a we're thug I, this You're the biggest thug here. You brought, you brought him in. All right, you're you're being, the biggest thug. Even look, your colleagues call you. Why are you doing what you're doing, Senator Hassan? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Senator, Mr. Hassan, you Senator Ma That's awesome. Man. <laughs> There's more. Man. Are you ready for this? Because the right. fights don't end in the Senate. Let me tell you, in Congress at least. They've That's been, right. Uh, here it is. McCarthy. That's right. Bakersfield's very own Kevin McCarthy takes a clean shot to the kidneys, gives a clean shot to the kid kidneys, an elbow on, uh, what is this, like some fucking Kentucky congressperson, I think. Or Apparently a tense interaction. I don't know if it still is, but at one time it was a tough area. I mean, it's, it's a meth capital. In the Capitol hallways with Congressman Tim Burchett, who is one of the eight Republicans who voted out Kevin McCarthy from the speakership and oh, apparently had a bit of a dust up. That's the guy. That's the guy who always himself elbowed. with Kevin oh, McCarthy, Kevin and I have Kevin Congressman also. Burchett with us here right now. So, Congressman, explain to us what happened. This, uh, it's not Ken, it's not Kentucky, sorry, uh, Tennessee. This guy is oh, I was so doing an interview. old. Uh, he could have killed him. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's so sick. I'm with um, so Claudia old. from NPR, uh, a lovely. He is uh, talking to Claudia from NPR, a lovely lady. lady. And when she was asking me a question, and and at that time, I. I uh, got elbowed in the back, and it kind of caught me off guard because it was a clean shot to the kidneys. And I turned back, and there was there was Kevin, and um, there's Kevin. <laughs> this guy fucking saw the union burn down his plantation. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It hurt my soul when that happened, but not as bad as getting <laughs> stabbed in the back by Kevin. <laughs> There's I do, Kevin. I do like that Kevin is still just like sticking around and like being a just being a menace to people. Yeah, I mean, why not? He tried. <laughs> he did so much. He made an asshole out of himself every day, and yeah. these people were still like, "Fuck you." Yeah, he was so bitch made throughout this entire fucking process, and only. I mean, he, God, he he did everything right, and they indicted him. Okay, they, really? No, he really he debased is. himself, like 
routinely for this position that he worked for his entire life and wanted to be a part of. And I think he was just patently unlikable. So it, it didn't work out for him. Yeah, and it's not even like, even if he was likable, that would have eventually happened to him. Because like the only way, like that's the only thing you can do if you're like a backbencher or even just like a moderately important GOP rep. You have to just say that the leadership sucks and they're secretly Democrats. You just yeah. like have to keep doing that no matter w what. Like, that was always going to happen to him. Yeah. And I, I, for a minute, I was kind of, what the heck just happened? And then I, um, you know, I, I chased after him, of course. He's a, as I've stated many times, he's a, he's a bully with $17 million in a security detail. You know, he's the type of guy that when you're a kid would throw a rock over the fence and run home and hide behind his mama's skirt. And he just, you know, he, he uh, from behind, that kind of stuff, it, you know, that's not the way we handle things in East Tennessee. We, we, if we have a problem with somebody, I'm going to look them in the eye and, and talk to them. Okay, so he walked down the hallway, hit you in his el with his elbow. Yeah, you, and you can it sucks that he was being interviewed by NPR, but there was because it was for audio, they don't have video footage of this. Yeah, that's a tragedy. I would love to see how he fucking dabbed him up. You can go on Claudia's. That we don't, that's like an awkward way to hit somebody, too. He fucking elbowed him in the back but in the like, kidney. But like, like, think about this. Like, if you're elbowing someone, like, there's, like, a slashing elbow, and then, like, just sort of, you come down. Yeah. Like, two types of elbows. Doing that, unless you're really short, getting, like, an actual good... How height, tall is Kevin McCarthy? I think he's just, like, normal height. A lot of these guys are always kind of tall. Uh, you know, a lot of politicians are. Yeah, and that guy is, like, taller than average, the guy being interviewed. What am I doing? Kevin, Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy height. height. Um, 5'11 5'11 That guy's gotta be like 6'1 I'd say Maybe taller Maybe he didn't get him hit in the kidney directly You know what I mean? Twitter account It, it, it pretty much um, Or X account it, it, it's, it's very accurate but, Okay so then just explain So you chased him? What, what do you mean you chased well, yeah, him? I just <laughs> Manaraj is like Oh thank god We don't have to talk about Israel Palestine again <laughs> so, so what's up? You, you chased him? What's going on? Ran after him I was like what the heck You know why'd you do that? You know cause it was a uh, like I said, it, if you ever been hit in the kidneys, it's a little little different. You don't have to hit very hard to cause a little bit of pain, a lot of pain, and and so I and he just, of course, um, as he always did, does he just uh, denies it or uh, uh, blames somebody else or something, you know? And it was just a little heated, but I just backed off because there wasn't any. I saw no reason. I wasn't gaining anything from it, and then everybody saw it, so it didn't really matter. But he responded to you. Yeah, yeah, he just acted like, you know, what are you talking about? You know, who are you to, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just, you know, I think that's that's symptomatic of the problems that he, he's had in his short tenure as speaker. And were you face-to-face -face when you had this interaction? Yeah, yeah but there's security detail, and I get it. They had to, they were doing their job, so it wasn't exactly like he didn't, he wouldn't turn around and face me. He he kept scurrying, trying to keep people between me and him. And then, so, and did, what did he, were you yelling? Were you, I just let it go at that point. It wasn't. Were you yelling? Uh, he, he was, yeah, I raised my voice to him. I thought it was appropriate. And you know, you just don't expect a guy who was at one time three steps away from the White House to sucker, su hit you with a sucker punch in the, in the in the hallway. And did he raise his voice back to you? Yeah, just that high-pitched kind of thing, I, I believe, and... That was about it. And did he walk into his office? How did this happen? No, he just kept on walking down the hall. I don't know where his office is now. Hmm. And, um, and you know, he had the, his detail and his posse, so to speak, was with him. So did his detail try to stop you? Do what? Did his detail try you know, to stop you? The detail kind of got, they, they, one guy got, got between us there towards the end. But it, it, I, wasn't, I wasn't looking to knock him out or anything. I just wanted to let him know I, 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 I know it was him. Were you injured? I don't, I don't know, injured, man. I, Does it hurt? I mean, did it hurt? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, it still hurts because it was a shot to the kidneys. And it, it still hurts, oddly enough. It's not, not anything I'm going to, I'm not going to, probably not going to do an ethics complaint on him. He's not worth it. You know, he's he's going to be gone here either after Christmas or next year. And like I said, you know, he's got the $17 million and he's going to keep, you know, he'll be, he's already. Sounds like a fucking, sounds like broke boy crying I to love me. The, yeah, all he's saying is like, well, hey, he's got he, a lot of money. He's richer than me, and he beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> like, Kevin McCarthy, okay. Bakersfield on top, baby. Don't fuck with a meth head like that. You know what I'm saying? He's got fucking elbows coming at you before you know it.
Bakersfield is right around Stockton. That's where yeah. the Diaz brothers are from. Respect, dude. Respect. Dude, now I'm starting to like this guy. I'm Ke- starting to like Kevin McCarthy. It is cool when, like, a guy like that just loses everything they have to live for and they just go crazy. Kevin McCarthy denies sucker punching Tim Burchett in the kidneys. Says it was a crowded hallway and accidentally bumped into him. Says Burchett would know if it were intention- intentional. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. okay. Virtue or something. I guess our shoulders hit because Burchett runs up to me. So oh, he's lying. He's yeah. lying. Yeah. Yo, that's such a, that's me when I'm lying, voice, yeah. dude. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, I guess, oh, I guess our shoulders hit. Oh, come on, the dog. reporter was interviewing Burchett or something. I guess our shoulders he hit because Burchett runs up to me after. I didn't know what he was talking about. So why like is he, he? He looks so bad. He got like a fourteen-year-old haircut. What is he doing? Yeah, he got a, he got the bad kid haircut. Yeah, he's trying to be Trey Gowdy, dude. Yeah. You can't be Trey Gowdy. That's one guy. Only he gets to have those cuts. He has he's he has the the bad kid haircut. His eyes are like sunken. He's like I don't know what he's doing. He's like he's like taking Ritalin from his staffers and fucking crushing it up. Yeah, he, this is like the it's worst. the punish is the punish Kevin cut. Yeah, it really is. This is the worst I've ever seen him look. Yeah. Like usually he's very polished. He's it's because he's, he's not he's not piping MTG no more. He's MTG's not putting it out because he no longer has power. She MTG, doesn't care about MTG him. MTG is kind of his type because you know the first time he ran for speaker during the Obungler administration, he was almost there, but he fucked this one rep. Yeah, Ray exactly. Elmer's. Yeah, he's just like that. There's something charming to me about the fact that like he's an evil, evil politician who nonetheless is like, no, I just want to fuck 50, you know, other 50 year olds. Yeah. Respect for no, no, no problematic age gap for Kevin. Yeah. Like all of his colleagues are just doing the most disgusting shit possible. Yeah. Like like his enemy, Matt Gates. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, all of them awful, but he's. I don't know. That's kind of sweet. He's just like sees another fifty year old, and he's like, "I gotta fuck her." Yeah, but he, I lo- he looks that. terrible. Look, that course, I did look. not run and hit the guy. I didn't oh I- come <laughs> on, oh, dude! He's doing the most. I definitely yeah. hit the guy face. Oh, Kidney punch him. I did not shoot anything like that. He didn't shot him. No. Ah! This is, this First is- of all, by the way, just to just to contextualize this, it happened in front of an NPR journalist yeah so yeah. like she saw it happen <laughs> so that's the other part that's like really funny about this is that like it's not like this happened like in secrecy like it's not like this was like a one-to-one situation like it was one-on-one no it happened in front of a journalist yeah and it's who also- said who said he did hit him <laughs> and it's not and it's not like he's still he's still speaker or anything and this would be a huge story like the journalist really doesn't have a reason to lie about this. Yeah. Like it's he's not important enough to lie about it anymore. There, there is just man, maybe that's why he, you know, he he lost everything. He's a really fucking bad liar. Sorry, he's I want to say terrible liar. I know we've guys in the interest of fair and truthful reporting at the Hassan Abi broadcast, which is the most important journalistic outlet on the planet. And not like a guy with a fucking Twitch stream who tries to do his very best to verify information. I'm gonna say 99%. Okay. I know, guys, later down the line, this might get clipped. Okay. Not allowed. I'm not keeping it at 100%. I'm saying 99% Kevin McCarthy seems like he's lying here. Okay. Thank you for your integrity. You're welcome. Are there any OSINT experts? I do love the fucking idea that, like, the media could just fucking straight up lie about everything all the fucking time, but the fucking Twitch streamer who, like, offers speculative analysis with, like, a fuckload of information, God forbid, God forbid there's inconsistencies. Holy moly. That means, oh, God, you're the worst. You're the worst, dude. Well, that was... So I guess that was like his central point that like you're like misleading or talking out of your ass, but it's like, no, that's just like what everyone does when they read about events, when they read hear about events, they go, Oh, this thing might happen. Also, I've never said I'm a fucking journalist or a reporter. Like I'm a commentator and I'm a commentator on Twitch. And I very consistently have said like, I don't hold myself to the same fucking journalistic standards, even though a lot of these places that do hold themselves to that same journalistic standard don't actually fucking fulfill that role regularly. My job is to do media literacy, media criticism, okay? That's what it is. 
Is that the Tucker Carlson? Is that Tucker Carlson on the left? No. 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 I, I, that, we walk maybe like 30 years ago. Though. Yeah, Tucker Carlson is too busy fucking like sucking off Spanish fascists and shit. Are you, you, are fell five, off. Right? you guys line up along the way there. It was Bruce Wester and I walking out. He must have been interviewing someone. I didn't know it was him or something. I guess our elbows hit as I walked by. I didn't punch anybody. Did he run after but, you? But, no. Yeah, well, he... I guess it happened because when I was walking back further, oh my, oh. this is the worst line dude, I've dude, ever he's so heard. Bad. Now I know why he's just like not even remotely charismatic. No, he has zero riz, bro. That's why he's <laughs> that's why he's fucking MTG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he can, like he cannot. He just like, he's just like he, moving his shoulders too much while he's talking. Yeah, every time, every he's time, like, he, oh, every, every time he tries to like convey an event, he's like, no, oh, well, I guess that. Uh, it's like you seem like you're... He's pulling at DeSantis. He's getting too goofy with it. Yeah, yeah. The same way that DeSantis goes tune mode. He's like, this is a husband where the wife finds like a fake fingernail in his shirt. Yeah. Oh, well, I, maybe it's one of the girls at the office who fucking uh, uh, patted me on the back. <laughs> I don't, wow, I yeah. didn't know. Okay, okay. We're, we're, uh, guys... We're, we're, we're just speculating. It's not 100%, okay? It's not 100%. It's 99%. Okay? We have not so consulted the OSINT community. We have not consulted OSINT. That guy's not even OSINT. He doesn't even have any fucking political opinions. He's just like, he, he, he just, it's a good target. That's it. You know, I'm, I'm a good target for him to fucking farm. You're talking to me. I think it'd be funny to like, have an OSINT why, account why, why just for like videos of like, like meth heads fighting. <laughs> it's like... Like the, did you ever see the pond fight that uh, M Hood would post? That's the my favorite. pond fight. No, I, I'll have to ask him to post it if he still has it. It's a uh -huh. classic. Some people may know what I'm so, talking, I don't about. Know what you're talking about. I didn't even know something transpired. But reporters oh, witnessed that said it looked like you. Yeah. There's plenty of room for you to walk, and that you intentionally hit him. There is okay. There's not a place. Show me a reporter who saw that. Ask call what Bruce Westerman. Okay, well, ask that Bruce Westerman. No, I did not go up. If I hit, if I would hit somebody, they would know I hit. He said he knew you. He said he said he said he was in pain that you hit him so hard. Oh come on now. That's what he said. Okay. That that's far from. Congressman Kinzinger wrote that you pushed him twice while he was in Congress in the chamber. Whoa! Oh, more, dude. more victims are coming out. It's Jover. Look at his face. Oh my god! This is the face of a man who got God. He's like everyone. First of all, Adam Kinzinger is always like sucking his own dick about like being a fighter pilot, and it's like, yeah, like and he's also in decent shape. He's a, yeah, and Kevin McCarthy like drilled him. By, like, 60-year-old guy standards. He, he drilled Yeah, him. that's bullshit. It's, like, fucking... But even... I guess a lot of these guys are like that because, like, you know, I, I think Paul Ryan... Uh, or was it... No, yeah, not Paul, Paul Ryan was in good shape. No, it, yeah, Paul Ryan was in good shape. No, no, no. Uh, but I was thinking of... Uh, not Paul Ryan. Uh, Rand Paul. Oh, right, where his neighbor beat the shit yeah, out of Yeah, like, yeah, Rand yeah. Paul, I thought he was in decent shape, and he got fucking, he buckled. Like, his, his rib cage exploded in a fucking yeah. fight with his neighbor. But, they, like, look how mad he is. Like, that's... Yeah, he got the, caught. Oh he my got God. got. I don't get why he's, like, trying Wait, so can hard. I watch this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is a Bond fight. What is up with his face? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think it's going to make some bad pixelation and like bad facial hair. Oh! <laughs> there! Is he. Ch no need for a rock. <laughs> uh, oh, they're regulating. Yeah, no need for a rock. That's where it comes from. This video. Fuck. Yes. No need for a rock. What? <laughs> oh, he almost... Oh, he's slipping. Watch out. Oh! <laughs> Even a guy loses it. Wait, is he drowning? What's happening? He, he's safe. He's okay. Here. These are like the people that voted for Mark Wayne Moore. These are like the people in his primary. Oh! 
Joe, you done? <laughs> oh! <Yeah>. No! <laughs> Put his hand up! He's like... Oh, now he's like, I have the high ground yeah, now. No, he made Smart. It. He made that. He's like, he's like Mao. He's pretty worked. We're not. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I forgot all about No Need for a Rock. Yeah, that this is where it came from. This is sad. It's, we just watched Kevin McCarthy and Adam Kinzinger. That Timber. that is, yeah. Um, Kevin McCarthy is the guy kicking the pond guy. Everyone else is the pond guy. God, that video is such a fucking classic. All right. Uh, this is the this is the best note to end it on. Thank you, Felix, so much for My coming pleasure. on. I got to go do a uh, shoot. I got to do something. Uh, Understand. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to continue the tradition of have you sit through an awkward ass fucking shouting competition slash debate every single time you come in here. Keemstar made an appearance just like last he time. He me my name. That was a huge moment for me. Yeah. So. He said W. Felix is right. When yeah. I, I talked about Imagine. Yeah. There you go. You did it. I'm glad that we made, did that. Made me really happy. Anyway, guys, uh, of course, 100% greatest speculations uh, in the business. You will see it uh, here. Okay, what up? Oh, yeah, this is the moment. This is the classic moment. Hold on. Oops. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I was New drama this. alert. I was here for this when he was... I forgot what he said specifically. You might be on drama alert now about, like, speculations. Oh, God, I hope so. That's going to be sick. I really like him. Like, I wish he would, like, unblock me. I, he He blocks me. Because, like, I repost the dog tweet where he ran over the dog on Christmas. Oh. But it's, like, that's not really, like, saying he's a bad guy. Yeah, like, yeah. He, I mean, like a, if anything, it shows depth. Like, it shows his morality. Yeah. Yeah. He's sad about it. And it's, like, I just think it's, like, I'm a fan of Alexander Payne movies. And I feel like that's something that would happen to him. Yeah. Anyway, um, love you guys. And uh, I will, of course, see you tomorrow. All we got for now. Bye bye. All the shadows trickling in as all people hate. Sunny Los Angeles, California says the starlight to the starlight to the top. It just begun. There he is again. A sort of streaming, a sort of stream. There he is again. A sort of streaming, a sort of streaming. Reviewing the P.O. box, Uncle Uger's face. Sad in Discord at Chip Frog. Great names take on break. Tiny Bernie Sanders, LGBTQR force. All left at your fingertips, on a at your door. H3 crowded up, faith, the Young Turks online show. Three full fucking years of this, plenty more to go. 90 day fiance talks of champagne bourgeoisie Trump rally live reaction on mass riot at DC There he is again, a sudden street